Welcome. Happy Valentine's Day, peoples. Oh, yeah. Chris, can you hear us now? Yep. Okay. For some reason, my volume is turned all the way down. Okay. Thank you. Meg, I received word from Dave, uh, uh, Stephen, sorry, from Stephen that Stephen Welch said he'll be joining us late. Uh, okay. And Pam's over here on the attendee list. I keep trying to promote her over. Okay. And I don't see Leslie. Is she joining us? She is going to be joining yeah. us. Maybe give her another minute to, sure. to set up. Hi all, thank you, Megan. I You're made welcome. It. You're welcome. welcome. So I believe we're just briefly waiting for Leslie to connect. Just give it another minute and then we can uh, we can always get started and recognize Leslie when she comes in. Barbara and Leslie. Esther, I, I see you raising your hand, but we aren't on, on public hearings just yet, but I see you. Meg, it's interesting. On, on this format, I see my raised hand at the bottom of my screen, and under the um, when we had our NPCD meeting uh, last week, there was no way I could raise my hand. There was nothing. I searched high and low, clicked everything. It was, oh, it was in more. Uh, it was in more, John. Yeah, it was in. Yes. It was called reactions in that format. Reactions, yeah. Okay. <laughs> John, not only could like, you raise your hand, you could have reacted. Well, I, I did. And, and that's where I apologize because I would <laughs> constantly interrupt Nat and say hello. That's and dangerous. I raise that's hands and wave. Dangerous option. <laughs> All right. Well, we I think I'm going to get started, Meg. I have a little, uh, a few things to read. So I might as well get that out of the way. All right, uh, I'd like to welcome everyone and call to order the meeting of the Nantucket Planning Board for the purpose of discussing the posted agenda for February 14, 2022. 
Before I start, I would like to state that we are conducting this meeting by a Zoom webinar and remote participation pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order regarding open meeting law. Uh, I would first like to start by identifying members of the board and staff, so please respond with President here when I call your name. Uh, Vice Chair David Iverson. Here. Nat Lowell. Here. Fritz McClure. Here. Uh, Barry Rector. Here. And um, alternates, I see we have uh, David Wel uh, Stephen Welch, who will be joining us later. Um, Campbell Sutton. Hi, I'm here. Okay. And uh, land use specialist Meg Trudell. Here. Catherine Ansero, land use administration specialist. Here. And we will recognize Leslie Snell, our assistant planning director, when she joins in. Here. She's here. Oh, there you are. Welcome, Leslie. Nice to see you. Okay. Um, I will now entertain a motion um, um, for the approval of the agenda. So moved, sir. So moved. Um, Second. Oh, motion's seconded. been made by Barry and seconded by Nat. Uh, roll call, please. Uh, Barry. Aye. Nat. Aye. Fritz. Aye. Dave. Aye. And the chair votes aye. Okay, moving on. We are going to take the, uh, I'd like to uh, take the second dwellings and garage apartments um, as one motion. But before I do, I'd like to see if any of the board members have any kind of discussion, comment, or need to um, uh, remove themselves from the vote. Without Mr. Chairman, being, yes, yes. Just, just for you to, to staff, did we need to approve the three sets of minutes that are locked in there? Oh, did I skip over that? Thank you very much I, for picking that up. You did. No problem. Uh, I just I was yeah. looking through some stuff earlier. That's why it caught my attention. That is a good pickup. I would have skipped over and come back, but thank you, Barry. Not, we might as well go problem. on order. Um, so if everyone had a chance to review the minutes for November 29th, 2021, December 13th, 2021, January 5th, 2022, um, and would like to comment or if they have any corrections, uh, now would be the time. Seeing approval. none, I would approval. entertain a, mo a motion for approval. I like that motion. Second. Um, motion's been made by Nat and second by Fritz. Roll call, please. Nat. Aye. Fritz. Aye. Dave Iverson. That for me, aye. Barry. I'm going to abstain since I wasn't at these meetings. Okay, thank you. And the chair votes aye. So four uh, approval uh, and one abstain from Barry. Okay, now on to the second dwellings and the apartments. As I stated, if anyone has any discussion or uh, or any issue uh, from abstaining or removing themselves from the vote, uh, now is the time to comment. Without that, I'd like to read the second dwellings and then the garage apartments, and then I would entertain a motion. Um, second dwellings, uh, Randolph and Janet Hilst, one golf food drive. Sec uh, Michael and Kathy Kobos, 29 Nonantum Ave. Uh, Calio Nominee Trust, 20 Gladlands Ave. John O'Connor, trustee of the 22 Pacamo Road Realty Trust, 22 Pacamo Road, 3 Skyline Drive, LLC, care of Tim Rogovich, 3 Skyline Drive, P. Peter Goodwin, manager of 45 Shakamo Road, LLC, 45 Shakamo Road, James A. Gentner Trust and Susan Gentner Trust, 128 Surfside Road, Elaine Patterson Trust, 19 Brewster Road, William Schultz, 23 Friendship Lane, Jonathan A. Jacoby and Susan J. Uh, L. Excuse me, L. Jacoby, uh, three Tottenham Way for garage apartments. James B. and Kimberly A. Pignato, 40 Appleton Road. Annette M. Hurd, at uh, all. See care of Eileen Cahill, 10 Brand Point Road. Thornwell Design LLC, 12 Wacoit uh, Road. And Jean Francois Formella. 
8 Old Westmore Farm Road. Is there a motion? So moved, sir. Second. Jack, to repent. Motion has been made to approve Bar by Barry and seconded by Fritz. Roll call, please. Barry? Aye. Fritz? Aye. Nat? Aye. Dave? Aye. And the chair votes aye, unanimous. Uh, now on to ANRs. Uh, unless someone has a issue with any of the ANRs, I would, I'll read the ANRs and I'd like to, again, make one motion for approval. Uh, Dave, you have your hand up. Um, yeah, um, I, I'm, I, I just have a question about 91 Orange Street and it's not that I oppose it. I, I just, um, I think mean, part of it and I, I, staff I'm sure has answered this question before, but um, would you rather me ask them after the vote or before? No, uh, definitely before. Uh, maybe uh, Mega Leslie can comment before we vote on it. Absolutely, please comment. Okay, so I, I'm just, um, just for clarity with these 4181Ls, um, after, we, after we approve the subdivision, how is it dealt with within zoning? So I, I guess what I mean is, you know, they're both undersized lots, but they'll still have to conform to ground cover. And could you help me out with that, yeah. Leslie? Please? Yeah. Yeah, go ahead, Leslie. So Mr. Chairman, through you. Um, they they become pre-existing non-conforming because of provision in our bylaw. So the the lot has pre-existing non-conforming status, and the structure has pre-existing non-conforming status. But any improvements beyond that will have to fit into the zoning bylaws. So they'll have to fit into the zoning bylaw for setbacks okay. and ground cover, unless additional relief is granted through the zoning board of appeals. Okay, and and then. My other kind of comment on it was that um, usually Linda has an insane amount of pictures and backup um, for these 4181s. And I noticed on this one, it is just two affidavits. So I, and not that I, I am no mean putting doubt into this. I just, you know, I wonder if, if where's the bar on that, like for the 4181L? So for this one, um, we received all the supplemental information really late. It was actually re received after I left on Friday. So Catherine, I tried to email it this morning. I got a few bounce backs because of the size of the file. Um, but Catherine did, in fact, update the packet this morning. Oh, OK. So I can see it on the packet. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you. Not that I doubt it. Just wondering. OK. And if anyone else has a comment. If not, what I'll do is the same thing. I'll read them and then I would entertain a motion. So first one, Jonathan A. Jacoby, Susan L. Jacoby, three Tatamo Way, Ocean Dojo LLC and Taco LLC, 20 and 22 Bartlett Farm Road, Diane M. Ryder, trustee, eight Chatham Road, Tom, the Thomas E. Sleeper 2003 Trust, the Jennifer M. Sleeper 2000 Trust, eight Osprey Way, Harvey S. Young, trustee of Wellbone Realty Trust, 12 Larrabee Lane, Shakamo Ducklands LLC, 11 Gardner Road, Bracebridge H. Young, Jr., trustee, 7 Shakamo Road, 73 North Liberty Street, Realty Trust, 73 Liberty Street, 1 Airport Road, LLC, 1 Airport Road, 7 Airport Road, LLC, 7 Airport Road, CMR 11 Osprey, LLC, 11 Osprey Way, Priscilla Johnson, 91 Orange Street. And I believe that is it. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Second. Motion has been made by Dave, seconded by Barry. Roll call. Dave? Aye. Barry? Aye. Nat? Aye. Fritz? Aye. And the chair votes aye. Okay, now we're on to previous plans. Uh, this is for the re-endorsement of Maple Lane subdivision uh, to reaffirm the, vote, reaffirm the vote that we had from our previous two uh, February 7th, 2022 meeting. Um, is there any discussion? So move to reaffirm the vote, sir. Is there a second? Second. Second. All right, the vote's a first. Yep. 
The uh, there's been a motion to reaffirm the vote by Barry and second by Fritz. Roll call, Barry. Aye. Fritz. Aye. Matt. Aye. Dave. Aye. And the chair votes aye. Uh, now into public uh, hearings. 27 Fair Street will be continued to March 14th, 2022 planning board meeting. Uh, and I believe the action deadline is uh, April 30th. So we're fine with that. Um, moving on, uh, do we have to have, have, have a vote to continue that? Matt? Yes, we, yes. Okay, we I'd entertain a motion. <clears throat> so moved. Back at Motion has been made by Fritz to continue to March 14th, seconded by Nat. Roll call, Fritz. Aye. Nat. Aye. Dave. Aye. Barry. Aye. And the chair votes aye. Okay. Now on to 23 Broad Street Owner LLC Brotherhood of Thieves, 23 Broad Street. I think we have uh, action deadline of 331. So we're fine. Sarah, is um, there anything is... from your team you aren't seeing here I need to bring over? Um, let's see. I see Matt. I see Jay. I see Steve. Are you seeing anyone like Will McDonough or Henry Hegelson or anything like that? I'm here. Will McDonough's here. I don't expect Okay, him. there you are. Uh, no, Henry. Okay. Then I think you probably have everyone. Okay. Okay, Meg, um, I'd like let you take it over or bring this over to Sarah, whatever you'd like to describe. Sarah would be great. Okay. Great. Hi, Sarah, welcome. Thank you. Um, and I want to thank um, Mr. Rector for reading in. Um, it's been a while since we've been before you. I think it was back in the fall. A lot of things, oh, have, a lot of things have happened since then. Um, so I want to really kind of reset if we can, because we heard the neighbors, we understood their objections. Um, and so we've kind of gone back and, and reformatted our plans. And the basic idea at this point is to just open the restaurants as they were per, uh, previously permitted with a couple of modest, what I think are, are modest changes. Um, so anything that we talked about in the fall, the increase in the patio seating, the bringing the line from Federal Street, all of that is out the window. Um, we're basically back to the existing MCD special permit that's been in effect um, for a number of years with various um, amendments. And we're asking for the fall, so we're asking now for the following changes. And I submitted, let's see, a revised operating plan, a revised set of um, the outdoor plans, some photographs of the winery, brewery, distillery, and then, I'll, and then I'll, um, an email that details exactly what we're asking for. So the first would be the addition of the handicapped bathrooms which are shown on the plan. We think um, not only will it be a benefit to the patrons to have the, to have the bathrooms, we think the additional building actually provides an additional sound um, barrier from um, the adjacent neighboring properties, um, the residential properties. Um, we had previously asked for some French doors that became quite controversial. We'd like to just um, change that to two, win two additional windows. The addition of the tabletop micro distillery, brewery and winery in the lower kitchen level. Uh, we would like to do that. It's a very modest operation. Um, I think it's about well, Jay can tell you how much they produce in a week, but it's, it's a very, very low level um, production. It would just be for consumption on the premises. There's no bottling, there's no shipping, there's no sending it anywhere. It's literally these three tabletop, they're almost like coffee makers. They sit on a, on a table um, 
and they're a micro distillery, brewery, and winery that would produce product that could be served on site. Um, operations of the site would be in compliance with the revised operating plan. I just want to highlight that that includes limiting the patio to 80 patrons as currently permitted and leaving in place the prohibition against any exterior uh, music. Any other conditions in that um, in the MCD as previously modified um, would remain in effect except for condition 16 and 17. Uh, those are really no longer applicable and um, they deal with bringing a loading space and trucks, uh, vehicles on the property. And um, conditions 23 and 24, which relate to the second and third floor for housing. Um, it's currently, I think, 10 or 11 employee, 10 employees up there. And we'd like the ability to move the employees to offsite housing and to convert that upstairs space to a maximum of four apartments, which is allowed under the bylaw under 139.2. Um, I think our thought was that getting the employees off-site would um, potentially reduce some of the stress um, in the neighborhood if we can do that. Um, otherwise, we'll have them up there and with the existing dormitory management plan. We're proposing, in a, I think in accordance with what you I have done in similar situations, that there would be no um, construction in any year from noon on the Thursday of Stroll weekend and Daffodil weekend until 7 a.m. on the following Monday. No construction from 12 noon on the Thursday of Memorial Day weekend until 7 a.m. on the following Tuesday and no exterior construction in any year from 12 noon on the Wednesday before Thanksgiving to the 7 a.m. Uh, on the following Monday and then no construction at all between June 30 and September 15. We're also <clears throat> willing to say that we won't do any work until the fall of 2022. So anything that you might approve now in, that, re, that involves exterior construction would not be done until the fall of tw um, 2022. And that's kind of, that's kind of the, gist of it, we did go to the um, select board and we've renewed <clears throat> both the liquor license and the common victualers license and the entertainment license. And those are all under the same restrictions as were previously imposed on the prior owners. And that falls within um, your existing special permit. <coughs> Thank you, Sarah. Really um, and I, no, I Ooh, should sorry, mention, okay. I'll just mention that Matt McEachern, who's our project engineer, is here, as is Sil, um, Steve Silverstein. He's the restaurant operator and um, also Will McDonough and Jay Harmon. Uh, one question that comes to mind when you're reading through uh, the scale back request, the apartments above. Yep. Um, I appreciate that you're looking to move uh, employees that uh, and provide for the 10 employees offsite uh, apartments above. Um, are they going to be for managers? Are they going to be for year round occupation, uh, um, occupancy, weekly, daily? Um, what's the type of use that those four apartments do? Do you have any idea? I don't know that we know exactly now um but i would think not not daily certainly we'd want the opportunity to be able to rent them so i would say weekly rentals but we might use them for managers if there was a year-round manager we might have it be a year-round person i don't think we've really committed anything to the to the type of person that would be there okay thank you uh, i'll open it up to the bear, board bear, Bearing in mind too, John, that we need we need the people to be 
you know, good tenants, quiet tenants <coughs> for our restaurant operation. You know, we can't have people going crazy upstairs. So sure. I'll <laughs> open it up to our board uh, with any questions. Um, please uh, address the chair. I see Dave Iverson's hand is up. Um, thanks, John. Um, yeah, I would like to just commend them for um, for for reeling this back. Um, I think that that's that's uh, uh, intelligent move on their side. Um, I am, like John said, just concerned about the apartments. I just um, think you know I, I feel like the board's position has been trying to kind of mitigate the intensity of use, and I'm just concerned that maybe for apartments if their weekly rentals might add to that um so i'm concerned about that but other than that i i think i appreciate what they've done with this uh with this application thank you well, can I, um, uh, barry uh, can I ask? um cam had her hand up first i believe so okay let me move down oh oh um, that's okay cam? that's okay that's oh. okay barry can go before me that's fine. No reason to fight. Uh, <laughs> Barry, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> Thanks. Um, not, not unlike my peers here, I, I do have some concerns over the apartment, um, you know, especially in terms of things like traffic generation as well, too, um, especially if they're going to be rented out. I, maybe if not sure how to tackle this yet. I mean, part of me wants to wait I would love to have you come back and kind of flesh out the details a little bit further. But at, at a minimum, you may want to kind of emulate what the dolphin is going to wind up doing at this point, which is telling people you're going to rent it, no cars, and we will provide you NRTA passes for it, which I, I think may help offset that. Yeah. Um, it's, it's just a concern. Yeah, the, the NRTA passes are not are not a problem, and either are no cars. I mean, I, I think that's what you'd want in that area anyway. Um, I just I do want to mention, although we are part of an MCD, that the apartments in the CDT zone are by are as a matter of right. So, uh -huh. you know, it is kind of a use that the bylaw is theoretically encouraging in the downtown area. And, and, I, and I agree. We, and we honestly thought that putting apartments up there was going to be less intense than having employees up there because the, the problem with employees, we love them, we need them, and we can manage them if we have them there, but they're working until whatever time the restaurant closes and then the tendency and I was this age one time is to want to party a little bit. And so it's a little bit of a management issue to keep it all, to keep it all tamped down and quiet. So we, we actually thought that moving the employees somewhere else and putting in the apartments was going to be a benefit. That was kind of our view of it. Thank you. And I, I agree with that. I, I I'm familiar with the CDT and the parking requirements for it. It's just, I hate to bring it up, but I, I thought it's just worth having a little discussion about it. Yeah, but you're absolutely. right, park, parking will always be an issue in the downtown core district, and so be it. Um, but at least we're out of the foolish, foolishness that we were dealing with close to 10 years ago. Um, the other question I have for you is, if it's going to be off-site where you're putting people and I'm going to have to kind of defer to staff on this one. Do, do, should they be giving some type of dormitory management plan for that? Or the, yes, uh, we'd have a dormitory management plan for the place for the where they go. Perfect. So yes, that's that's something that will happen. All right. No, that's yeah, that's to, wonderful. Um, and you know, we have to find the we have to find the spot and get the permitting before we can even think about moving them. No, I, I just I just wanted to be a little preemptive here, and I, yeah. I, I up until this moment I honestly didn't know if you already had something in mind, but it, it, yeah, you've, this is a bigger valley at the we, moment. We have a property in mind, but it's not for sure yet. Right, right, right. Um, and and I kind of want to emulate what Dave Iverson said earlier. Is you know I, I as a member of the board, and I, I, I really appreciate you all taking the time to scale back the project from what you had proposed. 
Um, it, it, it to me is, it's a good thing. It really is a good thing. And I'm, I'm really pleased that you're being respectful of the neighbors and the concerns that they had raised as well too. So as one board member, thank you for, thank you for doing that. It's yeah, okay. I mean, I think it's it's hard. You buy a property and you get enthusiastic uh -huh. about it, and you realize all the potential that it has. Uh -huh. You don't necessarily see how the other side is going to be looking at it. So that was an eye opener, and we've retooled. Uh -huh. All right. Well, thank you, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, I'll recognize Cam. Cam Sutton. Hi. Good evening. Thank you, John. Um, I had a couple of questions and maybe a comment just to take up on what Dave and um, Barry were just commenting on in terms of the apartment uh, uh, accommodations. And I'm just wondering, um, given that and the restaurant, et cetera, whether utilizing one of the apartments for an on-site manager um, might be in the interest of both the property and the owners, et cetera, um, because then there's someone to contact right there. And I know we have um, requirements for people to be within a timely uh, distance to respond to any complaints or any needs, that kind of thing. So that was, that was one. The other, um, one that made me sort of raise my hand and, and I might have misheard, but I, I believe it was condition 16 and 17, which it just says, which are no longer applicable. I believe something was mentioned about on-site deliveries being given with, that those covered, um, you know, off-street deliveries. And if so, I think that's it. I mean, I think having off street delivery is a grand thing, especially on Broad Street where those trucks, you know, unless it's a delivery before 930 in the morning, those trucks are really beginning to impede traffic. We've gone down to a one way street on Broad Street and you're still hard pressed to get through there. Um, so uh, if that's true, I would, I would, you know, ask for a little bit of a rethink. I think it would be much more efficient for deliveries to a delivery truck to be able to back right in the property, you know, do their thing and leave versus, you know, tr trying to deal with traffic and pedestrians <clears throat> and everything else. So that was the other one. Um, and if I may interrupt, I'm sorry, I, I don't want to lose your train of thought, but um, that's okay. in I believe uh, right across the street from the Brotherhood there uh, to the right is that dedicated parking place where I know large food trucks from Cisco and uh, you know, and uh, Kraft or whatever, uh, they pull up there, they have their ramps, it's a dedicated spot and that alleviates trying to you know, um, back a truck up into that, on that driveway. Uh, it's used there, I think it's operated well prior uh, and for other restaurants as well in that on Broad Street. Right, and, and I appreciate that. I'm just saying that that utilized as often as it is across the street in the middle of June, July and August, it's a show trying to get through that area. And I generally just try to go through on a bicycle. You know, I'm, I don't even try to go downtown in a car. I've just noticed that the amount of deliveries that are being required with the increased um, population and visitor load is starting to have a deleterious effect, in my opinion, on the um, safety of pedestrians in that area. So, so that's my thing, however anyone wants to go about that. I, I think it's across the board there. Um, so my other uh, thought was on, it sounded like the NERDA passes or doing, um, you know, maybe a bike rental or something. I was thinking that uh, maybe for the apartments to have protected, you know, an area away from the public where they could put their bikes or their mopeds or something um, just to ensure the, the safety of 
the bikes and things like that. Um, and I had a question that wasn't really brought up, though I did see it in the readings about um, the awning and the noise mitigation. And I was wondering if we had had any feedback or complaints from uh, neighbors of the gaslight. I, I believe there was a, a lot of upheaval uh, around the noise that was perceived to potentially be coming out of that area. And I know they had experts come in and design a system. And from what I can tell, it's a very successful system. I just, you know, I don't have any data to back up my sense of the thing. So um, I think that was pretty much all I had. Thank you very much. Thank you, Cam. I see Fritz. Your hand? Yeah. Uh, yes, just um, I think a fairly quick question. I, I did watch the uh, select board hearing on the licensing. And uh, one of the issues that had come up were the was the noise, I, I should say, the music and speakers outside. And <clears throat> Sarah, I know your, um, your memo specifically uh, said uh, no outside music, uh, which, which is in fact item eight uh, on the permit, right. uh, I, and this, this I, I assume this is understood, but I just want to make sure. S item seven was no exterior speakers, and I know you've said you'll comply with with uh, all of the other conditions. I only mention it because I think there was a reference to the fact that there were exterior speakers that uh, last summer. Yes, we're complying with all the conditions of the existing permit, including seven and eight. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Prince. You know, if, can I just say something oh, about- Sure, okay, Sarah, go ahead. About noise. Um, I think we, my clients met with as many neighbors as would meet with them. Not everyone was willing to meet, but those that were, they met with them. Um, the, only complaints that they heard were complaints from the staff um, after after hours, um, being upstairs with the windows open, and you know that kind of after hours partying that I was alluding to. The fact that we're going to be rebuilding kind of those upper floors with the sound attenuation and using um, a more modern HVAC system is going to massively reduce um, the potential of sound and impact to the neighborhood. So we hope to be actually Im improving that situation. I don't believe there were any other noise complaints. Okay, uh, Nat, were you, did you have a question? Yeah. Comments? Go ahead. Yes, I got, yeah, I got a few comments. Um, first, um, Sarah, I can't remember if you mentioned the waiting area manager or coordinator, like that little area. We're not, you know, where the, yeah, where we, okay. had, where we had suggested having the people wait for the van. We're, yeah. we're abandoning yeah. that. We're going to leave them down on Federal Street with the other No, van. I understand that. Yeah. I understand that, but that's going to still be, I mean, remember the Brotherhood back when they didn't have anything before the fire? There was a line down the street right. every single day for lunch. Right. So, um, you know, just looking out for that <laughs> situation of people waiting to replace somebody else that that's going to need some kind of, I don't know if the word manager is the right word to use, but um, the gathering of people there is going to need something regardless of whether there's people being dropped off or not. That's irrelevant. They're still going to be there. I think that that's, I think that's right. And, and I guess I should have said, that's part of the reason why we really don't want vehicles and trucks right. driving in and out of the site. If we, you know, if we yeah. don't have to, particularly now yeah. that we have that load. Not the right thing to do. Yeah. That yeah. loading zone there. I'm going to talk about all that in a second because okay. that's near, near and dear to my heart. I can tell you that I worked hard to get that fixed. So the, these comments that get made about, about the street making broad street one way has it was just a smart idea it has nothing to do with more or less or 
too many or not enough and wide earth trucks and they're not really any wider they're the same pup trails they've had since the 70s so the problem is is that it should have been one way a long time ago it works so much better because you don't bang into mirrors and you can it's safer to cross the street it's safer for everybody the crosswalk is part of that short-term loading zone that's there now that till noon is was moved down to the corner table as part of an original plan of the Graydon house. It was, it's, it's a little piece of that. There was no way to really make anything work down there other than what was existing. So, you know, Nantucket, things happen real slow and meticulously, and there's never a perfect improvement. It's just a little better than it was. So that's how things are. So that crosswalk is gone there for a reason because it was really didn't even need to be there to begin with. So the loading zone on the side of uh, the Glidden office is, is till four o'clock, works perfectly after noontime. And that one at the front of the Brotherhood is closed at noon. Okay. So just so everyone understands that. Um, the other issue, Sarah, and I mean, staff, you know, whoever wants to sort of look at this, having a, a fall hearing date for this, for the summer, you know, a plan or unless you're going to be, you know, we want to make sure that we have, um, you know, what do we call that? We did it with the West End. We, we've done it with a lot of applications like this where we have like a set um hearing date public hearing for one of our meetings for the summer's activities sarah i mean i would say october the october meeting would probably be the one to, to do it with this is actually something that barry came up with a long time ago that has kind of stuck in our system for places for projects like this that require sort of a grace period you know right whoops So, whoops, uh, hold on a second, I'm back now. Okay, I mean, that was something uh, that I think we should do. And then that whole phone number issue of somebody, a manager's phone number. Right, that's in our operating plan. Is that in the, is it, I've been reading this, you know, there's quite a bit of reading, so I didn't catch that yet, so. Yeah. Just want to dot that, you know, dot the I's and cross the T's, Sarah. Absolutely. Um, and I believe those apartments were built after the fire as part of housing requirement stuff. So I'm pretty sure about that. I wouldn't want to guarantee I'm right, but I believe that after the, when the, when the, after the fire, I think that was part of their rebuild. So, because right. there was nothing up there before. Okay. That's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Sam, your hand is up. Is that just stuck? <laughs> just stuck, sorry. Okay. All right. Uh, any other comments, questions from the board before I open it up to the general public? Uh, Leslie, yes. Thank you um, for you, Mr. Chair. Maybe sure. I missed this, but um, where is the employee housing going. I mean, I, I know you said that you don't have a site picked out yet, but I do have a concern about the board basically waiving the requirement for employee housing before knowing that it's moving somewhere else. You no, know, I wouldn't I wouldn't ask you to do that. What I'm asking is that we'll keep it there until we have a permitted place for them to move to. So until we have that, we're not moving them anywhere. They're staying right where they are. And could we include a condition to that effect? Yes. Okay, great. Thank you, Leslie. Uh, actually, a comment that Cam made, I actually think holds merit for consideration with that one apartment for an on-site manager. Um, if that's a consideration that the applicant might think about, um, I think it would add a lot to neighbors and uh, accountability uh, while also having potentially three 
uh, rentable apartments. Uh, so that's a, a, just a comment. And also just for clarification too, uh, Barry Rector was not on the board when we first heard this allocation. However, because of uh, Barry being able to mull it in, review any yep. uh, film and get up to speed with this, he is uh, allowed to not only comment, but also vote on this now. And that's just a... Uh, a public service announcement. <laughs> All right, uh, anything from the board, I'm going to open it up. I don't see any hands raised. So if there is anyone from the public that would like to speak uh, or comment, to... Meg, uh, please. Oh, sorry, before I do I that, Dave, Dave. Dave, I'll recognize you, Dave, sorry. I just wanted to second, second um, you and Cam on that one apartment for an, for an on-site manager. I think it's a, a great idea and I, and I hope the applicant strongly considers it. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, I'll now open it up to the public. Meg, if you see anyone in order, please uh, recognize and I will welcome them. Sure, so we have R.C. St. Amour followed by James Frades and then Arthur Reed. Okay, uh, R.C.C. did you say? R.C. St. Amour. Okay, <laughs> welcome, uh, please, whenever you're ready. We can't, we can't hear you. Uh, RC, maybe. Really bad. RC, I'm going to uh, recognize someone else for now. I think we just have a robotic chime maybe it's just with your connection um, nope i'm sorry i just got over um in the meantime james brady's great welcome james how are you please uh, excellent thank you mr chair and, and the committee and, and I, I just want to recognize we're we're uh, my wife and i beth we live on um ash street and, um, you know, longtime residents and commented before. I just want to echo what I heard from the board, which is the responsiveness from the applicant. It certainly does, um, I think, make us all as neighbors feel like we have been listened to. So thank you very much for that. Um, two, two, two quick things. And, and you know, one doesn't want to, um, um, you know, very much feel like uh, we don't want to criticize everything. But two things that have been on my mind. One, um, is there assurance that the table seating outside will be table seating? Um, you know, I, I think with the Graydon House and some of the other places in the areas, you require, uh, you know, wait staff to serve as opposed to a br micro brewery. I think some of the neighbors are concerned that, uh, uh, you know, people outside turn into a brewery as opposed to a restaurant, as it has been uh, in the past. And then the second thing, which I, I don't know has ever been addressed, is the um, exhaust. Uh, you know, you can see in the plans very clearly those three very large exhaust fans in the back. Uh, I think it's the north side that face Ash Lane. Um, and, you know, I know it says in the operating plans that there'll be a scheduled cleaning, et cetera, et cetera. But I would just ask that there be some um, requirement that those uh, exhaust fans be modern, be cleaned, uh, and et cetera, because... I only noticed it a few years ago when we first had a dog in the neighborhood. Every time she walked outside, you know, when the dog hears the uh, or sees the uh, uh, hamburgers cooking on the grill um, and that exhaust comes right into our neighborhood. So just making sure that those exhausts for the outside and I think the inside restaurant as it's as it's now going to stand uh, is up to modern and appropriate standards with the dense population. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, uh, James. Uh, and I'm not trying to answer for the applicant. However, I do have a, a background in the uh, restaurant business. And I believe the health department would have something to say about not only the exhaust, but I believe they have at least an annual or biannual inspection that has to be um, documented and submitted to the uh, health department. Uh, Excellent. Thank um, you. Somebody can correct me if I'm wrong, but um, that um, I had to do for myself. Um, so um, with the table seating, I would refer to one of the applicants, Sarah. Um, do you have a comment on that? Yeah, I, it is gonna be all table seating out there with wait staff. 
Great, thank you. I see Arthur Reed's hand up. Um, Meg, is that the next person in order? Yes, we have Arthur Reed followed by Jonathan Pressman. Okay, I'll recognize Arthur. Arthur, welcome. Hey, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, I represent Sue Lingerman and her daughter, Ann Davis. Uh, they're on uh, Ash Lane near the property. And I want to say that we very much appreciate the changes that the uh, applicants have made. They really have listened to uh, the neighbors. Uh, I wish that uh, more uh, applicants would, would uh, follow that course. And in any event, this, I think, is the right direction to be going. Um, we agree with the points that uh, Jim Freitas just made, and we're glad to hear that the uh, seating uh, outside will be at tables and with service with uh, weight service, uh, and also about the um, exhaust fans. One further point that we would like to suggest is that there be a condition that the windows and doors uh, be kept closed. I mean, obviously the doors have to be opened when people are going in and out. Uh, but the point is that we would like to have the doors and windows kept closed so that noise. Uh, and music within the uh, building, within the restaurant, will not uh, 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 spill out into the neighborhood. Uh, if we can have that, I think that we really uh, uh, have accomplished a great deal in terms of something that will work well for the neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you, Arthur. Meg, could you, other hands raised? Yep, I just brought over uh, Jonathan Pressman. Uh, thanks, Meg, and, and thank Hello. you, Mr. Chair. Uh, my name is John Pressman. I'm the owner of Two Ash Lane with my wife, Roberta. And I want to echo what a number of people have already said. We, we very much appreciate the modifications to the plans. Uh, we understand that, you know, it took a certain amount of effort, both on the part of the applicant as well as, frankly, the neighborhood. Um, I do think that one of the things you should know about the neighborhood is it is made up of a number of people, many of whom who never knew each other and came together to really uh, voice concern about these plans. And so we're, we're certainly gratified by the fact that there's been an addressing of a number of our concerns. I wanna to touch on a few questions I believe uh, many of the neighbors still have uh, with respect to the current plans. And I would first note that uh, we did not receive the, the memorandum that I think was referred to um, by Ms. Alger. I, I certainly haven't seen it, so I'm not sure what was in the memorandum, but we did receive the operating uh, plan. And on that, with respect to the dorms, I think our concerns are, are frankly what has been, uh, you know, mentioned by a number of the board members. Um, the operating plan refers to an existing dormitory management plan. Um, we haven't seen that, and so I would ask that we, we sort of hold off on the dormitory uh, until we see what the plan is to manage it and, and do certainly believe that an on-site uh, manager would be incredibly helpful. Uh, with respect to operations, the initial operating plan or current operating plan mentions that pest control will do an, a quarterly analysis. I, I think certainly given that the restaurant has been basically empty for, for over a year now, it may make some sense, certainly given the rise in rodent population on the island, to have it a little more frequently, at least in the beginning, to make sure that the increase in use is not uh, creating an adverse impact. Uh, the bike racks that are now planned on the north side, I think, frankly, the north side is the side that directly impacts the adjacent neighborhood. Uh, and we really are concerned, would want to limit any and all activity on that. You know, frankly, there, hopefully there is a place on the side of the buildings uh, to put bike racks uh, and so forth. On, on that note, the operating plan states that they're going to try to minimize um, any activity on the north side, including the storage of bottles and loitering and smoking. I, I just think we need to sort of make the north side of the building kind of a safe zone. Uh, and my hope is that uh, this board will, will uh, make that so uh, and really limit any activity on that. That is essentially on our boundary and certainly borders directly the, the neighborhood. With respect to the microbrewery, uh, I think the question still remains, like, what is that? I mean, certainly we can read the amount of gallons that are being produced during the year and the wastewater, um, but the operating plan says a lot of that equipment is still gonna be in operation five days a week from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. 
which makes it sound like a more robust operation. So I, I would love to see a little more information on what exactly those activities are going to be. Uh, and only if you have that detail, can you really assess what the nature of the impact would be on the neighborhood. Um, there are th things, section 11 of the operating plan says that I believe after 10 p.m. music will be operated inside so as not to be disruptive to the adjacent community. While we certainly appreciate that, uh, we would say that you know music should never be operated at any hour to be disruptive to the adjacent community uh, before or after 10 p.m. So we certainly want to clarify that. And on that note, you know it was mentioned before by Ms. Alger that the permit uh, by the select board is the same permit as before. And that's actually not the case. I mean the select board and, and I believe one of the board members said that they uh, heard the hearing. Uh, the select board actually imposed additional restrictions, and so obviously we wouldn't want. Uh, any action by this board to in any way imply that the select board granted greater rights than they did. I, I think the permits uh, were less than, frankly, what they were before, and there was different additional detail put in them, uh, such as the need to have everybody seated on the patio and so forth, that we would want to be abided by by the applicant. And finally, with respect to the mention of construction to begin in the fall on the outside, you know, we're so appreciative of the fact that they've really scaled back the plans. And as you review the plans now, it, it, it's, it raises a question of what construction are we talking about? Because apart from say the windows that are being added on the west side, it doesn't seem like there should be any construction at this point. Uh, they're using the existing um, you know, covering and so forth. So I think we'd want a little more clarification on that um, so we can understand how it may impact or suggest additional use on the patio that's not been permitted. Uh, apart from that, I know that uh, one of our neighbors <coughs> Uh, St. Amore was trying to speak. I don't know if she's been able to get a better connection, but I, I do thank the board for its attention. Uh, it's, a, it's a very difficult debate that's arisen over this project. We understand there's hard feelings on both sides, but as a neighborhood, we just love this island. We love the peace and quiet it affords us, and, and we hope to be able to work cooperatively with the owner of 23 Broad to ensure that that continues. Thank you, John. Um, Sarah, would you like to comment on any of the concerns that Mr. President um, had. I mean, I would just say we're going to abide by all of our permits um, and nothing that this board does will change what the Board of Selectmen did. Obviously, you, you can have copies of those permits and make them part of your amendment to the existing special permit. In terms of keeping the windows shut, I think, I'm not sure there was a requirement in the prior permit for that to be the case, but we're certainly willing to commit to that. I know the windows that they added had to be non-operable. Um, the construction that we're doing would be for the for not only the windows, but for the bathrooms, um, the addition of the, the handicapped bathroom. We're also gonna be doing significant work within the building and whether or not that requires, you know, I don't know, shingling, whatever, on the outside, we're committing not to do it. Um, that's just a standard downtown condition that we're willing to agree to. In terms of the apartments, um, once we have, if we, once we don't have employees, I don't think that we need to have a manager on site because we're, we're just gonna be having residential tenants, the same way the houses behind us are rented by the week or the weekend um, for, re for residences. I mean, it, it seems sort of ironic that everyone behind us can rent as much as they want. Anyway, um, we do currently have um, a manager. We've rented an apartment in the area for our manager um, at Bookworks. I, I would like to say we'd commit to have a manager within a mile of the location. Prefer not to have them directly on site. It gets to be a lot to work and live and be in the same, in the same place all of the time. It's nice to have a place that's separate where you can actually go. Um, I don't know if there were. I mean, we'd certainly there gonna, one other whatever, whatever rodent problem is happening, we're gonna we're gonna take care of it. 
Uh, maybe you can comment or somebody um, from your uh, um, group can comment on the question that um, Mr. Pressman had about the, the micro bro the micro distillery, the portable. Sure. Um, do, what, what actually is that? Does that make noise? Does that operate during the evening hours when everyone or early morning hours when everyone's asleep? Uh, what exactly yeah. are they? <laughs> Jay, I'll let Jay handle that. They're they're closed systems, so they're not putting out any smells or noise. Or, but I'll I'll let Jay talk about that. Um, before we go to Jay, though, I just want to mention on the on the exhaust fans, we'll certainly meet whatever board of health requirements there are. We'll commit to a at least annual um, cleaning of those vents. <coughs> Great. And if Jay is available, I'll recognize him to comment on the dis portable distilleries or yep. tabletop. Um, yes, I'm here. Uh, can you hear me okay? Yes. Welcome, Jay. How are you? Um, so the, the, the equipment itself, um, they're, they're about eight gallons um, in total volume. And we, we wanted to restrict the hours of operation. I think that's where in our operating plan, it states during the day they'd be used, but they're, it's a closed system. So there's no steam generated that's going to give off any gases. Um, you know, they're, they're electric systems. Um, so you're, you're not opening, you know, cooking anything on an open fire. Um, it is of that we, we included some pictures of what the system looks like. Um, for the winery, all three of those production, it's a brewery, winery, distillery. Uh, total production uh, we put in there is 30 gallons a year um, for each one of those. So you can imagine if it, if you can produce eight gallons in a day, it doesn't take you long to get the 30 gallons annually. Uh, it's, very, it's a very limited, small nano system. Uh, we installed a similar system uh, down in New Bedford. And again, total production is, is very limited. The majority of the product that will be served on site there will either come from our distributors from off island that do the deliveries um, or come from the larger facility out of five Bartlett farm road. Great. Thank you. Uh, Meg, anyone else or did the woman that was trying to connect get yeah. reconnected? She emailed me. She thinks she has better cell phone reception now. So let's try and bring her over to see if we might get a connection. Hold on. That was RC. RC, yes, same. I'm not sure what's happening. Um, she disappeared. We have Jonathan. Oh, here we go. Hold on. RC, can you hear us? Yes, can you hear me? Much yeah. better. Hi, RC. Oh, okay, great. Great. Uh oh, uh -oh. we're losing uh -oh. you. Nope. <laughs> we're, we're back to being a robot. I'm sorry. Meg, is there a way that you might be able to connect with RC either via the uh, text, phone, or email to get her questions? Um, um, can you hear me? Yeah, I don't. Sorry, RC, we're not getting a connection at all with you. It's just a robotic sound, very metallic. So uh, in the okay. meantime, oh. we have Jonathan Pressman with his hand up again. Are you taking second rounds of comments? Well, let me, I, I see Barry's hand was raised. Uh, let me see if he has a comment on something that was just recently discussed before I recognize John. Barry. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, yeah, I, I have to deal with Zoom too. So you may, I don't know if you want to provide her the phone number for it. That'd probably just be easier. I think she's, she's trying to use the Zoom app directly. Yeah. So that's just. That phone number would be specific to um, your registration code. So right. your email you received to click your link, that would be the phone number you'd want to yeah. dial in from. So I don't yeah. have one I, generic one I could provide you with. Yep, 
that's that's okay. No, I just I, she just doesn't have enough bandwidth to make it happen. But anyways, I, I really want to just focus on the hoods for a few seconds, and either Leslie or Sarah can help me out with this. I thought somewhere around 2015, 2017, there was um, something that came before us on the planning board to have to deal with the ventilation system in the hoods as well, too. And there were some upgrades. Yeah, thank you, Leslie. I see you nodding your head. There were some upgrades that, that took place as well, too. So um, I, I know that it was a problem in, in the deep past, but I know there are also some modifications that took place to try to address those concerns. Um, I remember sitting on the board at that point and very specifically listening to people talk about odors, odors, odors. Um, so anyways, I, j I just wanted to bring that up that there has been something done um, in the short term to try to deal with that, that issue. Thanks. Thank you, Barry. Anyone else on the board? Seeing none. Meg, anyone else from the audience that? Yep. So I guess RC emailed me. She said she emailed her points to John to read into the board, if that's okay with you. Great. If John is present and on the phone, I'd like to recognize him, please. Hi, John. Hey, it's it's John Pressman again. Uh, yes. Let me. Uh, I will uh, read over uh, RC's points, which she sent me. Um, she notes the bike racks will be gifted to the town for installation on Broad Street. These racks will be in addition to the two racks at the rear of the property for the exclusive use of the employees. That's a quote, I believe, from the operating guide uh, presented by the applicant. Uh, she says in the prior rulings, no activities were supposed to be happening in the back. I think we should. Uh, ask that the planning board uphold that ruling so that there are no bike racks in the back uh, and no loitering in the back. That would be the north side of the building. Uh, she then quotes the second provision says, quote, no activities such as sorting of bottles, employee loitering, smoking, or any such other activity that would otherwise impair the quiet enjoyment of adjacent properties will take place to the rear of the building after 7 p.m. until 10 a.m. the following day. Temporary storage of bottles, trash, and employee activity in this area shall be minimized so as not to impact abutting properties at any hour, end quote. That's, again, a quote from the operating plan. Uh, she notes, per the old rules, you know, some of these activities shouldn't happen at all. Uh, there should be no loitering or smoking uh, at any time, not just within the act described by the operating plan. Uh, she then adds a quote from the operating plan, quote, any new exterior refrigeration compressors will be placed on the roof or the east side of the building if feasible. Uh, and she claims that that, that language is a little vague. Uh, what, what's going to be installed? Uh, are we going to be impacted by loud machinery to be installed on, on the property? Uh, and we would, she would ask that they be discussed before that happens, that that, that be a topic of discussion. Um, Next quote is, is that quote I mentioned before in my own comments. After 10 p.m., music and sound systems inside the building will be operated at a level as to not be disruptive to any adjacent property. It's an end quote from the operating plan. Uh, and she asks, is this a, a, you know, is this a way to try to get around uh, the noise restrictions? And frankly, there should never be an operation of music uh, at a level that is disruptive to the adjacent property. Uh, the next quote is something I believe that Jim uh, Frades or others had mentioned, uh, the quote from the operating plan that says all windows on the easterly side of the first and second floors will remain closed, end quote. That is a, a quote from the operating plan again. Uh, and her comment is, shouldn't, you know, all the windows and doors we understand should be, you know, closed based on the select board ruling. Um, she had a question about deliveries. Uh, I know there's been some discussion before the board this evening about whether or not those will be sort of to the side of the building which I'm sure would be appreciated on Broad Street, but uh, she was worried about whether or not it will impact the north side of the building, which is the part that really abuts the neighborhood um, and would ask that that not be that deliveries go through uh, the east or west sides uh, only. Um, and those, those are the plans, the comments that she emailed me. I, I would add two, two points. Um, the operating plan says that trash will be picked up six days a week. Uh, given the restaurant's going to be operating seven days a week, I, I think we should, you know, it, it certainly, I think, is advisable to have trash pick up seven days a week. And the final thing is with the additional bathrooms. Those bathrooms are going to be installed basically on the north side of the building, the northwest side. 
Um, and it doesn't appear, I'm certainly not aware of whether or not any studies have been done about whether or not there's gonna be any sewage impact based on the additional use of bathrooms on that side. There haven't been bathrooms there before. Uh, I can say that the sewage uh, area on Ash Street off of North Water has already been uh, pretty heavily overloaded. Uh, so would ask that we make sure that there's not gonna be any adverse uh, implications posed by the installation of bathroom facilities and the waste that's created by those facilities uh, to the adjacent neighborhood, given that it's on the, on the border. Thank you again, Mr. Chair, appreciate the time. Thank you, John. Uh, let's see, uh, Sarah, would you Can like I to address some of that? Those? Sorry, First, Mr. just for clarification, is Ms. Santa Moore, isn't she Mr. Pressman's wife? A am I wrong about that? I was, I'm confused. Could an answer you that unless somebody on the staff knows, we can ask John if he's still. Yeah, I just, I would, I would just like clarification on that. Um, a lot of the language that is in the operating agreement that's causing concern is language that's taken directly out of the existing decision. So it's not our attempt to get around anything or be sneaky or, you know, or try to make things vague. What we tried to do was take conditions directly out of, right, directly out of the existing MCD special permit. And maybe we can, when we draft this new um, modification, maybe we can refine those in a way that makes sense. But just starting back with the August 23rd, 2004 special permit, just as an example, um, condition number 10, that the applicant will place any new exterior refrigeration compressors within the trash enclosure area if feasible. <clears throat> I mean, these are all that only non-operable windows will be installed in the new addition along the easterly property line. Um, <clears throat> we, in we intend to make this as quiet and un unobjectionable as we can while still operating a restaurant ha as has been traditionally operated there. So to the, ex to the extent that we can clean up some of these, these things um, <clears throat> and make them less objectionable, I'm certainly happy to do that as we go through the drafting process. Um, the, the bike racks, for the employees, I think we're always intended to be in the back. I don't think that that's anything we've relocated there. The ones that are up on the street side that are being donated to the town are in the sidewalk and are intended for use by the general public oh. traveling to Broad Street. <clears throat> yep. Thank you. Um, I see that Jonathan Pressman is present. Uh, if you're available, John, would you be able to answer Ms. Alger's question about uh, any kind of relation you may have with RC? Yeah, yeah absolutely. And, and first of all, I would say the bike racks, there are no bike racks in the north side, by the way, at this point. Uh, yeah, as, as I've indicated in our written submissions to the planning board, uh, Ms. St. Amore is my wife. We're not together today. I can only imagine that Ms. Alger has raised the question as a gentle reminder on this Valentine's Day that I should probably be off getting her <laughs> Uh, and I will, and I want to thank Ms. Alger for the reminder, but yeah, there's no secret about that. It's been in almost every piece of writing that we submitted to the boards. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you for your clarification, John. Uh, oh, boy. Can I just, can hey, I just point, point me, out, sir. Um, Mr. Chair, condition number six of the 2004 MCD special permit Two bike racks shall be permitted to the rear of the building for the exclusive use of the employee residence. That's, that's all we're trying to do. If they haven't been there, they haven't been there. We haven't been there either. So this is all very new to us. We're just trying to go through the existing permit, understand what all the restrictions Etc. are condition number five, that no activities such as sorting bottles, employee lo loitering, smoking, or any other such activity, which would otherwise impair the quiet enjoyment of adjacent property shall take place to the rear of the building after 7 p.m. until opening the following day. 
temporary storage of bottles, trash, employee activity in this area shall be minimized so as to not impact abutting properties at any hour. These are all things that we've gone through. We're trying to understand how has this operated in the past successfully, I, I believe successfully operated in the past, and how can we continue that success and make it our own. So we're just, all we're trying to do is take the existing conditions and, and incorporate them into our operating plan. If there's ways that we can make it better and clearer, then we're, we're all for that. Thank you, Sarah. And I think a, a lot of things uh, we've addressed as a board in the past for different decisions like the Roberts Collection on Center Street. We addressed right. bottles and, and when you can uh, have pickups and time of day, bike racks. Uh, we've weighed out not just for the quiet enjoyment of the neighbors, but also we realized downtown limited space. Uh, we're not going to put a bike rack in the middle of the road or the uh, driveway, so we probably put it uh, in the in one of the setbacks, um, so that it's uh, it's out of the way of the public. There are two bike racks: one for the public, one for the employees. Um, so it's going to be, uh, you know, not everyone is going to get exactly what they want, but I think overall right. the plan is going to be everyone's going to be fairly satisfied um, with the reduction of the request. Um, so that being said, I see a couple what, of hands raised. What, what I'm thinking, Mr. Chair, as I'm sitting here, is that instead of when when we draft a, if we are drafting um, an an approved amendment that maybe instead of doing what we've done in the past, which is just sort of um, change one or two things and leave everything else the way it was, maybe what we should do is a completely new decision that incorporates everything from the past, brings it forward, makes it clearer, modifies some of the language so that it does exactly what it's supposed to do and supersede all that previous relief so that when you go to look, you don't have to weed your way through a decision in 2004 and then three or four or five amendments coming forward. It can be kind of challenging. And so we can end up with just one cohesive decision that everyone can look at. I'm thinking that might be, that might make sense. It's a little bit more work, but I think it would be worthwhile. And I'll leave that um, for Leslie to think about and comment on um, if that would be easier. Um, in the meantime, I'd like to recognize a couple of hands on the board that have been raised. Uh, Dave Iverson. Thank you, John. Um, uh, as we're talking about gentle reminders here, I, I just, everyone needs to realize that half of Ash Street is in the commercial downtown district. I think the applicant has come a very long way in helping to alleviate some of the issues here and, and some of the concerns. And, and as much as we appreciate everyone on Ash Street um, and, and their comments and their concerns, um, to think that we are going to create a situation where this restaurant operates in a bubble and has no effect on anyone is not a realistic um, a realistic situation. And so as much as we want to um, mitigate any sort of um, issues, I, I think to say that, that we can mitigate all of them is, is an unrealistic expectation. So um, with that said, I just think that um, as much as we appreciate the input from the Ash Street neighbors, and, and we definitely want them to continue to put input, I think that they need to manage their expectations and, and realize that they are in a, in a commercial area, but we are doing our best. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. Before I recognize the others yeah. on the board, I'd like to ask Leslie to uh, comment or I'm going to give her a little liberty here first. Go ahead, Leslie. Excuse me. Um, so I wanted to comment on Sarah's suggestion about the decision. Mm -hmm. And I think it would be good to you know, combine all the prior modifications into a new decision so you don't have to go looking back. And we've done that on other projects um, over the years. And it, it, at some point is helpful. 
to consolidate everything. Thank you. I was hoping you'd say that. Uh, it's, it's, it's already confusing to refer back to the 2004 decision, see the numbers, um, and try and um, you know, see how the present day is affected. Uh, but I think by taking a little bit of the previous, although, and, and the restrictions that we're going to be imposing on the present, um, it will be a lot clearer to just pull something and read it out. Um, thank you. And I see Barry, your hands raised. Yeah, no, I, I'm, I just wanted to echo what Leslie was saying. I'm, I'm, and Sarah, it's a great idea to just revamp the document into something new. I'm, I'm sure you'll also wind up putting in cross indexes as well, too, as to when it refers, as you're doing it, how those decisions came into play as well, too. So if we ever need to go back to the original document, but I, I like it. It's It's been through many iterations at this point. So I, I appreciate the extra effort. Thank mm -hmm. you. Uh, Cam, I see your hand raised. Hi, I just, um, in listening to the, the neighbors and I appreciate their comments as well as um, uh, Dave's earlier comments. I just wanted to inquire if we had any, if anyone can remind me about the um, outdoor sound at the Roberts collection. I know that came up and I think somehow I was being a bit disturbed by the concept that nothing should occur on a neighboring property that could possibly interfere with a neighbor. I happen to live in R10 and, um, you know, in the summer people are outside, they have their evening gatherings, they get home after work and play some music outside. I can hear that. I can, I can hear Cisco when the wind is right. Um, so I just, uh, maybe it was just the wording of the way that they put it, that at no time ever should any sound come out of one person's property and interfere with another person's property. That I see, I just wanted to say that seemed a little extreme. So it made me think of the Roberts collection where I know we had some um, uh, I believe some time restrictions on outdoor patio music and things like that. I, I just wanted to um, see if those are included or if somehow they are applicable because I would like to also um, recognize that the Brotherhood is on a separate property and does have rights within its own property boundaries that are not necessarily to be um, uh, controlled or determined by the the neighbor. So, um, so with that, I'm, I, if someone could get back to me on the Roberts collection, that would be great. Thank you. I, I think just quickly, the distinction between this and the Roberts collection is the Roberts collection was allowed exterior music and this project will not be. Okay, great, thank you. But people will still be outside talking and... Yeah, there's no stopping them. <laughs> They'll be breathing and talking and yeah. Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> They'll be eating um, and, and, and things like that. Mr. Chairman, yes. can I just add a couple of things? Yes, Nat, Thank I know you. you've been trying to um, come in, although no, no, I haven't no, officially no. seen I your want hand. <laughs> appreciate it. I, I'm just, I have a real hand, not the <laughs> okay. Zoom hand. Sorry. Go ahead. Um, so, look, last, I appreciate what Dave said and what Campbell said. Um, and I want to add a little something for the people on Ash Street, especially people that have moved in recently. The Graydon House and the White Heron Theater are brand new. They weren't existing businesses. They had permits. They had new permits, fires, more permits. They, they are fresh, brand new projects that got constructed not long ago. I hate, I'm so glad they did because I'm not sure what would be happening right now if those projects were coming in. So they're part of us. They look like they've been there forever. And, you know, as Dave said, you, you know, 
This is the commercial downtown. This was all RC zoning before we came up with the commercial district, commercial downtown district to get to wait to get rid of the parking requirement that was the most impossible discussion I've ever witnessed in all my years doing this. Um, as far as deliveries and all that kind of stuff, getting that technical with trash and 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 the food and stuff. Let me tell you something. That stuff happens at the best possible time that those companies can do it. Nobody wants to be in town during the day. Those I can tell you right now, Reese is down there before the, the chickens start crowing. Okay, that I guarantee. The Gas is down there right after Reese, okay? The food trucks get off the boat. The earliest boat that they get off on is 7.30. The next one gets in at 8.30. And if, with a little luck in a year and a half, they all might be getting off at 8 30, at 7.30. But that's the best that's ever going to happen for this island. So it is what it is. You can't take one business that's been there forever and that street that has all those deliveries and try to make something different for one, that's just impossible. It's just an unrealistic thing to talk about. I do, Sarah, really appreciate the bike racks. Are we doing hoopy bike racks just like the ones in front of, in front of the bookstore? The hoopy out in ones? The, out in the sidewalk? Well, yes. If, I yes. Think if you want hoopy ones, we'll do hoopy ones. You got to do the hoopies. Okay. You got to do the hoopy bike racks because yeah. you can walk between them and they don't create a fence issue where you have a bike rack that is sort of creates it so people can't walk through. You know how that works here. Everybody walks wherever the hell they want to walk. They just cross the street. So it doesn't right. matter. Um, so I just, you know, I just want, I just, you know, I just want to add to what Dave said is there's just going to have to be a, a one year period of getting used to a new owner. Um, this is a special permit. Uh, there can be open, the public hearings can be open mm -hmm. at any time. Mm -hmm. We just have to, you know, they bought the place. This is America still. I know we might not think so sometimes when we turn on the TV, but it is. And that is the way it's going to be. And this project is going to continue this, this, this business. And I hope everything can work uh, cooperatively. Um, because if it wasn't them, it would be somebody else that's probably already buying places here. So I think we need to get along and work things out and see how the summer goes. Maybe, we'll, you know, maybe we won't have a mask. Thank you. Thank you, Nat. Um, Barry, I saw your hand up and then down. Um, so I just want to, before I add to any more board questions, Meg, is there anybody else in the public that would like to speak that has not spoken already? No, I'm not seeing anyone. Okay. Um, anyone else on the board care to comment? All right, uh, what is the pleasure of the board? And Leslie, if I may, what, uh, what is your, do you have a, enough information to go on from the board, um, the conditions, the previous conditions, how they'll be integrated into the new conditions? Um, is there any questions that you have that you'd like answered from the, the board and what we're looking at? No, nope. I would recommend that you all close the public hearing and take a vote and we'll draft a decision for you. Great. Um, Barry, if your hands up for that motion, I would recognize you. It is, sir. So motion to close public hearing. Uh, is there a second? Second. Second. Uh, didn't hear that. Was that you, Nat? Second. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, motion's been made to close the public hearing by Barry and second by Nat. Uh, roll call, Barry. Aye. Nat. Aye. Dave. Aye. Fritz. Aye. And the chair votes aye. Now on to the merits. Is there a motion? Yeah, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion at this point that we instruct staff to drop the appropriate decision uh, based upon 
what we've heard for testimony, plus what's been submitted by Attorney Alger, um, to be able to carry the project forward as to with modifications as they stand now. Great, Hopefully Leslie, do you, do you think that is enough of a motion for, for you and staff? Great, is there a second? Okay. I'll second. I heard Dave, unless somebody else bugged out. So I'll recognize Barry is making the motion and Dave seconding. Um, roll call, Barry. Aye. Dave. Aye. Nat. Aye. Fritz. Aye. The chair votes aye. Thank you very much, Sarah. Uh, thank, thank you. you. I really thank you, neighbors. I appreciate the neighbors' um, uh -huh. patience and working with us, and I appreciate the board, and thank you very much. Happy Valentine's Day. Uh, same to you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Thank Chair. You, sir. Uh, yes, Fritz. Uh, just, a, just a question. Um, would we, given the number of changes that have been talked about, mm -hmm. would it be possible that the draft decision could be circulated um, to the board before we go in and sign? Yes. Great. Perfect. Good suggestion. Thank you very much, Fritz. All right, moving on. Uh, next, we have uh, Randolph P. Norris, trustee of Norris Family Trust, Nine Bay Barry, Nine Bay Barry Lane. And I believe this was a, a public hearing that we had uh, voted on already. Um, that was, um, I believe, the A&R subdivision that was filed maybe had expired. Liza would, or Meg, would you care to comment on that? Sure. And Arthur Reed is here too to kind of elaborate further on his request. But the reason why this didn't move forward at the meeting last month is because there was an AR subdivision approval that the board made, I believe, um, pre COVID, that it just needed to be filed with the town clerk and follow through with the appeal period before you guys could consider converting that to the rear lot subdivision. And the rear lot subdivision is what is before you this evening. Arthur, welcome and again. This is actually the first, th thank you very much. Yes, this is the first uh, discussion of, of the uh, plan in question to, to do a, um, a real lot subdivision. Uh, at the time that we originally submitted the uh, conventional plan, we were doing that specifically because there was a proposed zoning change which would have affected our ability to uh, subdivide the property. That zoning change uh, never went through, and we hadn't pursued the AR subdivision until necessary to uh, uh, go forward now with the uh, real lot subdivision. And again, this is a typical uh, real lot subdivision. You've seen a number of these. Uh, we, uh, uh, you have as the proof plan, the uh, approval required plan that you've already uh, approved. And uh, we've seen the recommendations from staff that are contained in the staff report. Uh, we have uh, no problem with any of these. We'd be happy to uh, agree to all of them. We can go through them if you want, or um, uh, just go from what you have, uh, whichever way you want to go. Um, the board, um, would make would need to make the finding that the property complies with the requirements for uh, real lot subdivision. It's in harmony with the general purpose and intent of the bylaw and the conditions, which are very brief. I might as well go through them. Each lot be allowed two dwellings uh, for a total of four dwellings on the property. Uh, that the second dwelling on one of the lots will be uh, restricted to the maximum 650 square feet, equivalent to a tertiary dwelling. Uh, and uh, that each lot would comply with the ground cover requirements. And of course, we have to come back with an ANR plan to uh, effectuate this, which we would plan to do as soon as the appeal period would run from the grant of relief on the special permit. Thank you, Arthur. Uh, happy to I answer have... any questions you may have. I have a question and Arthur, maybe you might not be able to answer, but I think this is really for staff and maybe Leslie would help. 
Uh, just noticing in condition number two, the maximum of 650 square feet on the one second dwelling that would be considered the same size as the tertiary. Uh, we do have articles that are going to be presented in this year's annual town meeting that have an increase from 650 to I believe it's 900. If that were to take place, does this decision that we vote on ma make it a maximum of the six? 50, or does that open it up to the potential future increase? And if it, and not to get ahead, but if it did, could we put a condition to allow it to meet that condition, that change? So the decision is binding, but I think you could add language in here about, um, you know, pending the outcome of article number, whatever it is, I don't have it handy, um, that a minor modification could be, um, could be used to deal with it if the person wants to change it. Thank you. Arthur, does that seem like a good uh, suggestion or are you okay with just the maximum 650? That's, that's a perfectly reasonable idea. Somehow, somehow I, I have some doubt that on this lot, uh, uh, as divided, that anybody's going to be going very large on the secondary dwelling anyway. Uh, okay. But sure, that, that would make it consistent with the general concept of uh, the tertiary dwelling equivalent becoming 800 feet with that bylaw uh, if it passes. passing as I assume it will. Right. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Uh, open it up to the board. Questions, comments? Uh, I don't see any hands raised. So with that, I will open it up to the public. Meg, if you see anybody's hands raised, please identify. Not seeing anyone. Okay, uh, with that, I would entertain a motion from the board to close public hearing. So moved. So moved. Uh, motions were made by Fritz, seconded by Nat. Roll call, Fritz. Aye. Nat. Aye. Dave. Aye. Barry. Aye. And chair votes aye. Now on to the merits. Is there a motion? I uh, make a motion that we uh, um, prove the rear lot subdivision uh, in accordance with the application subject to the two findings set forth in the staff memo and the four conditions set forth in the staff memo uh, with an, uh, what do we want to do? Note, uh, note that the, the 650 would change to 800 if it passes in town meeting. Is that if, Leslie? Doing? If you're okay with that motion, um, yeah, I think we should leave a number out and just add like pending article number, whatever right. that number is at town meeting for right. the increase in the tertiary, okay, to the maximum size. Do you want me to put um, or is otherwise specified in or is specified by the tertiary requirements in 139.2? Or do you want me to add the town meeting? I think we can uh, work out some language between now and when you all sign it. Okay. If it, if it fails, obviously it's a moot point. But if it passes, then uh, I, I think we should identify this particular annual town meeting because obviously things can change over years and we would want to make it um, part of this decision. So I'll leave it up to um, staff to, for the wording of the uh, motion. Uh, Fritz made the motion. Is there a second? Second. Okay. All right. Motion has been made by Fritz, seconded by Barry. Roll call, Fritz. Aye. Barry. Aye. Nat. Aye. Dave. Aye. And chair votes aye. Thank you very much. Thank you, Arthur. Uh, Thank next. you, indeed. Have a good night. Or maybe we'll see. <laughs> next one. Uh, you will. <laughs> Mar Ventures, uh, Stephen Mar, White Plains Funding. Uh, this is for 47 and 51 Sparks Ave and 109 Pleasant Street. Oh, made the, yeah, that's it. And uh, who over. is here? John Hessian is the applicant here. I'm a second to get on. 
Um, so this application before you is for an AR subdivision with the intent um, to just implement the, the zoning freeze for the height limitation <clears throat> from last year's meeting. So that's kind of what the intent is here, not to actually move forward with any construction at this point. Um, but I see John is on with us now. Yes, I am. Good evening. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, Mr. Chairman and members of the board, John Hessian with VHB. Um, I'm on tonight representing the applicant Stop and Shop um, on behalf of the owners, uh, Mar Ventures, White Plains Funding and Stop and Shop. As Megan said, for the definitive, definitive subdivision approval of approximately three acres of land um, at those three addresses. The, the property is located in the CMI zoning district. It's bounded by Sparks, Pleasant, um, Sanford Road, on the east and the Boys and Girls Club to the west. Um, actually with me earlier on the meeting was Linda Figueredo from Stop and Shop, but she had to um, excuse herself for an, another commitment. Um, so she's no longer on. Uh, and as Megan mentioned, the intent of this application is to perfect a zoning freeze um, that was started with the submission and approval of a preliminary plan um, that was approved at, at this board's July 12th, 2021 uh, public hearing. Um, the sub subdivision application is a total of 14 lots, um, 13 of which are buildable um, and one which is not buildable, which is the actual roadway right of way parcel. Um, Although this is for zoning uh, freeze protection only, the subdivision has been designed uh, in conformance with the rules and regulations so that if, if it could actually be built, although that's not the property owners or the applicants um, intention at this time, it is solely for the zoning freeze protection, but everything has been designed uh, in conformance with the rules and regulations if uh, if there was a change of heart on any of that, uh, I think it would also be important to note that any development on any of the individual lots would need to come before um, this planning board uh, prior to any development or construction on individual lots. So I'll keep it brief. I can go into as much detail on the application as you would like, but uh, since it is just for zoning freeze protection, um, I'll keep my presentation brief and turn it over for any questions or, or comments. Thank you, John. Uh, I appreciate that. And I will open it up to the board for any kind of questions, comments before I open it up to the public. I see Jeff. Cam, your hand is raised. Fritz, I will recognize you in a second, sorry. Yeah. Go ahead, yes. Cam. Yes, thank you so much. Um, so I'm, I understand the zoning freeze, et cetera, but I, I'd like to um, make probably the same comment I made in July when I was told it's just a zoning freeze, so don't take it seriously. Nonetheless, I do, I would like to say that I, I believe there are too many curb cuts with this particular design um, for the property onto both Sparks and Pleasant, which are already what I would consider main thoroughfares into the Mid Island area and um, have difficulty with traffic flow as it is without creating um, more stop and go, stop and go. The other thought that I had was, you know, when or if eventually Sparks and Pleasant become one way, you know, each one is a one way coming or going. Um, it really inhibits the um, ability of these properties to come and go because they'll have to do circles to get into their property or out of their property. I think Sanford Road is a lovely connecting road that um, should really be considered more in terms of being the entry and exit point for this development. And given that the property owners have property on each side of Sanford Road, um, I just, I'd really love to encourage something that 
focused that entry and exit on that existing road that already has, you know, curb cuts. There's expectations on most motorist parts that cars are either turning in or turning out of that area um, versus compounding the problems already there. The other um, thing I would like to ask about, um, and this may not be the right format, again, because it is just for his own freeze, but just to put it out there, um, in terms of contributions towards bike paths um, or sidewalk multi-use path development in that area, um, I think would um, be beneficial as well. So those are my thoughts. Thank you so much for hearing me tonight. Thank you, Cam. Um, I think when, the, uh, as John the applicant was mentioning, this is really just for uh, zoning fees purposes. And I'm sure if there was any kind of uh, major development that was proposed, we would have a lot to say on it, not only from a curb, curb uh, cut standpoint, but also, leave, also from um, anything uh, uh, that would uh, for you know, you know, lighting, uh, uh, you, you name it. So I wouldn't really hold too much weight right now, but your your comments are well taken. Thank you, Ken. Um, Barry? Oh. I'm going to let you go to Fritz first. He had his hands up. Or oh, sorry. Uh, Fritz, That's you okay. put your hand down. <laughs> maybe it was a, <laughs> I didn't, I didn't put uh, up an official the, hand. I didn't put up the mechanical one. Okay. The real one. Great. Thank college. you. Go ahead, Fritz. Uh, this is just quickly clarification. Uh, the the um, packet says 13 lot uh, subdivision, 12 buildable lots, but I thought I heard John say 14 lots, 13 buildable. So just clarifying which it is. I presume it's on the plan. I just, I, I don't have the plan. I, I can't access the plan while I'm on this format. If I could, Mr. Chair, um, Go ahead, John. I, I believe I misspoke. <laughs> I was thinking it was um, 13, one not built. I, I was, I just messed up my math. <laughs> 13, <laughs> is, um, 13 total. Um, 12 buildable. Thank you. 12 buildable. Great. Thank you for your clarification, Fritz, and thank you for clearing that up, John. Leslie, your hands up. I wanted to recognize you before Barry, just in case you have something that you'd like to add before Barry comments. Thank you. Back to the lot question. You're showing lots 13 and 14, but those don't have any connection to the, the main parcel of land and they're separated by a road. Is there a reason why you're including those on the definitive plan? John, the um, so for zoning trees protect. We are subdividing those lots. Um, it's one lot today, and we're subdividing that into two lots. And zoning trees protection goes to the land shown on the preliminary and definitive subdivision plan. So um, it's our assertion that those two lots would be afforded the same zoning freeze protection as the, um, the, the lots on the west side of Sanford Road. Okay. And then um, I'm not sure that I agree with that, but I don't think it's worth holding everything up. Um, and then the other question that I had, um, you know, I know it's just a freeze plan, but there are a lot of lots. And I think Campbell had a good point about potential driveway access. Would you agree to um, restricting the lots to the interior of the subdivision where possible, and then maybe minimizing the lots off Pleasant Street with driveway easements or something else? So we did um, we did maximize the the number of lots um, accessing from the proposed subdivision roadway um, lots four and eleven could be accessed off Sanford Road lots thirteen and fourteen the intention would be they would remain to access um, 
off of Sanford Road. So we're we're talking about lots one, two, and eight and nine that are either on um, Pleasant or Sparks. Um, I, again, yeah, it is for a zoning freeze. I, I think we we could um, we could agree to limit either limit. Or, or minimize the curb cuts um, onto Sparks and Pleasant. So we would either kind of consolidate a couple of the, you think in Leslie that we would consolidate a few of these lots or potentially, um, or, or just potentially look at a different lot configuration. I don't, I don't think we can get any more lots accessing off the subdivision roadway. So we would probably need to consolidate some of those lots. Okay, so, so we could put something in the decision about you know, limiting access um, to the interior roadway or Sanford Road, um, and then perhaps consolidating the driveway for lots one and two and eight and nine. Sure. Okay. I think, I think so. Um, and just if I if I could, um, I think Leslie, you know, it was quite a while ago. I think we came in for a preliminary discussion, and we had a proof plan. And, and part of the reason for the number of lots was how could we maximize the, you know, if there were, um, uh, and I'm sorry, I'm going to have the 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 incorrect terminology, but the accessory dwelling units. If we were to subdivide this property uh, into the you know lots that all meet current zoning requirements, but uh, allow the ability to create the maximum accessory dwelling units, we created that the number of lots that we have for that purpose. So if we consolidate some of these lots, that potential would be reduced. Okay, thank you, John. Leslie, is that acceptable? Yes, thank you. Okay, great. Uh, Barry, your hands raised. Um, thank you. Um, just, I, I recognize this being a preliminary plan, and we've certainly talked about that area well into things. Leslie, with the activity going on here and now, what's coming up with Act Mid Island, um, has there been a coordinated review? To, to start looking at some of this stuff because the, the, the intensity of what's starting to develop here is, is getting high. And so I think in that particular vicinity um, with, with those two projects and potentially a third one, um, we need to, I think we need to put on our planning board hats again and really determine how that area is gonna develop be, because this is the opportune time to do it. So I'm sorry, back to my original question. Has there been a coordinated review? No, we've been doing that as the commercial or in the case of a multifamily project as those come in. So okay. not at the subdivision level. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm feeling like it's, it's getting toward high time because I think even if, if this does develop outside of the freeze plan, um, there's some significant changes that are going to have to take place. I mean, you know, Sanford Road unto itself um, is, is in its current format workable, but the moment you start anything else in there, it goes, to, in my opinion, to a substandard roadway system. Um, and this may be an opportune time to look at it and maybe even begin to address, do we really want Sanford Road or do we need to put in another roadway system? Because I, I think the thing too is, depending upon what begins to happen with Sparks and Pleasant Street, you're going to look at having to potentially do restrictions on, on allowing access out of those lots onto those two streets um, and maybe make whatever roadway system we put internally to it um, available. But like I said, I mean, I, I get it. I just want to at least throw some of those thoughts out so that they're there um, so that as we move outside of the stage of moving from preliminary into, into a, into a uh, to, I'm sorry, not preliminary, a zoning freeze, 
that they just don't fall off the table and we take another look at it. So thanks for listening. I appreciate it. Thank you. I don't see anyone's hand up for the board. I'll open this up to the public. Uh, Meg, please alert me if there's anybody with their hands raised. I'm not seeing anyone. Nope. Okay. Uh, seeing none, uh, what is the pleasure of the board? Make a motion we close the public hearing at this point. Is there a second? Second. Second. Okay. Motion has been made by Barry and seconded by Fritz to close the public hearing. Roll call, Barry. Aye. Fritz. Aye. Nat. Aye. Dave. Aye. And the chair votes aye. Now, on to the mer merits. Uh, I would also um, remind any motion uh, to be made to um, reference it to also the comments and and uh, that Leslie had asked for and agreed by the applicant for the lot configuration of access. That being said, is there a motion? I'll make a motion to at this point to approve as per the staff's recommendations with the appropriate findings that are also denoted in our packet. Um, and hopefully that's sufficient. Back and, I, and, and with the addition to that, this is to implement a zoning freeze that, that has to be paramount to everything. Thank you, Barry. Motion's been made by Barry, seconded by Nat. Roll call, Barry. Aye. Nat. Aye. Fritz. Aye. Dave. Aye. And chair votes aye. Thank you very much. Thank you, John. Thank you all. Have a have a good evening. Happy Valentine's Day. You as well. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, moving on, six North Beach Street, uh, eight North Beach Street, and four Dolphin Court. Um, I will uh, recognize Meg. Is there anyone here for the applicant? Yeah, I'm bringing Linda over. So just give her a second. Um, and I, in the meantime, I'd like to welcome Stephen Welch. I see he has joined. I don't know if you, I just missed you, Stephen, but officially welcome. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Linda, you'll have to tell me if anyone else is, is here for this application. I don't see Mike, um, but I don't know who else might might be here to Okay. Looking at the moment, I know um, Pia Kaiser should be here, unless they uh, didn't register. Tim. And Matthew Tim Vaughn should be here. Tim is probably here somewhere. I know they're watching. They may have come in through uh, YouTube instead, but um, I'm here. <laughs> so just to oh, fill Michael? in some time. Um, this this application was brought yes. up at a previous meeting and discussed at length. I know there were a couple of uh, decisions or, or actually questions that we had. We were waiting for answers to one of them, primarily being the uh, drainage plans that uh, were going to be reviewed by our engineer Ed Pesci. Um, I believe we had uh, comments and a letter sent by Ed Pe Pesci, or, or maybe some comments, but. Uh, Please, um, May. You ready? Yes, go ahead, Linda. It is uh, Michael Vaughn, and I think the Kaisers are trying to come in, Megan. So I think the Kaisers should be on for public comment, Linda. They're not, you know, on this application as part of the applicant team. Okay. The, um, Michael Vaughn should be up there, though. Yep, I brought him over. Okay. Um, as John just sort of summarized, the only things missing were the drainage plan and the landscape plan. Landscape plan was submitted a couple of weeks ago. The drainage plan was submitted and initially reviewed by Ed Pesci. He gave us a list of things, um, I believe that's in your packet, that are fine. There's stuff that the two of them can work out as you normally do um, after the approval and the hearing is closed. Um, I I do have something, and I, I submitted something also about um, clearing out that corner for visibility. There's not much there, so we're going to clear out what scrubs there are there. 
Um, and the sidewalk was already redone by the town completely. I could put in pictures of it. The only thing we have to do is fill in where the driveway is coming off of North Beach with uh, the same brick and level it off and uh, provide the access, the pedestrian access from North Beach Street on the sidewalk uh, into the property, which is where most people are gonna be entering and leaving the property is from the uh, pedestrian walkway from the, the uh, sidewalk that's there. Opposite side of the street, the town also put as much sidewalk over there as they could because of property lines. And that was also rebricked. So the town has kept up with the sidewalk because there's so many people walking to the Jetties Beach on our side of the road in particular. But no further uh, improvements need to be made on either side of the road because the town did that already. And I believe we've pretty much given you everything, the management plan, the construction management plan, um, we are working our way slowly through the HDC with various other aspects of this, reshingling the windows, things like that. And um, I know you were in receipt of a bunch of more letters from the neighbors on Dolphin Court. I, I could spend all day debunking a uh, majority of what the comments were, uh, particularly one that was very irksome, uh, the neighbor across the street at one Dolphin Court said that there were no sidewalks on Dolphin Court. Well, there's a huge sidewalk on his side of Dolphin Court that runs the entire length and connects with the town sidewalk. So that's not even accurate. Um, as I said, we've got prohibition against people bringing cars. Traditionally, the Kaisers have told people not to bring cars and 99% of them have not brought cars. As far as traffic on Dolphin Court, we're reducing it to uh, one handicapped space and one or two regular spaces. Um, we don't anticipate a lot of traffic, more so than what's already at the rental houses. All but one are rented. There are summer rentals. And I know one is going for 20 grand a week. Another one's going for 16 grand a week. We're not arguing about that, but it is not a residential neighborhood with homeowners in the houses. And one of the letters just went on the market for rental. Um, that hadn't been previously rented by this particular family. So I, I think it's specious. I don't think it's gonna be crazy traffic in there any more than the people that are house cleaning all the rentals over there, weekly rentals or four day rentals that are across the street from us. So it is an area that has a lot of B&Bs. We back up pretty much to the Nantucket Hotel, um, Beachside, the commercial areas across the street from us, the White Elephant dorms. I mean, in the uh, little village that's across the street down now, uh, that little street across from us that has a bunch of rental cottages by the week. So I, it's just, you know, it is an existing complex. We are doing our best to make it fit in and upgrade it and um, not increase the rooms uh, more than one, I believe, if one. I haven't looked at the chart for a while because we've been so focused on these ancillary issues. But I think we've given you everything that uh, you guys asked for. And uh, I'm open for questions if you have any more questions that we hadn't dealt with at the first, the other meeting. Thank you, Linda. Um, I just want to let everyone know on the board that we, the, at the last meeting, we had considerable discussion and a lot of time I spent on this. Uh, we did narrow it down to a few questions and I just didn't want, it, it's a very um, sensitive area because of the, obviously the, the neighbors, what's going to be proposed and everybody wants to protect their, their property rights and we have to um, show some respect. Um, please, any questions that you have, uh, go through the, the uh, chair. And uh, I just wanted to try and limit it to um, new things, uh, any kind of discussions. So we've already heard a lot of the, the reasons why it should be or shouldn't be there. Um, I don't want to extend a meeting for, for an hour talking about the things that we've already discussed at last meeting. So that being said, I'll open it up to the board. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I do have one uh, one more thing to add to this. Um, I know the letters that address that it, it's a permanent hedge. It's a hedge in certain areas. It is not meant to go across an existing curb cut, which was put in when the road was put in, and it was put in uh, when there was an agreement between the Kaisers and the Wolf's property, which is directly behind us, 
they didn't have frontage. There's a lot of other things going on. It was also put in because at some point they would become part of the homeowners association uh, when they were going to use that curb cut. So they haven't, they've been on the list to go on to the homeowners association, but not paying uh, because they didn't become formal members and they're willing to become formal members and contribute to maintaining the road and becoming part of the association. So if there's complaints, they have a direct line as a member of the Dolphin Court Homeowners Association. So all of the conditions that are in the staff approval from before and anything new um, are fine with us. And uh, everything that Ed Pesci has put in is, is being worked out between him and uh, Dom, but there's nothing fatal in that list. So I'd like it closed tonight and a positive vote. Thank you. We'll see how that works out. Uh, that being said, again, open it up to the board. Any comments, discussions? I see shaking of heads, no. Um, so Meg, uh, I will open up to the public. Uh, so we have Peter Kaiser with his hand raised, followed by Carol Beller, uh, and then Arthur Reed. Okay, uh, before I recognize Peter, I just want to uh, stress again, uh, we've heard a lot of um, uh, public um, uh, comments from the previous meeting. So if there's something new um, to add, Peter, please, by all means, go ahead. Yeah, can you see, can you see me? I can hear you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to reiterate how this whole thing happened that we were approached by the developer way back when, and I guess because of some miscalculations, and they ended up running their parking right up to the property line, and they approached us looking for this easement, and we made an agreement that I would give them the easement, three-foot easement, the length of the property, which was a lot of land, as long as we could use that road for frontage, a curb cut, and access. And that was the agreement. And everything went smooth. Now, the, the owners that went in late after that, maybe they weren't aware of that, but that's how it played out. So I just wanted to make that very clear for everybody. We never approached them. They approached us. And it all worked out. And we made it clear that we were going to use that. Okay. I guess that's about it. If you have any other questions, just give me a yell. Thank you, Peter. Uh, with that, I'll recognize Cal Bauer. Cal uh, Bauer, excuse me. Yes. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I'm going to be brief, and my topic is parking. Um, I thank Ms. Williams for her suggestions um, in which she and the owners will try to discourage um, renters, guests from bringing cars, but I would like to make an additional suggestion as the co-president of the Bram Point Association. I would hope that the owners would consider a financial incentive to the um, guests coming to this establishment. Um, the Nantucket Hotel uh, gives $100 or $200 credit against a meal or room charge to discourage people from bringing a car. We are suffering in Bram Point from too many cars. We are beyond our capacity and anything that these new owners could do to minimize that would be very appreciated. Thank you. Thank you, Carol. Um, I don't know if that actually is in the purview of uh, the planning board to impose a financial um, uh, recommendation. However, uh, the comments were made. I think uh, it's important that the, um, the owner hears that. And if they want to address that or do something, I think it's a good suggestion. Um, but that would be, I think, on their own. Uh, on terms and prerogative. Um, I don't think that is something that we would be legally um, entitled to impose on the applicant. Unless I'm wrong, uh, please somebody correct me. It is, uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, it is an interesting idea. I didn't realize the Nantucket Hotel did that. They do have actual parking off of uh, North Road or whatever that is behind them. Um, 
they don't they don't have park they don't want people bringing cars there either that's an interesting idea um we do have kind of bike racks we will have um our own transportation for our guests as well bringing them back and forth and um we do have nrta passes so that's all in the agreement there so i would uh this is an interesting idea i just haven't broached that to the owners but it will be something i'll bring up to the owners thank you linda um arthur reed i'd like to recognize you please Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, as I stated at the last meeting, I represent the uh, Dolphin Court Owners Association, and I represent all four of the individual owners of the uh, four lots that are members of the association. Uh, we are unalterably and vehemently opposed to the uh, application only insofar as it involves the access to this property, the vehicular access being entirely through Dolphin Court. Dolphin Court was uh, created as a subdivision roadway. It's a very small uh, residential cul-de-sac roadway. And uh, for, based upon the waivers that were granted at the time that the subdivision was approved, it was certainly never contemplated uh, that this would be used in connection with a large commercial operation as is being proposed here. Uh, regardless of what the developer may have done, uh, certainly the planning board uh, would at that time never have uh, allowed those waivers if it were intended as a uh, access to a commercial project. We think that the uh, application uh, for parking relief is excessive uh, I believe that the number of parking spaces that would be required under the bylaw is in excess of 20, and you're, uh, they're proposing to waive it down to three. The standard for that being uh, that uh, granting of relief is in harmony with the general purpose and intent of the bylaw, and that full compliance is physically impossible for the applicant to provide or physically possible would have a significant adverse effect upon the scenic or historic integrity of the neighborhood. We believe that it is definitely uh, possible for the uh, applicant to provide, if not full compliance, a substantially greater number of parking spaces than is being proposed here. And the final point being that the granting of relief would not be contrary to sound traffic, parking, or safety considerations. And we think that there are significant issues of safety as it involves the use of Dolphin Court by the people who uh, own Dolphin Court and uh, and use it as, as their access to their, uh, to their properties. The existence of the uh, planting easement, uh, the three foot wide hedge easement along uh, the, the uh, boundary line between uh, the Dolphin Court project and uh, uh, what's now being called the Brant uh, is an unbroken easement. It, it, there's, nothing, there's no provision in the document for there to be any break in that hedge. And as a matter of property rights, Dolphin Court uh, Owners Association has the right to plant a hedge. And if somebody cuts down the hedge for access, they have the right to replant it. And furthermore, we have determined uh, that uh, not the entire property, not the entire property that's before you uh, has rights uh, in uh, Dolphin Court as a result of that grant, only a portion of it does. So with these factors, we think that you should not close the public hearing, that you should uh, uh, take any further evidence that may be necessary in order to deal with these issues, and that you should um, deny the project unless the um, access is obtained, uh, the vehicular access to the project continues to be as it always has been from North Beach Street. We have no objection to the project going forward as long as there is no vehicular access from Dalton Court. Thank you. Thank you, Arthur. Uh, recognize Cam, whose hand has been raised. I thank, thank you again. So this doesn't have to do with any of those things. I'm, I've been trying to look at the drainage. Wasn't that one of the things that we had asked about getting more specifics on the drainage? system. Yes. So, so that's um, what I'm looking at. I 
didn't find the landscape plan, but I'm not worried about that. I'm not really worried about this either. It's more just trying to understand what's going on. So I don't know how to pick out which, um, okay, post-development watershed plan page. I don't know, but it's in purple. So what I'm trying to figure out is whether the pond, which I believe is not a pond, but is a catchment basin, I'm presuming, is under the parking lot is, you know, off Dolphin Court. Is that correct? Uh, and all the buildings will be feeding into that? I see Don Bracken's available. Is that something that you'd like to answer, Don? Yes, yes, no problem. Uh, to answer the first question is that the drainage system is subsurface. Um, it's below the proposed parking area. The reason it's called a pond, even though it's not a pond, is that's how the uh, program that uh, is universally used calls either a pond or an underground retention system. Yeah, um, just nomenclature on that. Um, so the way that the, the site was analyzed was we looked at the flow going off site, uh, which goes in two directions uh, toward North Beach Street and toward Dolphin Court. We looked at how much flow and how much volume was going under existing conditions. And then we compared it uh, on, uh, under proposed conditions uh, in which we demonstrated that there's less runoff leaving the site under proposed conditions than existing conditions. The way that we were able to accomplish that was by installing a catch basin in that parking area, um, which gets treated through an oil grit separator and then discharges into a shallow subsurface uh, leaching system. Um, there's also another drainage system on the southwest corner of the property um, that's gonna take the runoff from the roof for the addition at Ford Dolphin Court. Um, the reason that's important is because under the Stormwater Management Act, uh, because this is a combination of new development and redevelopment, we have to be able to capture and treat all the runoff from any new impervious areas, which is what we're doing for the proposed building and for all the proposed additions. Um, we couldn't uh, logistically get all the roofs from e all the existing buildings that also tie into these systems, but we did as, as much of the existing roof runoff as possible um, in order to accomplish that. The regulations do require that we recharge as much uh, as we possibly can. Um, and then another question that came up having, having to do with the flood zones and the storm analysis and that sort of thing. We looked at the flood study for Nantucket and they happened to be a, uh, what we call a transect line that evaluated the flood elevations on the site uh, from the 100 year storm all the way down to the 10 year storm. And based on the flooding elevations, um, <clears throat> the site would be inundated so, you know, somewhere just around the 25 year storm or over the 25 year storm. So that's what we evaluated it to. Um, in a lot of cases, as you may know, we, we try to design up to the 100 year storm, but when you're in a coastal flood area, you're not required to do that. So um, hopefully that answers most of your questions. Um, again, I, under I do. existing development, that it does have a pretty large parking area right now that flows into North Beach Street. And under this scenario, mo you know, most of the runoff will now be contained on site. So thank you very much for that, Don. I, uh, through you, uh, sure, go John, ahead, Ken. Mm -hmm. um, just to follow up on that, when there's a, um, so I understand that when it comes out of the pond and it's been treated, it it is released into the road or into the uh, the town, uh, it's it's not a, a sewer system, it's a road water runoff. Mm -hmm. Does does it, is it put in there or does it just sort of free flow? Because here's what I'm wondering. Mm. So I know I, I have the storm concept down, but I, I'm thinking about like a full moon, new moon, you know, king tide kind of situation in, in a, a high weather event, one of these 25 year storm event things, and whether there would, 
the result would end up being back up into this property or would the the system as designed continue to move water off this property into a contained system that moves away from the area? Do you get my question? I, uh, I know I, I'm not I, I, I think so, but adept at this, but so just just to be clear, the drainage that we're adding to the site, the subsurface drainage, is not connected to the drainage systems in the street at all. But you know, all the runoff currently goes into the street, into the street drainage system. There still will be runoff that goes into the street drainage system. So, but under the proposed conditions, there's going to be less than what's existing. And as far as when we do get those, uh, you know, flooding events or moon tide ground saturation events, it's still, it, it's still going to be an overall improvement, but there are still going to be issues throughout Brand Point that, you know, are almost impossible to solve on a site by site basis, given the elevations. Okay, super. Thank you so much. I really appreciate your time and responses. Thank you, Karen. Thank you, Don. Uh, don't see any other board members raising their hand. Meg, is there anyone in the public that would like to comment? The, one of the owners wants to speak, Mr. Chairman, Michael Vaughn. Um, sorry, Linda. I, I, could you just please wait until I hear from Meg with her question, with with the question I asked, if there was anybody else? I'll give you time after. Um, Meg, was so there? Have, yep, two people: Glenn Court, followed by Barbara and Lester Wolf. Glenn Lester Court, over. okay, and Lester. Go ahead, Glenn. I'll recognize Hi. you. All right. Good afternoon, everybody. Good evening, everybody. Um, thanks for taking the time to hear me out. I missed the last meeting, and I apologize. I wasn't able to be heard. I'm here with my wife, Brooke Court. Uh, and um, I just wanted to, with all due respect to Mrs. Williams and, and, and abundant respect for this process, I, I totally respect the petitioners. I've been on the island. Uh, we're really working with the project managers there and they've been very respectful and I respect the developers trying to do everything they possibly can. And I just wanna kind of set forth that I think some of our disagreements may be at this point, um, really a matter of communication. I think there's some potentially some communication breakdown. Um, I'm not sure if it's this uh, new wave of, uh, you know, these Zoom, these wonderful Zooms. Uh, but again, I, I totally respect this developer is trying to do the right thing. I, I'm, I'm a little taken back. Um, I would ask the chair to recognize that the letters that we submitted, um, you know, a lot of thought went into them, um, you know, and I, because of our respect for the developer, um, you know, a lot of a lot of thought went into those letters, and I do I do ask the chair to recognize that the letters, um, you know, at least were uh, were read. Um, you know, and and we appreciate very much if you were to digest um, those letters. So again, a lot of thought went into this. I just wanted to clarify for Mrs. Williams real quickly that you know I I did buy my home recently, and and you know I I expect to spend the majority of my life there. Um, you know, I've loved Nantucket ever since I was a, a very young child, and. You know, when I bought this home, you know, the thought of the thought of um, Dolphin becoming an exclusive road to service a 29 room commercial property, you know, and I'm not sure about I, I just want to learn a little more about the occupancy. Um, you know, I'm, I'm doing the worst case scenario in my mind and maybe I shouldn't, you know, maybe I shouldn't be thinking that there'd be, you know, 70 people, you know, coming and going and, um, you know, just serv servicing 70 people in 29 rooms. You know, that, that's not, I'm familiar. My family stayed at the Kaiser's place many times and, and I have a tremendous amount of respect for the Kaiser's. Uh, they've run a very quiet operation there for many years. My, my brother's right across the street. I have a sister-in-law down the road. My, my point is that I, I'm kind of taken back that, that if, if it's still on the table, that Dolphin Court is the exclusive road to service for all the Ubers and the taxis and, and the construction vehicles and service vehicles it just seems like, you know, how could, it seems like it's just ex excessive use. And I would ask with abundant respect to everybody involved to, can we do a traffic study? Can we study the amount of cars that are gonna be coming on Dolphin Court? Um, you know, once, once we break through that hedge, you know, there's no, if we do, uh, if, if, if that were to happen and, and we were to simultaneously shut down the existing entrance, I, I can't imagine that, that, that that's not going to create, you know, um, the amount of vehicle traffic that's going to be very, very dangerous in, in that little location. And just again, with Ms. Mrs. Williams, I know you're trying, you know, you're doing everything you can for the petitioner. With all due respect, 
you know, if I want to rent my house a couple of weeks a year, I, I have every right to do that. But I, I don't want to do that. I, I may. You know, it, it is on, you know, you, you mentioned that, you know, a new petition or a new owner has their home on the market for rental. I have every right to do that until I'm told otherwise. I really don't want to. I, I want to live there. I, I want to live. Come, I want to let my dog and I'll be I'm about to lower my hand. I'm sorry. But I it just. You know, I will have grandchildren there. You know, we're there all spring. I, I do have a dog and, and kids and grandkids. And my neighbor, Julie DeVito, is a full-time residence there. And in her letter, she'll tell you when she grew up, she lost it. She lost, I'm sorry, a, a young, either a young sibling to, to traffic accident. So I just would ask very respectfully that, I, you know, my, this developer to just please recognize us, you know, as you, as you would... I know you want to. I, I just think we're having a communication breakdown. With that, I want to thank everyone again. And now I'm going to lower my hand. Thank you, Glenn. And I would like to state that, uh, yes, the staff has um, uh, sent letters. Um, we get letters on almost every other application. We read through them, both positive and negatively. Um, um, so we have received them. Received them. We thank you for your comments and opinions, and we take them to heart. Um, but obviously there are two sides, so we have to be objective in our decision. But thank you very much, Glenn. I appreciate the, appreciate the comments. Uh, I will uh, recognize, I believe the second one was for lesson Barbara uh, Wolf. So please, when you're ready, uh, thank you and welcome. Thank you. This is Barbara Wolf, and I appreciate your time. It's been a long day. I appreciate that. And I'm so happy you read our letter and everybody else's letters. And I hope it's not going to be swept under the uh, road. It's really important for us. You're talking about we are now uh, in our prime of our life going through retirement. And this is going to be our permanent residence. Uh, for the uh, last year, we used the uh, place uh, all year with our um, daughters and a son-in-law and children. And when this came up, I was just kind of taken back a lot because to me, safety is the number one issue on Dolphin Court. If we have extra vans and cars and cabs and FedEx trucks and Cape Cod Express deliveries, maybe repair vehicles, people walking with strollers and uh, bicycles and weekly deliveries of laundry and May uh, service, not to mention uh, propane gas deliveries, emergency vehicles and fire trucks. It becomes overwhelming. This is a small street. Matter of fact, when a fire truck or a large uh, a vehicle like a um, garbage truck, they have to back out. Matter of fact, I have pictures that I love to show you. Uh, it's a picture of a truck just the last two weeks blocking the whole, whole uh, street of Dolphin Court. You cannot pass it at all. It's a huge truck. And that same truck, when it finally kind of parked itself, it parked itself over the curve into uh, and almost knocking down a tree so it could be uh, parked you know, on a side. What's happening to this brick road of ours that's gonna be crumbling apart and taking up uh, you know, a lot of uh, toll? Who's gonna pay for that? And also I'm very much concerned about um, the number one thing is people coming onto my property. I have a picture of two uh, men on my property discussing the removal of a trans, uh, transmitter. Now, if a transformer, if they take that transformer, how are they gonna move it? And where are they gonna move it? Are they gonna break the fence that separates uh, my house to the uh, Fort Dolphin Court? Are they gonna go through and uh, take away my trees? Are they gonna take away my hedges? And you talk about drainage. If they are proposing a, uh, a deck or a concrete type of uh, roadway near the house, that drainage is going to go into my property and I have never had flooding before and I don't want flooding, you know, to block my house because that's my number one way to get into my house. And also I was very much concerned about the deck is that the deck is going to be used for uh, get togethers or the deck is going to use for parties, weddings, music, drinking, dancing. 
Is there going to be a limit on uh, the socialization on this deck? And what about lighting? It's going to have strobe lighting. It's going to have uh, piped in music. I, oh I mean, God. this is something that I'm really kind of con concerned about. And, uh, and I hope you reread my letter again with my husband, Lester. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Anybody else on the board with their hands? And I have my hand up somewhere. <laughs> yes. Linda, I'll acknowledge you. And if you, you said just a couple of points, and then I'm going to turn it over to Michael Vaughn, one of the owners. Um, I have to say something. Um, I don't believe, but he'll elaborate on that, that Mrs. Wolf would have her property at all without the Kaiser's granting that easement. There wasn't enough frontage. I do remember that from way back when the, we went through this with the HDC trying to build that house on the wetlands. And as part of that trade-off, a curb cut was put there. So no, the hedge doesn't go across a curb cut that was in trade to get that easement and get those hedges. So we'll leave that there. I'm getting kind of irritated by that constant argument. Um, the planning staff asked us to close the entrance onto North Beach Street because it was dangerous. That's dangerous because that's actually crossing over a public sidewalk with a lot of pedestrian traffic on it. And we were coming in and out of that curb cut. And you, the visibility was tough because of the way the, the, uh, the two guest houses, which have been in existence for decades, are situated. So it made it more difficult to see left and right. And it certainly made it more difficult coming, if there's a rise in the, the grade and coming down to the level of North Beach, being able to see people in baby carriages walking left and right. If that's closed off, like we were requested by the planning staff, the main entrance to the complex will continue to be from North Beach Street because people will use that entrance and they'll be told when they register to come to Nantucket to use that entrance on foot. If somebody has to drive to the two spaces that are public spaces, one of which will have one of our vehicles in it to drive people around and pick them up and bring them there, they'll be coming in off of Dolphin Court. All the stuff that's on the corner. As I said, the, the, the 70 people, that's, way beyond the occupancy permits for that place, way beyond occupancy permits. So I don't know how we're getting 70 to 80. One of these letters said 100, that's ludicrous. The structures aren't changing that much. Um, we're having some additions put on uh, access with a handicap um, unit in Dolphin and a handicap unit in um, eight on the ground floor and uh, handicap ramp going up to six. So we're making them handicap accessible with two accessible B&B &B rooms, which are few and far between on Nantucket. I can count them on one hand basically. So I, I, I'm just non about it. Uh, the owner did say that he would entertain um, that great idea from Carol Beller from the Brand Point Association. And I was involved with writing the Brand Point area plan. I wrote plan, Brand Point area plan actually. Um, so I, I think there's some, some misrepresentations, whether delivered or not, but I, I appreciate Mr. Court's ability to rent his house. My uncle rents his house and I'm a staunch supporter of people being able to rent their homes, but it also sort of removes, uh, an owner occupied from knowing exactly what goes on with all the stuff that has to happen with laundry and everything else. Uh, when you rent your home, I know because I have to deal with my uncle's home every week. So I want to turn this over to Michael um, Vaughn. All right, thank, Michael, thank you, Linda. Chair, I we'll recognize you. Welcome. Thank you, Chair, members of the board. Um, I appreciate everyone's time, everyone who commented tonight. Linda, you've been a great help through this process. Thank you for that. Um, I want to echo Linda's position about the woman from the Brand Point Association. Uh, we'll do everything we can to discourage guests from bringing vehicles. Um, and, and uh, whatever policies or, or incentives we can incorporate, uh, we will do it. We don't want people to bring cars. Uh, I've been fortunate or blessed to be friends with Pete and Thea for over 25 years. Uh, what we really want to do here is continue sort of the proud tradition and reputation that they've built there. We want to be good neighbors. When we bought this property back in August, we sent everybody a note. 
um, you know, and, and offered to reach out to them. Um, you know, I have five kids. I plan on, plan on spending a lot of time here. Uh, I was involved back in 2008 or 2007 or eight when the developer from Dolphin approached Beaton Thea uh, because they didn't have the frontage. And I helped him negotiate that trade for the curb cut. So I've been around this a long time. Again, I defer to Pete and Thea on the details, but the home behind us was built because of that. And I, I think that needs to be acknowledged. When we started this process, um, we wanted to hire good people on the island, Matt McGecker and Mike Wilson, Linda, um, Don Bracken. Um, we didn't pretend to be experts on the island. So we really wanted to hire good people. And one of the first places we stopped was to meet with the planning staff to talk about this opportunity and what we could do. And they gave us clear and very good guidance and direction. And they instructed us to remove the curb cut uh, from North Beach. We were agnostic when we bought the property. I mean, as long as I've been going um, uh, to the Brant Point Inn, you know, the, 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 the curb cut was on the, 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 you know, there was an access point from North Beach, but we got clear direction and good reason, as Linda said, to restore the integrity of that sidewalk, to acknowledge the pedestrian activity that, that, that takes place there and to utilize the curb cut that we have, that everybody knew we had on Dolphin. So, so it wasn't our idea. This came from back in August, us uh, uh, probably before then, it might've been July, meeting with the planning staff and getting good direction and guidance from them. So I just wanna thank everybody for all of their time. I appreciate everyone's comments. I want to give everybody an assurance that we're going to do a good job, that this is going to be something we're going to be very proud of, that we, me and the other owners are going to spend a lot of time here. And we look forward to enjoying it just as you enjoy this great island. So thank you, everyone. I, I appreciate I appreciate your time and I appreciate all the help that I've received from, from Pete and Thea, first and foremost. I'm grateful for this opportunity and I intend to make the most of it. Um, and from Linda and Mike Wilson and, and um, Matt McGeckburn. So thank you, everyone. Thank you, Michael. Mr. Chairman, can I point out one really critical point? Um, I keep forgetting to mention this. Go ahead, Linda. When those guest houses were built. Um, they were built after 1979 when the MCD um, bylaw came into being. They were built at a time when they should have come in for an MCD. And for some reason, the building department never required them to come in because they were held by the same people. They never required them to come in for an MCD, even though they were on separate lots, they're contiguous as required by the bylaw. So at this point, we are here as an MCD for the triggering of the parking. And we are now entering into a management agreement which didn't exist before. We are now entering into improvement to the property which didn't, wasn't forced before. And now they have people they can go to because there'll be a manager on site with a number given to all the neighbors, including the ones on the uh, south side. So there are certain benefits to coming in for an MCD because now the planning board has the power to impose conditions for the drainage and everything else, none of which existed up until this point because it was just sort of an oversight in the 80s from the building department at that time, given who was the building inspector. And I just wanna remind the neighbors again, if there's a problem, the planning board has the right to reopen with a request to reopen um, any permits that they give so we can fix the problem or come up with another solution. So. Uh, an MCD permit is never a dead issue and closed forever. It's a, a living, breathing document that can be reopened should there be a problem that we can't fix um, from the management point of view with the neighbors. So I just wanna make sure that that's put on the record again. Thank you, Linda. I think you took the words out of not only my mouth, but Barry's as well. He had his hand up and I think he was going to say something similar. So Barry, I'll recognize you. Thank you, Linda. You stole my thunder, but that's that's one of the things I've always remarked about special permits that it, it allows us to go back in and reopen the case if things aren't working well, and the neighbors need to be aware of that. I mean, it's very powerful, and the applicants are always there, um, subject to whatever whatever happens. So you know they have to be responsive, and the neighborhood to it can realize that if they need to, they can go back before the planning board and re ask that those issues that may be coming up be revisited in, in light of where they are. The other question I had, um, the woman who spoke earlier, was she representing the Brant Point Association or was she speaking as an individual on that? I, I think that was the only thing I was a little fuzzy about. And I just wanted some clarification for the record on that. So I apologize. I don't remember her name, I apologize. 
Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Barry. Meg, I don't know if that woman is uh, is still here. Um, no. I believe Carol Bauer. Beller. 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 Yeah. Uh, Gary Beller's on though, so um, hold on. Maybe we can get clarification. I don't know if she was speaking on behalf of herself as a neighbor or from the association. association. Gary, um, Gary uh, Beller. So, yes. Uh, yes, but my wife's here, Carol. Yes, yeah, she spoke before. Sorry, I, I've been speaking on behalf of two people. One, my husband and I, we are residents of Bram Point. Number two, I'm the co-president of the Bram Point Association and parking is one of our big challenges in Bram Point. And we are all 450 homeowners, very concerned about parking. So anything that we can do to lessen the challenge of visitors bringing cars on island, we would like to participate in. Thank you. Thank you. Gary, did you have something to say? I see you, we're recognizing you as being called. Well I wasn't going to add this, but I'll just say this, that um, I noticed in your, uh, in the proposal that there's a, a swimming pool in that proposal. I have nothing against swimming pools per se, but seeing the flooding that took place on that corner last weekend or the weekend before last, and I know that corner floods all the time, and I just was wondering whether or not you, you folks, I'm also on I'm a member of the Coastal Residency Advisory Committee, so we worry a lot about uh, tidal surge, you know, and flooding. And I know this area floods all the time. And I was just wondering whether the, the engineers have looked at this and understand that that area floods, that corner, ask the people at Grand Point Properties. They deal with that all the time. Many, many times we've been here and we see the whole area flooding over. And I'm just wondering what happened to that pool when the water goes over the top of it, which it will several times, maybe not this year, but over the next few years, based on what our, our committee, Coastal Residency Committee has said, we're gonna see more and more of this flooding, even on sunny days. And just keep questioning why people are putting pools in when they know we're gonna have to deal with that flood. Thank you. Thank you, Gary. Um, wait, 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 excuse, excuse me, Linda, please stop interrupting until I recognize you. There are other people are speaking, and sometimes I have my other, uh, I, I, I have an order of which I'd like people identified. So please raise your hand or wait until I identify you. Uh, in response to that, Gary, uh, your coastal resili resiliency comment, um, Mr. Bracken has addressed uh, flooding. It happens. The entire Brown Point area happens. Um, it's not going to, flooding is not going to focus on this one particular property. Um, by bringing this up, you're opening up another can of worms for projections and scenarios that in the future may happen tomorrow, may happen in 100 years. And it's, uh, if Don would like to comment on the swimming pool, um, I'll allow him to speak. But um, you're looking at uh, potential, not, not factual um, projections. And it's something that I don't want to actually get into a back and forth comment about at this particular time. But in reference to a question about a poll, I'll let Don Bracken speak in regards to that. Yes. Uh, well, in addition, in addition to this permit, we are following with the Conservation Com Commission because of the flood zone lo location and elevation. And those issues will be reviewed uh, by the Conservation Commission, which will put certain conditions on the project, including uh, the pool uh, system and likely it would be a saltwater pool uh, in case the flood water ever did come over it and got inundated the pool itself. The pool, the, the top of the pool elevation is going to be at elevation eight, which is a foot above the 100 year flood elevation. So not to say that um, it won't ever flood and, and flood water will, won't go in it, but uh, it's been designed so that it'd be very little chance that there will be flood water entering the pool directly. Thank you. Meg, is there anyone else that hasn't spoken from the public? Their hands raised. Gary and Gary Beller and Glenn Court have their hands raised again. So that I don't know if you're recognizing round two for for members of the public. Um I don't want to get into a back and forth with things that we've already discussed. 
Um, I will give a little bit of slack. Um, I'll recognize uh, Glenn Court first, uh, if there's something new that he would like to add. I will be extremely brief, and thank you so much, extremely brief. I, I was just <coughs> indicating I'd love for the developer to consider if, if it was the board's um, you know, indication or uh, desire to close the, the existing entrance on North Beach, I would simply respectfully request if, if it doesn't harm the developer's overall plans, uh, that, that maybe the developer, uh, if, if again, if it doesn't harm their plans and they were um, indifferent or agnostic to it, uh, I would ask them to, to reconsider. Um, and that's, um, you know, I, I just think having, once we, I think once we close that uh, entrance to, to the existing, and there, there's 15 or 20 cars in there, uh, you know, serving the property. Um, and once we close that, we have all that overflow and it only has one place to go. Uh, we, we just cannot stop the cars from coming. I, I respectfully uh, just request that if the developer, it doesn't harm their financial plans, uh, that they reconsider and that the board reconsider. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Gary, I'll recognize you if you had something new to add. He put, he put his hand down. Um, okay. Just in case. There then I will recognize Linda Williams with her hand up. Um, please, Linda, make it brief and something that we haven't discussed. I don't want to get into a back and forth. And I think the major, the major point of um, entry to the property is going to be from North Beach, not from Dolphin Court on the occasion that somebody has to come in. Um, as far as the pool is concerned, um, in layman's terms, the pool is not at grade. The pool is elevated on the deck because we've elevated that whole new structure. Um, the one in between six and four Dolphin, six uh, North Beach and four Dolphin. That whole pool area and entrance, we have a lift, a handicap lift that's gonna go up a level. The pool is elevated on an elevated deck. So it's not at grade. So as Don says, the issue, I'm on the CONCOM and it came up at 22 um, Easton Street as well. They didn't elevate their pool and there was a question about washover, which he, um, Mr. Beller is very correct about flooding. But if you look at the front of the picture, if you look at the pictures that we submitted, uh, interestingly, this property is elevated already um, from North Beach Street. You go up the driveway and into the uh, main body of the uh, property. So it's elevated that, plus it's because it doesn't flood in there because it is elevated from the street level where you can take a canoe down it. And then the pool again is elevated in an elevated deck. So the chances of washover are going to be lessened because we know how the, and I certainly do being a member of the CONCOM, know how uh, dangerous washover is with anything that has chlorine in it. Um, so that's why there's very few pools uh, grade anywhere in, um, in Brant Point for a reason uh, lately. Um, so I just wanted to assuage any fear, any fears that uh, Mr. Beller has about that washover issue because we deliberately raised the pool so that would not be a, a threat unless we're really all underwater down there. Thank you, Linda. All right, um, Meg, any other new hands? No. Okay, board members, what's your pleasure? I'm not seeing any thoughts, comments. I mean, I'll make I'll make a couple comments, Mr. Chairman. Go ahead, Matt. Um, so, you know, again, we brought this up. I may have said this at the last meeting, but you know, Dolphin Court. I mean, is a isn't how do I say this? This is a fairly new road. I mean, it was a it had like one house on it not that long ago. It, nobody even knew where it was except the person that lived there. Um, there isn't people joyriding down Dolphin Court. There's nobody going out for an evening ride and saying, I think I'll go down Dolphin Court and see what's going on. I would, if I had one of those houses, I would be like so thrilled to even have a street. This pro you could play basketball. You could play, you could play in the street and be completely fine. I'm not saying that there's never the potential of any kind of safety issue, but 
<clears throat> I think this is the best solution to this property. This is not the first time that entrance has been talked about being removed before the Kaisers actually sold it. This, this has come up before in conversations. This isn't, this isn't like a brand new idea. This has been around for a while. So I just want to make that clear. Um, there's never been a parking issue in there. I've been going in there for years. And every time I go in there in the summertime, there's always, it's very easy for me to figure out where I'm parking because there's a lot of choices. Um, the other issue is, you know, I heard that, I don't know what, who said it, the stuff about being at capacity with cars. And I mean, okay. I mean, that conversation is impossible to have as far as that goes. I mean, who decides what that number is? That's, you know, I think though that overall, the, the places that are rebuilding these places, like Point Breeze, are doing a really good job discouraging car. If there, were, if there was a car with a third of the people staying in these places, now you got a problem. Now you have a problem. The rental houses are the ones that bring the cars which I'm fine with. I'm just being honest. Um, the cars are here with the residences, okay? Um, people are going to be walking in town from here, um, enjoying the restaurants by foot, actually not having to worry about getting a parking ticket like we do when we come into town. So um, I think that this is about as good as it's going to get as far as this goes. Everything doesn't get planned at once. It, get, it comes in pieces. There's going to be things changing at the beach side. And I can guarantee you there's not going to be all those parking spaces when that gets changed because there's so many parking spaces down there they could sell the spaces. It's like a waste of land. So this is the... This is, I think that this is a good plan. I think that, as Barry indicated earlier, operational changes, operational issues can all be raised at a future public hearing. And that's the good part about this. Um, so I, uh, you know, I'm good with, with this set up the way they have it. I think that this is the right thing to do overall for everyone's benefit, not just one entity. I think this is the right planning um, you know, if this was built fresh and new and it wasn't anything here, this is what we'd be trying to do. So thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Anyone else on the board? Well, we're at that crossroad. Does anyone have a motion that they'd like to suggest? They're all being shy. Wow. <laughs> I, I think, uh, Mr. Chairman, I'm going to make a motion that we close the public hearing. I don't think there's anything else from staff. Is there Megan or, or Leslie? No. No, there's not. Okay. So that's my motion. Let's close the public hearing. Let's at least start. There is a motion on the table to close the public hearing. Is there a second? Second. Motion's been made by Barry and seconded by Nat to close the public hearing. Roll call. Barry? Aye. Nat? Aye. Dave? Aye. Aye. Fritz? Aye. Fritz. aye. And the chair votes aye. Now, on the merits. I know a lot of things have been talked about in previous uh, in previous meeting that we had. Uh, so I just wanted to uh, make sure that staff has some of the things that we had um, discussed. I know Cam had a couple of good thoughts about construction bins with lens lids, um, uh, the. Um, sidewalk enhancement gift maybe being a possibility yeah. for 
future if it didn't affect this particular area or, or this particular lot, but other um, sidewalks in the area that would be affected. Um, obviously, you know, Barry's um, and Nat's comment about MCD special permit can be reopened, whatever we uh, impose, if we're finding that it's not being adhered to, if we vote in the positive, it can be reopened. Stormwater and drainage plans uh, obviously uh, would be paramount for um, review and also, I believe, um, conditioned uh, uh, with uh, uh, submission and review plans that would be approved by our engineer Ed Pesci. Um, is the applicant still on, John, uh, Mr. Chairman? Is he? I don't. I forgot his name. Yes, I'm I still Mike, on before. Uh, Michael Vaughn. Yes, Mike. Mike. Yeah, hi. Mike, how you doing? And I appreciate good, your comments you. earlier. I got confused of who you were when you first started talking, so I apologize. Um, let me ask you a question. This that statement that was made earlier about Nantucket Hotel with the hundred dollars. I, I I know Mark Snyder really well, and I had no idea they did that. Um, that's like something that's I couldn't stop thinking about it when I heard it. I couldn't I didn't heard that before. Um, have you thought about anything specific? I mean, you said you're going to have a van. Like, are you going to have like, you're going to have like a regular like Ford Transit type van, not something wide, correct? No, I'm going to have two Jeeps, two four door Jeeps, and oh. I'll do, I'll do just uh, like yeah, everybody, just like everybody else. Okay, got it. Um, just like everybody it, else. You know, a big, a big, a big draw for us. You know, me personally, I never like to drive. I prefer to walk everywhere, uh, especially on the yeah. island, it's congested. And a big attraction yeah. for us was this address and its ability to, to walk to town, to yeah. walk to the jetties, to walk to, to, to anywhere and not have to yeah. drive. Um, so we're going to have two four-door Jeeps. We're going to have on-site management. We're really proud of the group, Salt Hotels, that we're partnered with. Manager will live right on site. Um, more than happy to entertain. That was the first I've heard about that with Nantucket Hotel, but if there's anything as it relates to best practices that, that we can offer our guests as an incentive to, to ensure that they don't bring cars and that they would be rewarded, in fact, for not bringing cars, we're on board for that. Yeah, I mean, when you, when you fly some way, you don't bring a car on the airplane. You know what I mean? I mean, that's the way it is. You know, I mean, I, this is, I remember when Empernay went in and nobody wanted Empernay either. So there, there you go. So, um, I, I mean, I'm just, I'd like you to think about that. I'm not going to ask staff to like come up with some sort of no cars allowed requirement or anything like that. But I think that this is going to be a moving target and something for you to work in at a later, you know, by, you know, once you get things going and figure things out, I think that you're going to find that. 100%. And we want to do best practices. Um, I want to reiterate to our neighbors, to our point of being good neighbors, that, you know, we look forward to joining the Dolphin Court Association, uh, would contribute to roadway improvements yeah. that, to based upon our use. And would also make it clear that, that none of our guests could park on Dolphin Court. Um, yeah, it would and, be crystal and, clear and, with, our, with yeah. our guests regarding that. And I think Megan's hand is up because of number seven, but... I, I see that. I, I already read it, Megan. I'm just saying it doesn't say shall not bring a car. It says shall include information discouraging guests from bringing cars, which is as far as we can really go. But again, I think that that I think that, you know, this is really an important issue. OK, um, so I appreciate that and I appreciate your candor and openness to telling telling us how you feel about it. So thank you very much. Mike. No, thank you. I really pre I, I can't say it enough. I'm grateful for everyone's time. This has been a very fair process. And I can't tell you enough how good the feedback everyone from, you know, Don and his team on drainage in the pool from Linda to Mike Wilson to Matt, they really opened our eyes and they spent a lot of time coaching us through what we can and can't do. 
uh, and what yeah. the, what, what's acceptable and what's the right thing to do in the island. We realize it's a very special place and we're just very proud to have a little small piece of it. We want to make it be good for everyone. So if there's best practices that we can incorporate here that, that will discourage guests from bringing cars and actually reward them, things that we can do with credits um, on our property, we're more than happy to do that. that. That's very fair, very reasonable. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Thank you. Um, Nat, is there a motion that you'd like to try and Yeah, um, I'll make a motion to approve with the findings that the applicant's request is in harmony with the general purpose and intent of the bylaw. The waiver of the drainage plan is not approved because the area is in the flood prone area and waiver of off street parking requirements is consistent with other special permits granted for transient residential facilities located within close proximity to the CDT, which is extremely important point. And with conditions one through nine, and I would add, Leslie, if, if possible, the phone number of the manager, is that, I don't see that in there. And that was something that we. In the management plan. Those details. The, uh, okay. Our hotel management plan and the construction management plan that will attach as exhibits as a part of the decision. Okay. Thank you. I just wanted to make that point just in case anyone was thinking of it. That would be my motion, Mr. Chairman. Okay, Leslie, does that motion satisfy the staff? It does. I think there were a couple of other conditions that you all talked about. So if you could just have your motion include those as well. Thank you. Included. Okay. Um, that being said, is there a second? I'll second. So motion's been made by Nat, seconded by Dave. Roll call. Nat. Aye. Dave. Aye. Barry. Aye. Fritz. Aye. And the chair votes aye. Thank you very much, everyone. Uh, Thank you. I know it's been Thanks. a very difficult couple of meetings. Um, I'm I'm happy that everyone was pretty respectful of each other. Uh, it's very emotional, especially when it affects your neighborhood. And I trust that the um, the applicant will do everything in its power to keep with the harmony of the neighborhood. And it sounds like he's very sincere to do that. So um, thank you and good luck. Thank you, everyone. Have a great evening. Really appreciate your time and consideration. Thank you. Thank you. Um, right, Happy moving on. Day, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Linda. Uh, next, 10 Larrabee Lane, uh, 10 Larrabee, or uh, 10 Larrabee Lane LLC, 10 Larrabee Lane. Uh, Dan Malloy is here. I don't know if I see him, but he is listed as representing Meg. Is there anyone here? Um, so Dan Malloy is here. I just brought him over. Um, Dave Iverson has his hand up. Um, I think is he may have to recuse from this. Okay, uh, before we start discussion, uh, Dave? Yes, John, I, do we discuss this and it, it pertains to the name? Uh, we're losing you, Dave, sorry. I, I couldn't even tell you. Tell if you were asking he, to be he, recused because it was pertaining to something. I hope his battery is. <laughs> Gotta recharge my your battery, Steve. Property. It's probably best. I think I see him nodding. Sorry, my internet's terrible. Uh, oh, go ahead. We Can got you hear you. me now? We have you. Yes. No. <laughs> oh, Lord. Hurry. Can you hear me? Can you yes, hear me? Yes, hurry. Yeah. Um, my name, my land. Yeah. My landlord owns 12, which this is in relation to. So I think it's best if I recuse. Very well. Thank you. So noted. Yes. All right. Uh, Dan, I saw that you were here. I'll recognize you um, as the applicant or representing the applicant. Good evening, Dan Malloy for the applicant. So pretty uh, quick application. The board previously reviewed and re uh, approved a 
covenant lot on the property. Uh, at the time of the application, the board granted a re uh, setback relief for the interior property line between the market rate lot and the covenant lot. Uh, during construction and layout of the building, somewhere on the somewhere in the whole line of chain of command here, uh, it was thought that the setback was relief was granted on both sides. And what happened, a house ended up getting built inside the 10 foot setback on the exterior side of the property where the board did not grant relief. So we're here before you tonight to ask for additional relief and amendment to the special permit to allow the waiver of a 10 foot setback down to five on that one side. Uh, we have received the staff comments. We've also talked to the abutter on that side. And I think we've, at least on our end, we have no problem with all the conditions that staff has uh, proposed. And I believe the abutter is also familiar with those. Okay. Um, it, Meg, is this a special permit where I'd have to, with Dave recusing? Yes. You're shaking your head yes, so yes. I will. Uh, yeah. Cam, if you're with us, I would like you to sit. Sure, I'm right here. Thanks, Great. John. Okay. Uh, opening up to the board, uh, comments, questions? Nothing to say. Real tight. Cam, really? you, here's your opportunity. Your hands up. <laughs> Right. No, I just have one question because the intrusion is 5.9 feet into a, what should have been a 10 foot setback. And we're going to a five foot setback. So I'm sort of wondering what happened to 0.9. Oh, we could make it five and a half if that makes it better. There's, there's conditions that the staff has proposed that would essentially not allow any further intrusion, regardless of what that number is. Correct. Uh, I did read that. It was yeah. more just a question of like, well, if you have 10 feet and you're going for five feet, but the intrusion is 5.9 feet, then it means that you're still in the five foot, are you not? Am I doing my math wrong on that? Yeah, so the, the setback requirement is five feet. We're 5.9 feet away, so we're 10 inches in the good. Oh, okay. See, I was reading it wrong. <laughs> okay. Okay, super. Thank you. That clears that up for me. Okay, I see. Uh, anybody else on the board before I recognize uh, open it up to the public? No. I will open it up to the public and I see Linda Williams hand hand raised. We had um okay. Hey, we had Harvey Young waiting first. Sorry. Okay. I'm gonna address uh, what Harvey wants. Because <laughs> we know uh, what Harvey wants. <laughs> Linda, since you're speaking, go ahead. Uh, this was our project. All four of these lots are my projects. Um, it was a very oversized piece of property. And um, we have two covenant lots in there, which I'm working on for the applicants. And I did the other two houses. Um, we have waived all the interior lot lines, but apparently it was thought that that lot setback was also done in the R10 and the R20 zoning districts in the bylaw. They were specifically put in this caveat was put in there to be able to reduce the side yard setback from 10 to five. And when, during my years in the uh, ZBA starting in 1983, we did that quite often because what we realized when we put those zoning uh, districts in there, which were not part of the original zoning districts, that a lot of the people had already built with a five foot setback because that was quite common in those zones back in the day. So that particular being able to reduce it from special permit by special permit from 10 to five was done all over the place. I mean, it's all over Mid Island, all over, uh, Hooper Farm Road, some of the collateral roads. I mean, it just is. So um, I know uh, Mr. Young wants us to remove the trees that are on his side. That's our plan. We don't mind uh, a condition on that. And he wants a six foot fence. I know from past experience that the HCC won't let the six foot fence come any farther forward than the front corner of the house, but I can certainly run it backwards to the back property line. Um, 
without probably a whole lot of uh, Sturm and Drang from the HDC, and uh, we're willing to do that as well. If there's a, another uh, condition he'd like, uh, just have him tell us, and uh, we're amenable. But uh, those are the two, I believe, major sticking points, and uh, we are willing to have those as conditions and to take care of that. And no further, no further building within that 10-foot setback, other than just to validate the siting of the house. Thank you, Linda. I'll recognize Harvey Young. Hi, Harvey. Uh, yes, hello. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, members of the board. Uh, thank you, staff. You've all been very helpful as we've tried to work this out. Um, as you know, I'm the property owner at 12, which is on the west line of this piece of property. A um, little over a week ago, I got the notice that they were coming before the board. I reached out to the uh, staff and they sent me the application. I was a little shocked to see how close they were um, to my property. Not only is it close to my property, but it's right close to um, the bedroom wall of the structure that I have there that's about a little over 10 feet off of my property line. Um, been working well with, um, with, a, with a representative of the applicant to come up with a compromise that we can sort out here. And um, I think we have a few more details that then were in the actual uh, recommendations by the staff. Um, I, I would love to have a six foot fence put down on their property line. We'd like to have the uh, Cypress removed from our side of the property line. And we've rec recommended uh, that in place of the Cypress, they put um, Carpinus betulus uh, fetigiata, which is a nice columnar uh, tree on their side of the fence. Um, we had some discussions today. I think they've approved my, my plan of 10 of those Carpinus plants. Um, a six foot fence, uh, we were asking for the full length of the property, but um, if it can't be up by Larrabee Lane, I think we can work something out. But a six foot fence going the length of the property line. And um, we're okay with leaving some of the cypress down in the back, pretty much from the corner of the patio to the back uh, southwest corner of the lot. Uh, when this came up, we had a couple of site visits, myself and members of my family, and had a good look at some drainage problems that I think we've had discussion about them fixing. I'd like them to take care of the, uh, there's a lot of runoff siltation coming onto my property from where the grade has been raised around a retaining wall. And I think we should be able to work this out. Uh, they said they would do it. I'm just curious to know how, um, what kind of teeth go into seeing to it that it is, does get done and, um, and how we work that part of it out. I see that uh, two of the uh, concerns that you had were addressed in the recommendation and the conditions that were that staff brought up, and that was uh, that the app number two that the applicant at their own expense shall replace the cypress with either a columnar hedge of oak or hornbeam within six months of the filing of the decision. The other was the applicant uh, in number three, the applicant at their own expense um, and subject to HDC approval shall install a six foot board fence along the property line uh, between 10 Larrabee and 12 Larrabee Lane within six months of the following of the decision. Uh, as far as the drainage, maybe I'm not seeing something. I don't know if that was uh, brought up uh, specifically with Linda and they had agreed to it. Um, I don't see anything in there for that. Um, did anyone, uh, Dan, as an engineer, would you be able to address that? Yeah, I think we can. We've been emailing back and forth. We just didn't have a chance. To, uh, one of the last comments Mr. Young had was to do with drainage. Uh, we didn't have a chance to send him something back formally, but we have every intention of fixing the landscaping, putting the fence in, adjusting the grades uh, as he's suggesting. That'll all happen. When the trees are moved, the fence is put in, all of that will be addressed at the same time. Great, thank you very much. Um, Harvey, I'd just like to address our um, acknowledge you, does that meet your satisfaction? Um, it, it does, I think right now, it, I mean, it seems like it's rather verbal to me. We were going- no, we'll, and... we'll add that in a condition as number seven, just so we okay. have that in writing. Okay. 
And okay. um, so in terms of the, uh, in, in writing, we're looking for a solid six foot cedar fence. Um, in terms of the plantings, we're looking for uh, 10 of the Carpinus that we can uh, refer, Dan can refer to the plan that we shared this afternoon in terms of the location of them. And if they can do the, um, if they can do the fence, get the plants off my property like we talked about and take care of the drainage, um, I'm okay with the uh, applicant going forward. Okay, going back to Dan, does that meet your, your- that, uh, That's fine. I can provide mm -hmm. the names of the trees Mr. Young's okay. talking about as well as a sketch. Uh, I think that I can make sure he's, he's seen it as well. I think we're on the same page. Okay, my Latin is not that great, so that would be very helpful. I'll get that over to the board. Okay, um, and as far as the specific, it said board fence. Would you would we be able to amend that as cedar? And I think I probably would address uh, Linda to make sure that is okay with her. Yeah, clients. I would say um, a six foot, uh, as approved by the HDC, obviously a, a six foot, or it could be a five and one. Just say uh, maximum six foot board fence, and it can be a five and one fence also because that's a little bit more decorative, as we know. So um, I just, just one. I'm just trying to be as specific as I can and putting in writing as Harvey suggested. Um, he specifically mentioned cedar instead of board. I just want to make sure that is noted. Well, I would just personally, I would just say six foot natural to weather board fence, vertical board fence, and I'll have to work it out with the HDC as to exactly what it is. Because the Harvey, posts are not, but on. the posts are uh, womanized, as you know. The posts are um, yeah, treated. Pressure treated. Yeah, yeah. so you got to be and careful what you're doing here. Uh, I think um, Harvey's Harvey, talking about the, the common, common cedar ones we have on the Atucket now. Let me just make sure, um, since we're being specific, Harvey, is that acceptable? Um, you know, I was really hoping we would have had the specifics worked out in advance, um, especially when we start, uh, you know, being vague about what kind of fence it is. Um, you know, if you got to look at where this is, I mean, this property got jammed right, right up against us pretty tight. And um, I think a six foot cedar fence would be in keeping and it's a nice looking house that they built. Um, I think it should be a six foot solid fence um, from grade. And um, and the I'm not sure what a five one is. I think that's a five foot fence with maybe lattice on top or something like that. Yes. Um, you know, I'm not sure how we work out the specifics um, specifics on that. It should be a good quality fence that they're going to maintain. I would have to go to the HDC no matter what happens. So I'd have to go to the HDC no matter what's happening here. So it's a six foot maximum natural to weather board fence. That's how it's that's how it's listed at the HDC. Now the HDC is gonna tell me whether I can do six foot solid board or a five and one is acceptable to them, but it's still six feet tall, natural to weather board fence. That's the terminology that's used at the HDC. I'm not talking about an open board fence. I'm talking about a solid board fence, but it may be a five, fence, five foot board and one foot lattice because it's more decorative. Let's put it that way. Uh, I see a few hands up. I'm going to recognize Leslie uh, first on staff. Please, Leslie. Regardless of whether they need to go to the HDC or not, if Mr. Young is requesting a cedar fence, it's, you know, the structure is encroaching on what was expected for the setback. And I think you can use that language in this decision, whether or not the HDC uses natural to weather or not. I mean, it is a bit of a nicer fence. Okay. Uh, Barry? No, I think Leslie addressed it. I, I think with some yep. wording from the staff, it, it can be made to be what Mr. Young wants. And then um, from there, a little bit of additional language that would address if the HDC makes any changes to it, you know, then we'll, we'll see where that goes to from there. And that won't bind him to the board specifically, but you're in good hands with staff. They, they know how to word this appropriately. I'll go down the line, Cam. Oh, hi. Yes, here Is I am. Is your I'm hand not... stuck up again? No, no. <laughs> I, I thought I was muted, but apparently oh. I wasn't muted. <laughs> Sorry <laughs> about that. Um, so I did have a question regarding fences because I have a fence separating. And um, I think 
Mr. Young brought up a good point when, when he mentioned and maintaining. Um, I'm just wondering, is there any, you know, once you have the fence up and it's put up by your neighbor, is there anything about maintenance? Because a fence does give way and the less expensive, the fencing material, um, the sooner it needs repair. Many of the one, uh, five over ones or whatever, um, was being mentioned have a trough at the bottom that tend to catch a lot of moisture and eventually that rots out before the rest of the fence and you have um, the boards coming down. So I'm just thinking about maintenance over time. And that's just a question, because I think we all need to think about that when we think a fence is a solution to something, it, it's a part-time solution. Um, I got the point about the five over one being decorative. However, it appears there's a move to have columnar uh, tree plantings in front of the fence. So on the, um, on the applicant side, so I'm not sure, you know, the five over one matters, but that's just an aside as is the, um, the, the idea of the cedar fencing I have found is superior over time, which I think in this case is important. So that was a question on maintenance and um, just some comments. So thank you very much. Thank you, Cam. So I think uh, looking at that, we'd like to um, add the language in number three to be uh, shall install and, man and maintain a six foot cedar fence. So I'd like to add maintain and cedar to that uh, condition number three. And going down the line again, I'll recognize, uh, Leslie, did you have your hand up? Nope, okay. Uh, I think Harvey, yes. Um, I, I think we're, we're getting it there pretty good. I appreciate your input on the fence. And um, once again, I'm, I'm kind of new to how this works. I'm curious to know how follow through works through the board or how you guys take care of that part. Okay, thank you, Harvey. I'll let uh, staff comment on the follow through. <laughs> Leslie, your hands up. Let me put that hand back down real quick. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so these will be conditions within the special permit, and if the applicant doesn't, you know, meet these conditions, um, some of which are more ongoing, some are more immediate, um, they would be in violation of their permit. So in the event something, you know, is out of compliance, um, someone can file a complaint with a zoning enforcement officer, it can be investigated and they, we can request um, that they comply. We can fine them $300 a day for a zoning violation. Um, it's all done through the language in our zoning bylaw. Thank you, Leslie. I hope that satisfies your explana the explanation, Harvey. And I will recognize Linda. Yes. Uh, through you, Mr. Chairman, to Leslie, I don't believe we can get a CO because it has to go, the decision has to be written, which I'll probably end up doing. The decision has to be written. It has to be filed at the town clerk. You gotta go through the 20 days. And only then, because I can't get a CO until this clears the town clerk and I file it at the registry. And I can't get a CO unless this is done. As far as I can tell, Leslie, I, through you, Mr. Chairman, I believe that's how this particular, it's an odd situation but I believe this is how that's gonna go, that we gotta take those plants and take that fence and I gotta to get to the HDC tomorrow um, in order to get this done so we can get a CO when this clears the uh, town clerk and the registry, is that correct? Well, I think if it doesn't get voted on in the positive sense, Linda, you're not gonna be able to take it tomorrow anyway. No, but so, I can do the fence tomorrow. I can do all mm -hmm. the stuff that I need to do in anticipation of it clearing the town clerk because we gotta do that anyway because Harvey wants that done and we got stuff on his property. So we got to do all that stuff now anyway. So Leslie, um, you can address that if we put conditions on there, if they're not met um, in, in the 24 hours, um, can we still 
put those in with the timetable on that? I mean, obviously we did yeah. within that six months. So there is a timetable attached to that. Right. So I guess there's a couple of moving parts. One is that the property owner wants to get a certificate of occupancy that most likely would not be issued until the appeal period ended and no appeal was filed. So that's one thing. And then there's a condition, the first one that has a 30 day deadline. So that would need to be you know, complied with within 30 days. Then the second one and the third one have a six month time window. So they would have six months to comply with that. And then the next ones are ongoing. So they would be continually monitored usually on a complaint basis. Does that okay. answer the question? Uh, Linda, does that satisfy your, your, uh, your question? Um, which were the 30, I haven't seen the decision or that particular thing. What, uh, what are the ones that have to be done by 30 days? That was Six number one. On the applicant uh, at their own expense will remove all vegetation that has been planted on the abutting property at 12 Larrabee Lane within 30 days of the following of the decision? I would ask for 60 days because you don't want to rip something up we can replant on the other side of the property because it's this time of year, you can't replant anything. So if we get on this decision fairly quickly, which I will, and then the 20 days expires in like February, end of February and well, probably March, I would like another 30 days to get that stuff out of there so we can replant it and not kill it. And it may take that long actually to get fencing. I work with Cape Cod Fence and they're pretty quick, but it may take that long to get the fencing and through the HDC. So I don't think 30 days is reasonable at all, given the how backed up and Steve can talk to this, how backed up they are. So I'd rather have a 60 days from the date that the decision is filed, probably in March, and that will give me time to get them replanted someplace else, A, because we want something else different over there, and to be able to actually put the order into Cape Cod fence and get the fencing. Okay, thank you, Linda. Uh, Harvey, your hands up. Um, yes, it sounds like we're, we're headed in the right direction toward, uh, you know, taking care of this. Um, you know, I'm not, I'm, not, uh, I'm not big on the timing of how you take plants out when you put plants in. Um, I've, I'm not feeling like we need to race and do this in 30 days. Um, I think what I've already said, I don't want to repeat myself, but I just want to uh, make sure it gets done in a timely fashion. Okay. And would you satisfied with the uh, follow through and the enforcement of the decision? Yes. Great. Uh, Dan Malloy, your hands up. Uh, I'll make it really quick. Uh, well, we're fine with the wording with the cedar fence. Uh, not a problem. And the maintenance as well. Mm -hmm. uh, only I would suggest, as Linda just said, based on the timing of it all, if conditions one, two, and one, two, and three, if they could all just have that six month time frame, just uh, because I, I, I don't want to go in there and tear out landscaping and then have to wait a month yeah. or two to put new landscaping in. Yeah, I, I think the six month it's already addressed in number two. And in number three, you have already addressed the six months. And I think number one, we were going to make 30 days, not six months, 60 days. So we're into the uh, April time period for replanting. Can we get nine? Is 90 okay in that? I, I want to make sure we can get yeah. the trees. I want to be able to have the trees there and put them okay. in the day after we tear out. The, I just don't want Harvey to... Yeah, I, I think we're really close. Um, if we, if, you know, the final uh, amendment for 90 days is still reasonable in a timely manner for planting, if Harvey would agree to that, I think we can um, kind of finalize the conditions. Go ahead, yeah, Harvey. I just, I just don't want to come back if we can't. Um, Linda, I think I said Harvey. <laughs> Harvey? Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, you know, we, we've been able to work well so far. I'm sorry. Yes, I've been working well with the uh, with the applicant, and um, I think the 90 days is is okay. I think the the main thing is that we get this job done properly and done right. Great. So um, you know, it might take time to get some cedar boards. It might take time to get the right plants. Um, but as long as we get them put in there properly and it's done properly, and um, that works for me. Thank you. Uh... 
Great. I don't see any hands. I think we're pretty well set now. So uh, just to recap, we're going to change condition number one to read 90 days instead of 30. Uh, condition uh, number uh, three, we're going to add the language of install and maintain. And then we're also going to add in cedar in front of board fence. And then for condition number seven, we're going to create um, the fixing of the grade for drainage um, as uh, commented by Demoy. And if that is it, I would, uh, well, did we open this? Uh, did we close the public hearing? No. I would make the motion to close the public hearing if Thank that's you, helpful. Cam. It is possible. And yes, second. if there's a second. Second. I, second. Okay, motion's been made by Cam and seconded by Fritz to close the public hearing. Uh, roll call, Cam? Yes. Fritz? Yes. Barry? Yes. Uh, oh, you got me. Nat, aye. And the uh, chair votes aye. aye. Okay, now on the motion. <clears throat> Leslie, to approve the request. Trying to, oh, trying sorry. To, Go ahead, Leslie. Can I just make one suggested change? And this is a little bit nitpicky, but it just came up with another decision um, where it was problematic after the fact. Can we just change one, two, and three to say the applicant or property owner, sure. just in case it, it changes hands and then the, there's a new owner? Uh -huh. Okay. One, two, and three. Okay. Just, the new to owner, just so you know. <laughs> Okay, uh, just to, if there is the motion, we're going to add in the language on one, two, and three, um, after applicant or property owner, we're going to change in number one, 90 day, 30 days to 90 days. And in number three, we're going to uh, add the link, maintain, F, uh, maintain. Yep. install and maintain and then a cedar in front of board fence. And number seven is going to be a fixing of the grade uh, for drainage, uh, as, um, and obviously as um, commented by Dan. Malloy. Is there a yep. motion? That, Can I'll I make that motion with you? those changes, Mr. Uh, I oh. think Cam so moved before you finish, Nat, so I'm going so to give moved. this to Cam. <laughs> okay, Is so moving second? With, second. with the addition of uh, Leslie's comments, the change for the applicant or mm -hmm. owner. Great. All right. Um, most has been made with the changes uh, by Cam and seconded by Nat. Uh, roll call, Cam. Aye. Nat. Aye. Fritz. Aye. Barry. Aye. And the chair votes aye. Thank you very much, all of you, for being patient and working together to get this done. Thank you very much. It's nice and refreshing to see people work together. Thank you. Yes, thank you. All right. Now on to Act Mid Island LLC and Act Officers uh, Offices LLC 18, 18A, 20, 22, 24, and 26 Sparks Avenue. Um, Dan, I think uh, you are representing, so I'll allow and, you to uh, speak. Dan Malloy for the applicant. Uh, Megan, there might be a few other people. Uh, might be a, the architect, Spencer McComb, might be trying to get in. Um, no? Okay. All right. Well, I'll jump right in. Uh, so we're presenting you tonight uh, an MCD application for the Sparks Avenue project. It's a, it's really geared towards a year round multi use project. Uh, if everybody's had a chance just to glance through the plans and the letter we put together. Uh, the board has looked at this. I'm not sure if all of you were present possibly when we brought in a sketch brand previously last year. So we're looking at a multi use facility with three buildings. Uh, mixed use between business, office space, uh, some low level commercial activity, as well as apartments. And 
So obviously on Sparks Ave, if you're familiar with this, uh, the downy, essentially the Downy Flake property and then going west over to Cumberland Farms are all the properties that encompasses. In the letter we provided, we outlined what we anticipate for the uses. Um, the apartments we've called out are pretty much fixed in terms of the quantities, but in terms of the actual retail commercial spaces, we've tried to put down the, what we anticipate in terms of a small restaurant, it's a retail space, a gym. Uh, most of that we're hoping to be a fixed use, but some of that obviously could change over time. So we're trying to present something in what we expect to be used and present in these buildings. And then we can use that to try to go through parking and intensities on the property. Uh, I can go through all of the waivers or waivers to say what relief we're looking for. Obviously we qualify as an MCD due to the size of the project and the utility demand. Uh, I will throw out there uh, quick. We have had a traffic study done. The traffic study counts were done over the summer. So we do have realistic current counts done. Uh, we will get a report done over to the board for review and for your consultant review as well. So I know that'll be a question that will come up. Uh, I can go through, as I said, all the special permit requests. We've outlined uh, a few of them on here. Some of them I think are fairly simple. Uh, for example, one of them requests medical office space, uh, whether it be a doctor's office. The, the use chart isn't entirely clear if that's specifically allowed, although I, I don't see that necessarily as a major obstacle. Uh, we are proposing a bowling alley in the basement level of the building. And frequently, as you'd see in a lot of bowling alleys these days, it might be one or two or three arcade games in there. Uh, not positive that's something we're definitely going to do, but would like the ability to, if that's something that fits, and that is something that needs zoning relief as well for the uh, intended use being an arcade. And then we've got quite a few other waiver requests in here. One of them being, which is a little odd, but in the Mid-Island area, uh, required of a five foot front setback as a maximum from the street. We're actually asking to go further from the street, but the reason being so we can accommodate a larger sidewalk in Sparks Ave. Uh, just as part of the Mid Island plan, I believe we're looking to get a 10 foot sidewalk along Sparks Avenue. So it's pushing our building back a little bit. And then some of the other requests we're looking at as we dive into the property is we want to talk about parking with the board. Uh, in terms of how we're providing spaces, how we can work with the neighborhood to provide spaces, the parking garage. Uh, we are suggesting, at least for the parking garage design, the zoning requires spaces that are nine by 20. Uh, I'd ask that we can get relief for nine by 18 space inside the garage, if that's something the board would consider. Uh, I'd ask that we can use that everywhere if you'd go that far, it would allow us to do bigger aisle widths. Uh, but at least in the garage where in terms of a parking garage, people are much, much more accustomed uh, to that very tight space. So I'd ask for the relief of the garage. Um, beyond that, it's the intended uses on the properties to how they fit uh, the apartments. We're looking to do 10 affordable units. Uh, so we have quite a few apartments on the property. 10 of those we want to make affordable with the housing trust. Uh, to benefit the area. So there's a lot of other moving parts with this, which the board has not seen yet, but in general, we are working to have discussions. And I know we're going to have at least one big meeting with different town, town department heads to go through the whole project. Uh, we're expecting to make roadway improvements in Sparks Ave to do with sidewalks, utilities. Uh, there'll be stormwater improvements proposed. Uh, we have not dived in 100% to the design of those facilities yet. Wanted to kind of work through this at least, at least to get this first meeting done, get a big meeting with all the department's heads done, and then we can get into the specific design of some of these different systems. Uh, we fully anticipate that'll be part of the project. Uh, so with that, I can go into a lot more detail, but I'd rather kind of get this open and get start getting feedback from everyone. Real quick. I don't know if you guys can hear me, Megan. My, my architect's trying to get in. Spencer McCollum just wanted to make sure he gets in. Are you using the right link? I'm not seeing him on as an attendee. 
Sure, I don't know that one, so. I'll try to find and resend and it to him. Did you, did you by chance send him your registration link? That's probably what he's doing. Let me find the actual you're, request. You're on here, Dan, a couple times. That's probably him trying to get in on mine. Okay, let me try doing that. Um, well, that's trying to come up. I want to say, well, we're trying to get that. And we have uh, reviewed a couple of letters. Obviously, it's the board's letter from the previous meeting we've had. And we did have a letter uh, that I just read today from uh, the abutter. Um, I forget the gentleman's name. Mr. Young. Uh, Mr. Young, another Young. Yeah. Uh, so we have looked at his letter, and I think we can certainly meet with Mr. Young and try to incorporate a lot of his suggestions to try to make a better fit with him. I anticipate we'll be sitting down with, with him to try to go over all this as well. Dan, did you receive any uh, recommendation or letter uh, from Ed Pesci, our engineer? Yeah, Ed did put out a very brief summary. Uh, he didn't get into a lot of detail because he doesn't have a lot of detail to review yet. Uh, in terms of the comments he had, Ed was talking about stop sign, you know, stop signs at driveways, uh, Things that obviously we'll end up doing, we just haven't got to that level of, of the plan development yet. There will be sidewalks, uh, both inside the property and whatever we come to terms with developing on Sparks Avenue, as part of the Mid-Island plan. And one of Ed's comments was also to do with the parking space width and aisle width. Uh, again, that's something we can talk to the board about and see what everybody thinks on that. Uh, he had a comment about the fire department. That is something we'll incorporate when we have a master plan meeting on everything. They'll definitely be involved on that aspect of it. Also, obviously, the storm management uh, plan. But um, I guess one of the ones we just really want to comment on is the uh, the 67 parking uh, spaces requirement. Uh, and then... Uh, any kind of measures that you have that would offset the requesting requested relief? Uh, that's, I guess, as part of the project, that's one of the big kind of discussions we want to have with the board. I think there's different ways we can offset some of that, uh, depending on what the board's come to. Obviously, we have the whole, we have other spaces available in the neighborhood. There's spaces on the street. Uh, we do have waiver requests in there for relief that would give the wave the number of spaces down based on providing pa uh, public transportation access, bike access, uh, things of that nature. There's things we can do with the apartments. We can limit, obviously we can limit how many vehicles people are allowed to have. So there's different things we can do. And we also, we will be trying to have further discussions with Cumberland Farms about trying to get some type of shared access. And maybe even, maybe we can do something with Mr. Young as well. Yeah where the more connections we can make and all these shared access points, uh, the more the parking can spread out, not just for us, but for them as well. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, no, just yep. a matter of procedure. Uh, Leslie, maybe you can chime in. We did have a preliminary plan that was discussed in a prior uh, meeting or a couple of months ago. I know Barry was not sitting on the board, um, even though it wasn't, it was, I think, pre preliminary. preliminary. Um, is it still okay for Barry to sit on this and vote? Yes, because it's a totally new application. Great. That's what I just want clarification. Thank you very much. That's helpful. All right. Um, anyone else wish to speak up from the any questions, comments, board? I know this is just really hitting the starting. Um, Mr. Chairman, I'll just make a couple comments real quick. Sure. Um, Dan, thank you. Thank you, Dan, for bringing up the Cumberland idea. This has been, how long is this? When's the last time we talked about this? A year? No, it was a lot. So I don't remember everything, but I do remember talking about you know, trying to come up with a, a circular type of idea or, or at least coming up with some way to to not have 
Cumberland's and this project right next to each other as far as the, you know, coming out, you know, in and out both. And they only come out on that side. So that's important. So maybe that can also fit into this. And the other thing was the other side, I see you don't have a vehicles aren't coming out on the other end. Is that how you've got this laid out? I'm looking at it right now. It looks like that's the way you have it. It's so it's exit only. On the, it's exit only on the rotary side, and it's two way on the Cumberland side. Oh, so there is an outlet there. Okay, okay, got it. Okay, right. That's so it for me, for the moment, I mean, if, if we can come to in the right place, if we can come to terms with the okay. others, something we can certainly hopefully expand on those entrances and exits. Yeah, because everybody can win if this is done right. I hope everybody, you know, when they see something like this, they get all nervous and something's changing. But this was inevitable. Something was going to happen to this to this site at some point. So, you know, there's a the, the way Cumberland's is set up. I mean, Cumberland's the way um, the Downy Flake is set up in those hedges, and it's really more of like a kind of a spite type setup there, similar to what's happened at Island, uh, at, um, the Islander and, and Pissarro's, you, you've got all this sort of everybody's jockeying around and in reality, it would work better if it was open. And this, this is kind of similar. So smarter people can figure that out, but I'm sorry, I was looking at a different plan and I didn't realize that it was an out only. So thank you, Dan, for that. Okay, thank you. Uh, Dan, I just want to, uh, just looking at this, it, it poses a very um, interesting concept with the undercar, undercar garage, under, um, you know, Ground. underground uh, garage. Thank you. Ooh, getting late. No uh, so uh, as we're looking at the curb cuts that I see with uh, Chris Young's uh, property, uh, and then you had an, another curb cut at the far end, another one at the your the farthest end for your property that you're representing. Then you have Cumberland Farms out. Then you have Cumberland Farms in with the gas station. Boy, if we had cooperating neighbors, we can really make a lot of use out of all of those curb cuts and incorporate uh, a nice, even you know, flowing. Um, way to come in to help everyone. And one of the things that I just looked at with the under, underground garage, when you come in that double, um, you know, access in and out, then that just the entrance to the underground kind of and uh, presents some problems with any kind of flow going through. Um, if there's a possibility to take that curve and incorporate it into the Cumberland parking area so that when you come into the gas station area and you come straight and go underground, maybe there's a way to incorporate an exit from the underground uh, on the on the far end um, instead of making U-turns and coming back. But you know it it just I think there's a lot of different ways to you know that we might be able to consider to help everyone out and all the abutters to make it look uh, a little bit more pleasing and also more functional than just to have all these curb cuts where somebody comes in and has to make a U-turn and park. When you have to make a U-turn, you need a turnaround or give enough space to make a U-turn. Um, so with the property that Chris Young has, uh, they have a turn turnaround uh, you know, at the end, but it's actually on your property. Uh, you know, it, it just seems like you're having two two roads on the same abutting um, areas. And if you look at Cumberland Farm, where their exit is, that's a wide exit. In addition to your wide exit, because you have two way there. I mean, it's gotta be a way to somehow condense these things and make it a little bit more pleasing and probably safer too, because when you have two separate ins and outs and you have to have stop signs, yield signs, something like that, it would be much easier if they were one one access or one exit where you're not looking to have somebody stop and yield to the next person that's uh, that you don't know is coming or going. But I know I sound like I'm rambling, but just looking at it right now, uh, it just looks like there's potential 
you know, if we don't focus individually and we work to try and work out something with our neighbors, I think there's potential to make all three um, happy. So that's all. Yep. Great. <clears throat> All right, I see a bunch of hands. Uh, I don't know what order they were, but I'll start from right to left. Dave Iverson. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm not sure it was my turn, but um, <laughs> I, I, you know, I, I ugh, this is going to just come and come and come and not end. Is the parking situation? I just. Um, I, I look at the parking matrix, five parking spots for the Downey Flake. <laughs> I mean, how many times have you driven by the Downey Flake in the middle of the summer and seen five cars in the parking lot? Um, so I, I, that is my biggest fear here is, and, and I appreciate the work that, that's been done so far and I appreciate the affordable units but parking just seems to be a really difficult thing that I have a hard time getting by. I think that every parking lot in this direct abutting area is maxed out in the summer and don't see how there's gonna be any cooperation because there's no spots. So um, I agree that, that you know mass transportation, buses, bicycles are key, but just how woefully um, parking is at a deficit at this site with this intensity for me right now is is a difficult one to get around. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Steven? Uh, I think Barry had his hand up first, but okay. Yeah, so um, Dan, uh, through you, Mr. Chair, if I may, Dan, what's the, uh, do, you, do you know what the intended square footage of the um, Downey Flake restaurant is going to be at least what it is now or? Um, I don't know off the top of my head what it is now. I can tell you what we're budgeting for space. And we're budgeting 3,000 square feet of restaurant floor space. Okay. So right um, now, I mean, just, thank you. Just to the point of parking, this is just one element that I'm concerned about. Um, the Downey Flake is about 2,400 square feet in total. So a good portion of that, perhaps 10% or 15% is the kitchen area, the the uh, maybe uh, you put the um, dining bar into that and the kind of where they do coffee and donuts and stuff. It's probably less than 2000 square feet um, of retail sitting and sitting space. So, and they're, they have 27 parking spaces and it's always full. Um, so that's a concern. Another concern is the loading with respect to the restaurant, which I'll get to in a minute when we look at the site plan. Um, I think actually, if, if you don't mind, um, who's driving the screen? Maybe we could pull up the site plan. Would you mind, Meg? Thanks. So um, if we were to look at the, sorry, I'm, I got mine up here too. I just wanna quick look. Okay, so the loading zone in the upper right of the uh, upper right building is less than 40 feet long. And typically there's a tractor trailer there with a day, uh, uh, truck on the cab on the front, it's, you know, that's going to be the better part of almost 60 feet. So that's problematic. Um, with respect to the layout of the plan, I'm a little concerned about, I'm going to jump through to the other low corner, the basement level ramp. Um, current grade at this site is about 18 feet um, on the datum on the town site over, you know, not 500 yards away off Allen's Way is a wetlands pond. That's at 12 feet. So you got a six foot uh, delta and the parking garage is so potential flooding, potential drainage issues, um, water stopping issues. There's a tremendous amount of parking in that lower area. That's of a concern. Can we go to the next uh, site? Oh, I'm sorry, before we do that. The other thing, we've, uh, I'm not gonna speak to too much about it, but um, if you notice this rear, right off the back uh, side lot, off the basement level ramp, the setback on this proposed structure is, you know, it, it's within the zoning requirements, it's three feet. But this is a, these are tremendously tall structures. This is a three-story structure above grade, four if you add below grade. So to have, I'm concerned about that, and I'll have a summary comment that addresses um, those concerns. Um, Meg, would you mind going to the next slide down? 
the basement plan. Oh, you did. I'm sorry. I'm looking at my plan and wondering why it's not moving. <laughs> um, if you were all to zoom in on this, I understand that they're looking for a waiver from the uh, 20 foot to uh, the 18 foot. But in this parking area, there's um, 44 spaces that are nine by 15. And I don't believe we allow a variance for that. Maybe we do, maybe we don't. I know that um, one can be allowed a nine by 17 in a residential setting, but for 44 spaces to be uh, only 15 feet long. And then when you're looking at the other aspect of this, one thing I um, you know, did a quick count, the, the parking lot at the stop and shop has 190 um, parking spaces. Um, this requires 195. So that will speak to density and concerns I have in a moment. But then the waiver I think was, maybe I'm wrong, was for like 67 parking spaces. A large portion of those are for employees. Employees tend to be the ones who need to be able to get there and timely and park. Um, so that's a concern. Um, uh, let's see. And then could we please go to the um, last one, the, the uh, elevation? So, I mean, to me, this is really where I would have started, but you know, I tend to focus on details when we're talking about parking. Um, it's, I, I don't, I think with respect to character uses and massing, um, and the surrounding area, what's proposed represents the highest degree of development, um, more development than the area can accommodate. And it's not good. Uh, and as in, I don't think anyone is going to love it. I mean, I mean, no offense, but what's proposed is outstandingly bad. Um, you, you know, you could say, in other words, it's excessive, it's extreme, and it could even be considered egregious. Um, and I don't think as much as we need housing, um, you know, maybe half of this level of density would be appropriate, um, or the larger building uh, segmented with uh, uh, additive massing um, on the lot. But this level of development seems to me to be just, just too much. So thank you, Mr. Chair. Those are my comments. Thank you, Stephen. Uh, this may not be in the order, but I will, it's in my order that I see it. So Barry, go ahead. Uh, you, you can go to camp for a second. I'm fine. There's, there's no immediate rush. Okay. We'll have, a, we'll have an opportunity. <laughs> All right, great. Cam, go ahead. Hi, thank you. Yes, this is probably fairly quick. Um, I, because I did want to reiterate, uh, I guess what's been said, that was why I originally had um, put my hand up. Um, I'm having a problem just across the board with the amount of parking that's being waived, um, whether it's three spaces, nine spaces, or what have you. The reality is vehicles are here and they need to go somewhere and people are in vehicles. They're not a separate issue from people. Um, and as much as we'd like to say, oh yes, we'll waive whatever it is, six spaces to some develop, uh, business residential development thing, well, then they start parking on the side of the road. And I find the side of the road parking on Surfside and other roads, whether it's Madikett Ave or My Comet Ave, My Comet Road, is not to be encouraged. Uh, we should get over our idea that that's okay. Um, it really does impede uh, travel of vehicles as well as pedestrians, bicyclists, et cetera. So that said, obviously I find 67 spaces to be excessive as far as waving. I'm not, we're running out of space in this area, in that whole mid island area to say, oh, well, you know, stop and shop can compensate for it or over in the sort of, um, uh, um, I'm just going to come up with Glidden's and the um, restaurant. There's a big parking lot or the chicken box parking lot or, you know, we're running out of space to push cars around to. And I think we need to be thinking realistically 
if we're going to help support the businesses that would be in this building or in this area in general, we need to be thinking in terms of providing realistic parking because people realistically on a year round basis drive their cars in. Um, on the reduction of the down to 18 feet, I, I guess I'm not opposed. I'd like to know when you know, people on the island are going to be driving smaller cars. I, I haven't seen that yet in general. It's the, you know, four by four and it's going to be a pickup truck and not little Ford Rangers or, you know, the original Toyotas, but the full size trucks, full size vehicles. We, for all that we hope that you're going to get, you know, smart cars and, Priuses, et cetera. We really don't have enough of those, I think, to compensate for the amount of spaces that are reduced in size, as Stephen um, was just mentioning. So I think, um, again, I'm looking for everyone in this area to be successful. And I think we need to think in terms of providing appropriate parking. Um, I could comment on Stephen's comment on the massing of the building. To me, it just looks like um, those wonderful elementary school buildings that got put in, um, given the height of the people outside of these structures, it'll just dominate the skyline. And perhaps we're expecting everything to grow up to it to make it look smaller. Uh, the only other thing I had to say, um, was, and this is, uh, has nothing to do with the parking. It really has to do with the car arcade concept. Um, and it wasn't the arcade concept so much as electronic gaming. And um, I would just like to throw in a vote for not allowing any kind of electronic gambling um, as part of the electronic gaming. I know that's part of entertainment, but I don't think it's appropriate. So thank you for your time. Thank you, Cam. Uh, Barry? Uh, thanks, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate it. Um, when we were looking way back when in the mid area, in the mid island area, and formulating a plan for it many, many years ago, it, it was abundantly apparent that this area was becoming the new downtown. And here we are now with at least two major projects before us that advances that concept. Um, there's, there's really a lot here um, that needs to be looked, looked at. Um, I, the bottom line is gonna be the project as it stands right now with all the associated uses in my mind's eye is got too great an intensity associated with it. And, and those are gonna cause some problems that I see in, in the process. Um, through you, Mr. Chair, to, to Mr. Malloy, did, did Dan, did I hear you say the egress for this property was going to be closer to the rotary? There's an egress on the rotary side and there's okay. an entrance and exit on the Cumberland side. I, I, I might ask you, and again, coordinated review will bring out that process, but I might ask you to revisit that because in the, in the peak of when you're going to be doing things, the closer you are to that rotary with the potential amount of traffic generation that can occur out of this plan, I think is going to back things up even further. I'd rather see the reverse of this happen so that as people are trying to exit the area, that they, they might have a better way to, to be able to get out of there without too badly impinging right on that small rotary area. Um, I'm glad to hear that you're going to look at all the, the key concepts that need to happen here. Uh, pedestrian access, um, you know, uh, just the roadway system itself, coordinated review will, will bear out a lot of that. I'm sorry, my notes are a little disjointed here as I've been doing this. Um, but, you know, you're going to have to be a little careful, too, because right across the way from you is the old fire department and that chunk of land. And right now I know the town's been using it, but there's no guarantee that the town will not sell that property in the future and then what becomes of it. So 
I think we need to always take that proactive role of looking at what's in the area and what is the potential development that can happen with with other sites such as the fire department the old fire department building which at the moment you know like i said it, it it's town but there's no guarantee it's going to stay that way and then what becomes of that and how does it integrate into the area um the the parking i, I don't see it working I really don't, you know, Cam was saying, uh, you know, she was kind of surprised, you know, not necessarily surprised, but I don't see that conversion happening to small cars. Nantucket is not conducive to it. We've got beaches that people like to be able to access requires four wheel drive. Look at the roadway system as well, too. Again, you know, the moment you start getting out of downtown, it becomes pretty nasty at times. And so, yes, you, you're going to need heavy duty or larger vehicles to be able to accommodate that process. Um, so reducing down the number of spaces, the size of the spaces, I'm, I'm not keen on because I think you're going to wind up with a lot of frustrated people trying to get into those spaces and it won't be working. So and, and the other thing, too, is you're looking at putting 42 apartments in. Correct me if I'm wrong here. But somewhere with that 42 apartments, you've wound up somewhere between 42 to 84 cars as well, too. And if you're proposing 128 spaces, which I believe is what you had, overall, that's going to leave 44 spaces left to try to accommodate the rest of what you're doing. And these, the, again, I'm going to go back to the uses that you're trying to accommodate, such as a takeout restaurant, a seating restaurant a bowling alley. Um, let me see, what else do we have here? Retail use, depending upon the kind of office use you put in as well too. They can be very high traffic uh, volume generators. So I'm not necessarily convinced that reducing down to 128 is going to be the answer here. Um, I think if we had a better feel for how that's all supposed to coordinate together, that may work, you know, but again, you begin to look at things like limiting capacity, limiting hours on things, and how does that work? It's it's a traffic dense area, no question about it. But like we said, it's the new downtown area as well too, and continues out to our old South Road. Um, and we need to be sensitive toward what that means. I'm not discouraging it, but I think in its current iteration right now, it needs a lot of work to try to make things happen in that area. And I'm, I'm really pleased to hear you thinking about trying to work with uh, Cumberland Farms um, to, do, to do another access point. That would be great. The less you know, independent driveways we have here and the more shared driveways we can put in, definitely, definitely the better. And that's also going to include pedestrian easements as well, too. And there just happens to be one there at the stop and shop you might be able to connect into. Um, I think that's it for a moment, but there's a lot. There's a lot going on here. And I think it's going to it's gonna take a few iterations before we finally get to a stage of where it's going to be like, all right, we're, we're now going to get close to the truth of what's supposed to happen. So thank you for your time to be able to comment on things. Um, I'm looking forward to working with you all and uh, see where this develops off to. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Very, uh, Fritz. Uh, thank you, I, I, I'll only take a couple of seconds really because I think uh, everybody who's spoken uh, so far uh, has been right on point, different points, but I think collectively uh, it's a pretty good summation. Uh, plus uh, I was, uh, Chris, Run Chris Young, I know hasn't spoken if, uh, if he's going to, but his letter again addressed a lot of issues and concerns that he had, not only for the effect on his property, but just generally. So I think those were right on. So I, I just uh, I just want to lend my support to all of the comments to everybody else that everybody else from the boards made. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Chair. Yes, Nat. Yeah, I just want to make a, you know, now that we've gone through this. Well, I just thought of something that was said at the, at, the, at the old Craig property during that deliberation. It was really important that there was a question asked 
about a mid island plan or something about that about these properties and at each property and Leslie's answer was exactly right when she said each development has been handled you know individually like for example Cape Cape Cod 5 and I'm I'm saying this for Dan cuz he knows this already and the applicant Cape Cod 5 if you saw what that property looked like before you definitely would agree okay so that was the Dan's was the first one that got done and then Cape Cod 5 came in and we made that connection that goes through they were their original plan was to have an in and an out in where it goes in right now just so you all know that okay that was the dumbest idea i've ever seen in my life so we made it one way and opened it up into the commons by virtue of of something we had written into the decision that that was going to get done at a later date by different means whatever then we opened up dan's to the Cape Cod five with a little connector that you can go one way and kind of sneak into Dan's if you need to go there or sneak in and take a left and leave. Right. Those two properties are the closest thing to as good as it ever is going to be on the Nantucket because we're not Arizona. Like I say, we're already been developed once. We're just refixing things now. And it's hard to look at it that way. Then you go down to, Sofolia or whatever we're calling it, the wine tasting, whatever it is, place. Look at what we've been through there with the parking. Like we have gone around in circles and we all know what the answer is. Angle parking along the street, all that wasted land. So then when you circle back to what happened with Stop and Shop, because that always gets brought up, they flip the building, they have to serve us. We had to, they had to get that done so we could eat. Okay, we couldn't just not eat for a year, right? So, but look at it, 30 feet high. It looks like somebody stepped on top of the building to make it shorter, okay? That should have been higher, but we didn't have the zoning to do that. So then the whole fire department situation. If, we, if, if all this land was like, you know, owned by one person, we could make this work. The problem is, is that every time Something happens to an existing piece of property that was already developed. I'm not talking about fresh land like the Craig property is. That's the only one that it is, really. It, 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 it always creates a big sort of, oh, my God, what are we doing here? Because it's, we're used to seeing it the way it is now. But this one here is a little different. This is close to dirt. Because this is going to be dirt. So I'm sort of sliding into that camp of like, this is fresh land that's a little bigger than the other pieces that we've seen get done with Dan's and with Cape Cod 5. And of course, Stop and Shop just used their existing land and flipped the building from one side to the other. This is different. This has got to get done right because this is the first CMI project. And Dan, I know you, you know, are following what I'm saying because that's the key to this is this is CMI now. We can be tall than, you know, higher and all that. And so we really need to get this right. We need to fix Chris Young's problem because his problem is all of our problems. You know, we need to work with him and figure this out. The Cumberland thing, I think, will work. I think that they'll... I'm sure that they will be helpful because they're new and, they, and they're not going anywhere. That building is staying the way it is, gas station, all that stuff. So I think we need to kind of figure a way to break this up a little bit, make it more, have more flow and work with the abutters to figure this out and make it work correctly. Um, I don't think there's anything in the front is it, Leslie, have we looked at, or Dan, have we looked at anything in the front on the street? Or we want to be right up against the street and not try to do any kind of, you know, there's no option there really is there. It's better off having the loading and all that stuff on the inside. Right. 
and leave that for bicycles and pedestrians. And, and I think that that's better. I know we talked about this a year ago, but I can't remember exactly what we said at that time. If I may, for you, I, I think the concept there is to maintain the wide sidewalk that already is in front of House yeah. and goes down in front of Cumbies. Because we're going to be improving Fox Ave anyway up on, by the cemetery, so we should continue leave this the way it is. And I, I remember, I just couldn't remember everything we talked about, Dan. So sorry about that. Um, so that's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you. You know, this might be the one project that really we start to think about you know, the ultimate goal, the, the, the long-term plan. I know it's been discussed. We, we, this isn't something new, but we've said it a couple of times already this evening. You know, individual property owners are setting what we do, and then we're trying to fix it afterwards. Right. And this is something we maybe be able to take the bull by the horns and and start thinking of the future, how it would affect it and looking to work together in the area with different proper different property owners to realize that it will be for the benefit of not only themselves, but also for future development. Um, this has the potential to do that. And you know, just looking at it when you as I said before, when you're looking at five curve cuts over three properties, not counting the exits and egress from stop and shop across the street. Um, it has the potential to be very dangerous with cars coming and going and, and who yields to who. If we can consolidate a little bit and help them help each other out, um, you know, it, we can start thinking of long-term plans. And if this is going to be the new in town that's out of town, uh, we have a way to do this. And, you know, it, it, some of you will kind of laugh, but I've been saying this for a while, many, many years. And Nat, I've probably brought it up more times than I can remember on the Economic Development Commission about the potential for one ways um, doing a circle and having a route. Um, when you look at this project and probably others to follow similar to this, uh, you know, Two ways, you know, maybe uh, parallel parking, maybe angle parking, when you have one way coming in and on the other side of Pleasant, one way kind of going around. Um, it, it opens the, you know, it opens discussion. It, it opens it up for discussion. And I think, you know, this is, as people have already commented on, it's a very large project, maybe too large. Um, I do like the fact that there's a potential for an underground parking with 71 spaces there because without that underground parking, you wouldn't even be able to even look at this project. Uh, I still you know, think that it's probably oversized for what it is. And the biggest problem that we have on the island is traffic and prop, um, the flow of traffic and where we're going and parking. So this is nothing new. We're not reinventing a wheel. We just have to figure out a way. I know it's the initial stage. Uh, really look at it, give some thought, not expect a decision in one day and see how we can make this right, not only for the applicant, uh, but also for the future going forward. So anyone else? Um, I don't see any hands, so I'll open it up to the public if there's anybody there that would like to comment. Meg? Yep, so we, have, we have Chris Young followed by Emily Molden. Great, I'll start with Chris the Butter. Hi, Chris, welcome. Hi, everybody, thank you very much. Appreciate your time. Um, and I appreciate all the comments that were made uh, and the fact that you uh, are taking the time to consider this application with the abutters in mind. Um, I think my letter outlined my initial concerns. So uh, thank you for reading that as well. I did have the chance to meet with the applicant um, and we've discussed the plan uh, preliminarily and I'm happy to continue that, that conversation. Um, so at this time, I'm not gonna just reiterate all the things that the board has already said, but uh, I do, most of you know me, so I'm, I'm always open if you want to have conversations uh, about any ideas. The applicant uh, 
he knows how to reach me. Um, definitely interested in working together. I think I, I do want to say I respect the project. I'm not going to be one of those abutters that just wants to uh, shoot it down from the get go. I think I, I respect what they're trying to do. Um, you know, my concerns are with the scale of it and uh, how, uh, especially the parking, like everybody's been saying, I've already suffered from <clears throat> the overflow parking from the downing flake for years. And so um, obviously this would be a concern if it got worse. Um, so thank you everybody. And I will be available anytime to discuss, you know, changes, uh, cooperation, et cetera. So I appreciate your time. Emily, if you're there, welcome. We have Emily and then we have um, Charles Sale after Emily. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Emily Molden here with the Nanticket Land Council. I don't want to be repetitive. I just want to um, thank the board for all the initial discussion. I agree with many of your comments already and concerns that have been raised. And we'll just look forward to the ongoing dialogue and new materials that come in, particularly as uh, they relate to stormwater management on the site and in the area. Thank you. Thank you, Emily. OK, um, Carl. Meg, did you say, uh, oh, Charles, Charles Sale. Welcome. You gotta unmute yourself, we can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Yes, hi, Charles, welcome. Yes, I, I'm the owner of Nine Hooper Farm, the property directly to, to the south of this project. And I just have a few concerns as well, similar to Mr. Young's concerns. Um, just the overall scale of the property seems too large for the neighborhood. Um, the, the parking garage itself is proposed to be three feet set back from the back or less. And I just don't think that's going to allow enough for a fence. Never mind, like it should have some bushes or evergreen trees that are going to give year round buffer to me. I'm not against the property as a whole. I just think it's out of scale and it's going to cause some traffic issues. I'm also concerned about the groundwater. Like it's it's basically creating an extra deep thirty thousand square foot basement level. My property over here is about nineteen hundred square feet or less. Um, I know my basement floor is about six feet below grade, and about three or four feet below that is the groundwater. So if you're going to disperse that much area of groundwater, where's that groundwater going to go? It's going to probably go into the neighboring basements. So I just want to make sure that's addressed as well. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Charles. Meg, anyone else from the public? No, nope, I'm not seeing anyone else with their hand raised. Anyone else from the board at this time have any more comments, discussion, questions? Well, Dan, um, I don't know how, do you have any questions or something that we'd like to consider for, for a future meeting, uh, something to really pinpoint? Well, I, I think on our end, we've heard everybody's feedback. Obviously, it sounds like parking is not the issue, but it's certainly one of the higher issues. So I, I think when we can develop a plan that hopefully works with access and the abundant properties and see how that interacts with our parking layout, uh, maybe come back to the board with some other options on restrictions on the property as to who can do what or who maybe, maybe something in the line of apartments can only have so many vehicles uh, that would assist because some of these apartments don't justifiably have to have all these vehicles. So we can help on the parking count in that aspect. So I, I think there's things we can come, we can adjust the plan. We can come back to the board with different options. And I think uh, as soon as we can have this uh, big, uh, development meeting with everyone that would help quite a bit as well so we can try to push push the overall plan the infrastructure the roadway improvements there's a lot of different things the department heads need to weigh in on and you know speaking of apartments dan you know we've um we've looked at articles coming up to expand tertiary dwellings and things for quality of life for uh for tenants homeowners etc but you know Maybe a thought process would be instead of trying to reduce the parking, 
for the number of units that you're proposing, you, you, you know, the 80 units, what about we reduce the units so that there's more parking uh, and the quality of life, maybe the, the units will be larger for the same number of, you know, the, you know, the, the tenants of those um, in the opposite direction. Uh, so anyway, there's a, just a thought. Uh, I do see that we have a couple of hands raised, uh, someone that we haven't heard from yet. Um, so unless you have other questions or great, I'm going to recognize Christopher um, Fumara. Thank you, you very much. Yeah. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. So, you know, I'm the developer on this, with you know, on the project here. And I, I want everyone to know a couple of things. This is, this is intended and will be a year round project for the residents. I want the lights on these apartments year round. They won't be on for four months out of the year. That's very, very important to know that that's the complete, that's my intention and it will happen on this place. It will not be seasonal rentals at all. I don't want any part of that. I also want to keep in mind that the stop and shop is right across the street, which is going to make it very, very easy for everyone living there to go across the street to get their food and walk right across and come back into their apartments, which is going to eliminate a, a big need for parking spaces for all these tenants as well, too. I also want to keep in mind that this is going to be one of the only apartments buildings, I, I, to my knowledge, at least on the island, that will have an elevator, which will then help the year-round residents that would need more assistance with stairs and any issues that, you know, any elderly or disability people would need that would be a, a facility that will help that. And these, these, these are what my thoughts are when I look at this project. So, and, and, and the parking issue is out there, but we are, we are on a main, main road with the proper shopping next door to eliminate a lot of people that would need a car with this particular location. So just want to put that out there in everyone's heads uh, and where, where I'm thinking and how we're going to run this project. Thank you, Christopher. All right, I see a couple of, uh, Cam, you had your hand raised. Hi, yes, thank you um, for hearing me again. I, I did forget <laughs> to um, say that I really appreciate the um, overall design flow and the their initial um, comments on working with Cumberland in that area to get uh, reduced curb cuts. I also really appreciate the um, 10 foot sidewalk that would go in front of the building. I think that will be great for this area as we are making it um, more of a walking uh, services area. If you need to go to the bank, you can walk to the bank as um, the previous speaker was saying you can you know you can get your hair done you can get something to eat you can go to the grocery you know you could buy a new lamp or get new tile um so from that aspect i think it's wonderful again people have to work and uh you know unless they're working within that core area Many people need vehicles to get to work or perceive themselves as needing vehicles to get to work um, independently. So even though there are all the opportunities to walk instead of using your car in general, people will need a vehicle, um, at least one. So I wanted to say that, but I also just wanted to um, extend appreciation for the um, pieces that have been put in in response to our the board's initial comments a year or so ago. So thank you. Thank you, Cam. Uh, Arthur, really nice to see your hand. 
Thank, thank you very much. Uh, as you know, I'm representing the proponent in connection with this project. And uh, I wanted to just respond briefly on, on the question, uh, John, that you raised regarding the number of uh, residential units vis-a-vis -vis the amount of parking spaces. And, I, and that certainly is a balance that has to be worked out. But I would have to say that I'm anticipating that the provision of those apartments is going to serve a need in the town. These are not uh, uh, residential units, uh, as, as Chris said, that are going to be uh, rented out or used seasonally. These, these are um, um, intended to be occupied by uh, year-round residents of Nantucket for whom the housing, as we all know, is badly needed. And uh, uh, frankly, the more units we can get, uh, the, uh, uh, the more affordable that we can make those units be, whether it be through a formal program or otherwise, but we certainly have been talking about all of that. But in any event, just to move on to, uh, to the general aspects of this, um, we've had a lot of very, I think, very good and very constructive comment tonight about the issues that uh, uh, are out there with regard to this project. We're certainly listening to all of that and we'll be looking forward to the coordinated review meeting uh, so that we can uh, get input from all the uh, affected town uh, officials and agencies to be able to try to come back and come back, come back eventually with the best project that we can and one that we would hope and expect would be able to be approved by, by the board and by other relevant agencies. Uh, thanks. Thank you very much, Arthur. Um, Barry? Barry? Yeah. Okay. Sorry, yes. I was muted for a sec. Um, through you to Megan, I just want to make sure that there's no one else in the public who's going to speak because I'll, I'll wait a minute if that's the case. I'm not seeing anyone, Barry. All right, thanks. I appreciate it. Yeah. So, real quickly, um, you know, one of the most remarkable things when I came out here was that I used to work at Island Pharmacy. Um, don't don't believe that walkability is a thing that happens because I used to have people who would park at the pharmacy and then park at Stop and Shop, maybe before they had parked at the Downey Flake when they went out to breakfast. So <laughs> as, much as, as much as you like to think that's going to be a cure, it may work for some people but not everyone. And we have to be mindful of those little quirks that, that come up. Um, yeah, I was shocked by it. I actually had a pharmacist who used to do that. Shame on her. Anyways, um, if, if there's really nothing else, um, Mr. Chairman, I, I think we'd probably be appropriate for us to continue the meeting at this stage. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know, um, maybe through you to find out from either Mr. Fiar, Fiamara or uh, Mr. Malloy, when would be the next available time that they'd like to meet with us? Uh, I think on our end, Dan, yes. Yeah, I mean, we're happy to, I mean, I think the board's next meeting is probably in March. Uh -huh. So I think we'd go to that meeting and see how quick we can get a coordinated review meeting set up. Uh, I guess what I'd try to do is see if we can coordinate one prior to that meeting. Great. Yeah, I think that would be wise. It looks like it's going to be. Chris. Oh, Arthur, yes. Right. So that, that would be my motion is to continue this this um, this this application before us until Mar our next March meeting. I believe that is March 14th, 4 o'clock. Thank you. Yes. All right. If that is your motion, Barry, is there a second on the floor? Second. Uh, motion has been made to continue to March 14th at four, uh, second by Nat. Um, Barry? Aye. Call. Nat? Aye. Fritz? Fritz? Muted Fritz? Aye. <laughs> <laughs> Dave? Aye. All right, and the chair votes aye. Thank you very much, and thank you for the time and preservation and being patient and waiting. Thank you. Thank you, thank guys. You. Thank you. Thank you very much.
Okay, uh, moving on. I think we just have a uh, public comment. And, and other business. Uh, Mr. Chairman, if yes, I may. Yes. Sure. Um, I believe Megan either sent out separately or included in your packet um, your motions and some comments for those motions. Um, so if you have any comments about those, now's a good time to let me know. And then we have two comments. I don't know if you wanna quickly take a look at those for articles 42 and 43 that Megan can put up on the screen. They're consistent with your discussion. I see her shaking her head, so I think she's trying to get them up. Bear with me just a second um, while I pull the, up those emails. All right. And while she's doing that, maybe I'll just jump ahead real quick um, to Article 81. You all discussed that at length at your NPDC meeting. I think it is important, though, for the planning board to have a separate recommendation. So I'm hoping we can move through that one quickly tonight. So Leslie, I don't want to get ahead of herself, but if we're going to, to talk about Article 81, I just have a quick comment and I just, uh, yeah, let me just state it and then I'll see any kind of feedback. Um, the planning commissioner has uh, recommended that we have this for uh, refer for future study. Um, all members of the planning board are presently members of the any NPEDC, um, and we had probably a, a you know we had a, a four and a half five hour meeting the other day and just last week five um, five thank you now. <laughs> thank you Mr Chairman we're almost to five tonight so we are almost to five and I don't want to be redundant but unless anybody has changed their decision um, all five members as it's proposed as it is right now sat on that um, board and we all voted the same to refer for future study. So unless I'm uh, incorrect, uh, I would think that we're in that same position unless something changed from last week to this week. Um, so um, not to streamline, but if anybody had a change of heart, I'd like to hear it. And if not, I'd like to um, go for a recommendation um, for to refer for future study as we did in the previous vote. Um, any comment from the board or discussion? So hearing none, I would entertain that motion. Mr. Mr. Yes, Mr. Sorry. Yes, sir. Yeah, I, you've, you've got two hands up here at this point. Um, I definitely want to say something, but sure. uh, I'll, I'll, I, I'll, let, I'll let Cam go first uh, because uh, it sounds like you're you. giving way to Cam. <laughs> go ahead, Cam. Thank you. Um, Mr. Chair, and thank you kindly, Barry. Um, I just had a question, obviously, I'm not part of this um, process, but, uh, you know, when I hear future study, I hear cans rolling down the road. And I'm just wondering if there's some kind of time frame or intent behind it, or is it just, do you see what I mean? Like, are we gonna grapple with the article because I'm sure that it's coming up at town meeting and I'm thinking the more concrete perhaps one could be about into the future, quote unquote, the, the you know, the stronger one's argument would be a town meeting. So I'm just sort of wondering about that. Thank you for your time. Sure, thanks, Cam. Um, Leslie, your hands up to answer. Sure. Yeah, I just want to remind everyone that the finance committee makes the recommendation on this. That's what's printed in the warrant. You're only making a recommendation to the finance committee. And I think what was discussed at the NPDC are, is that, you know, this is only one option. There may be lots of other options and maybe keep what we have. But the point is that, you know, all the options should be explored. And that's why you all made the recommendation to the finance committee to refer it to a committee. So we don't know what they're going to do, but it's your recommendation to them. It won't be printed in the warrant. Okay, so, great. Thank you, Leslie. So for clarification, Leslie, the recommendation would be to 
um, uh, to give a, a positive rec uh, to in, no a support for the recommendation of the finance committee to refer for future future studies. Is that correct? So the planning board would mm -hmm. make a recommendation to the finance committee that they refer it for future study. Bingo. Better word. <laughs> Better wording. Uh, now, Barry, yes, your hands up. Ah, thank you. I appreciate it. Um, not everyone voted in the affirmative for that. I actually voted in the negative. So mm -hmm. I, I want the record to reflect that. Thank you for and for and with time. good cause, mm -hmm. I believe, because what that meeting terminated shorter than what it should have been. I know there was a lot of discussion behind it, but there was still further discussion that needed to take place. I do wish Mr. Vorce was on this as well too, uh, but I, I, I'm gonna be upfront with you. There were, I was shocked by this. There were so many inaccuracies portrayed about the Planning and Economic Development Commission and how it functioned and what some of its misgivings were. And there was no, I, like I said, there should have been more conversation because there was no challenge to that. All of a sudden was, and I appreciate it, we all have lives to leave, but all of a sudden it was like, I'm off to a party, see you later, bye. And end of conversation, end of conversation. Um, the, the meeting was, I know, intense, but there was, I felt at times we got off the topic of, of what we really should have been focusing on and focused more on other anecdotal information. Um, and, and unfortunately it ran the clock out. It essentially ran the clock out. Um, and so I, I, I was, this is one of the few times I've sat on the sidelines and felt that that was just, it was not well handled in any way, shape or form, but so be it can't change the past. Um, but I, I do somehow somewhere need to register some of my concerns um, as well as the fact that, like I said, um, there were things in that were, were represented that night that showed me that homework hadn't been done, but they were taken as representations nonetheless of how that board functioned. And I, for one, have a problem with that. So I appreciate you listening to me. And, uh, you know, ho hopefully we'll see where things go at this point. But thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Anybody else's hand raised? No. So uh, on the motion, um, as Leslie clarified and put it in better wording, um, any discussion, comment, or is there a motion? Mr. Chairman, I'm just going to make a couple more comments before we go to the motion. Um, you know, I'm the one that made the meeting go five hours. You can blame me for that. Maybe maybe it should have been six, as Barry said. Well, if you keep I'm talking, it's going to blame me for five hours. <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing is... you're getting that, close, Nat. <laughs> it, it, you know, I've been... I just want to say this. There's, there's a couple of things I didn't say the other night that I don't have crossed out of my big list of things. One of them was I've been asked by all the finance committee members, what, what's going on when this all first started, what, what's going on over there? Like, what's the problem? And I'm like, well, there really isn't a problem, but a lot of people think there's a problem with a lot of different things around here. Like you could make a case a few years back there was actually an article to make Libby's position elected. Now I knew that article was not going anywhere, but that kind of stuff pops up. And you might not remember that, but it's true. It wasn't too long ago. And one of the things about MPDC is it gets confused with the planning board because the general public doesn't know every little detail about how all these different boards function, just let alone ours. 
Um, so just a quick comment on the makeup of Nantucket's regulatory and its government process is different than the Cape, different than the vineyard. It's ours. It's the way we have, this is the way things are set up. And to change something, whether you hear about town meeting, former government going away someday, that's not going to happen with one little article with a couple little things in it. It's going to be a big process. And changing the planning commission, if it needs something changed, it needs to be done in the right way with a lot of considerations to a lot of things, especially the housing authority issue is definitely something that should have been vetted. The electing the at-large members versus appointment is, I mean, you talk about nobody wanting to get involved in something like that. We have a really good process. We have really good people. We have for years in that position, in those three positions. Um, there's definitely, as Andrew stated last week, there's definitely room for improvement. There's room for improvement in every board. Um, and I think that there is room for improvement. We haven't had a transportation plan for two years, which is an unfortunate situation that was caused by a lot of the confusion around this uh, some of the issues that have been brought forth in this article that um, was unfortunate. And, um, you know, I think that <clears throat> any improvement, like I said, any improvement that gets made has to be really well thought out. No adversarial tones and negativity and, um, you know, blame and et cetera. There can be some, a couple of really good things could happen but it's gonna take some doing. It's gonna take some thought and um, a joint effort to do that. So I just wanted to say that because this is all near and dear to me too, Barry, just like you, you've been around a long time with this and you've done a lot of the stuff that nobody wants to do off island and um, this off island stuff. And I think that that's really important. So somebody like a Wendy Hudson's not going to run for office. Somebody like Jack Gardner, the ambassador type, like a Don Visco, they're not, they're not pulling papers at 70 something, 80 years old to, to be sitting on the planning commission. I mean, what planet are we living on? That's not going to happen. So those are the kind of things you don't want to see because you want people like that to be part of the process in some way. I certainly want to be when I'm their age. I can tell you that. So Anyway, that's what I, all I have, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, Leslie. Leslie, no. There we go. Um, there you go. Oh, I think Barry's hand was up first. Do you want to go, Barry? No, no go ahead, please. Yeah, I mean, I just kind of want to narrow the focus back to, you know, you acting as the planning board and how does this affect the planning board? And that particular article talks about reducing all five members of the planning board to three. And I think that presents, you know, different challenges. Um, one of which is, you know, you could lose the minority view of the planning board, you know, doing that. Um, there's, you know, again, lots of things to think about and you all have already discussed it as the NPDC to refer. Thank you, Barry. Thank you, and I promise I'll be quick. You know, I'm going to be the first one to say this is not a representational view. I don't want change. Change is a wonderful thing. It is it, it is vital. It is necessary. You need to be able to hold the mirror up and look every so often to see what it is, what you are, what you do, and what can you do better. I'm all for that. that that's such an important thing. Um, Unfortunately, again, like I said, when I see decisions being made, though, that don't necessarily reflect the accuracy of things or no one's really done the homework behind it without talking to the people who deal with it, that's where I see a problem. 
So I, I just wanted to clarify that. I mean, I'm always willing to have that discussion. If there's something we can do to make it better or make it work, that's fantastic. All right, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Barry. All right, I'm still looking for a motion. Uh, I'd make a motion to, what are we looking to refer this to? Just support to, the recommendation of the finance. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry. The, I'll, uh, make a, I'll make a motion MPAC. of the NPE. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I'll make a motion to um, support the, uh, the referral by the MP and EDC. Second. Motion has been made by Dave and seconded by Nat. Uh, roll call, Dave. Aye. Matt. Aye. Harry. Nay. Fritz. Aye. I'm sorry, Fritz. Aye. Oh, uh, the chair votes aye. So that is four um, ayes and one nay by Barry. Okay, going back. Um, Meg, are you ready? I think we were looking at Article 4243. Great. Uh, Leslie, you want to make an intro of what you want us to, what you're looking forward to, a recommendation? Okay, so you all um, don't comment on every article, but you do typically comment on articles that have generated a lot of discussion or that are particularly controversial or just, you know, um, worthy of additional information beyond what's in the actual article. So I've drafted this comment for you for article 42. This is the short-term rental planning board sponsored article. And, um, you know, this is a first draft. So if you have, you know, significant comments, I can work those in. If you have typographical type things, I need to give this a little bit uh, more of a review anyway, but just in concept, is this something that you support for your comment or not? So yeah. Leslie, before we actually get started and open discussion, um, this is article 42, which is short-term rentals. And as I've done previously, oh. uh, I've recused myself because of the potential conflict of inter interest with my real estate license. So at this time, I would like to hand over this last bit to our Vice Chair, Dave Iverson. Um, and I'll just be uh, logging out. And I would, because this is the last item for discussion, uh, I would appreciate, Dave, if you could close and adjourn the meeting after I um, uh, leave the meeting. But I think this is the uh, the last, if I'm not mistaken, other than to announce that the next uh, meeting is Monday, March 14th at four o'clock via Zoom. And if that's okay with that. Um, Dave, take over if you will. Thank you yep. very much. I appreciate the patience when, with everyone. It's been a long meeting. Um, always appreciate everyone's participation and uh, thank you. I'll see you. Bye. Happy Valentine's, John. And all to to all you as well. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, John. Thanks, John. <clears throat> so Leslie, are, are, is this a public discussion? This is just for the board members. Just for the board members. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. If, I don't know if you can all see the whole screen or not. I cannot see the whole screen. So if you want me to read it, I will. I can see. Okay. Everyone good? Is there is there a way I can move this around the screen that would be Oh, there you go. Is that better? I kind of shrunk it a bit. Can everyone see it? <laughs> All right, Dave. <laughs> so it's it's Hey, was it's, that a motion to uh, approve this and adjourn? I've got a motion <laughs> to stop my dog from barking. Are you, are you just trying to say it's all going to the dogs? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so any board members have comment? Uh, 
Go ahead now. Are you are you reading? Are you that are you no Fritz is Fritz one Okay, I I'll just go ahead. Um obviously my Dave, we're losing you. It must be the dark. Go ahead, Fritz. Please. I'll, I'll be the assistant chair, the vice chair or something. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so on the, on the article, I had a different view than the rest of you did. Uh, so I don't know what that puts me when it comes to voting on a comment. But anyway, I will just make a comment and figure that one out later on. Um, and I'll try to be objective as I can. Um, and I, uh, and so I'm concerned about, uh, the uh, yeah, next to the last line, and additional bylaw changes can be made at a future town meeting. That's true, but I don't think it probably conveys the legal situation in terms of what that means. Um, and we had a lot of discussion of it while we talked about the article. And as you'll call, there was a lot of back and forth with town council. Uh, initially with me uh, uh, and a lot of questions about um, um, pre making them pre-existing non-conforming and then what can you do. So I, I think it would be misleading to simply say bylaw changes can be made at a future town meeting without adding what limitations we would be subject to. Okay. Um, thanks, Fritz. Yeah, Mr. Chair, I just you're back now with normal voice. Yeah. Um, At the moment, L Leslie, can I just add to what I, I think? Uh, uh oh, uh oh, we're back to that noise again. Bad, Matt. Leslie, the bylaws of simple majority, correct? Uh, is one no for approval at town meeting it's two thirds the, it, it, so 39 is two thirds as well oh sorry no uh, that that's one is what, the simple majority that's I, what I, I thought understand the question no yeah. no I'm sorry it could have been Dave's dog screwing up the system here. <laughs> so so um, that I think is that's part of what you're saying a little bit but also that whole thing we discussed about the this is sort of 39 is sort of a blueprint sort of for like, like t formula to get future bylaws developed by the select board and, and board of health. And, you know, basically, you know, everybody involved, it doesn't pass a bylaw sp that's specific. It's, it allows for that to, to materialize. And um, I think that the other part that, needs to be explained too is the is the court ruling issue that we have in other words somebody else gets sued it, there may be a different case law that could affect anybody doing this if we don't put a, a sort of a, a, a gate up for that potential which is I think has been was missed a little bit last week. Okay, so there's there's something about that in here, but maybe I can try to make it clearer. I think, yeah, you got it in there a little bit, but not maybe not good enough for, you know, everybody, I guess. This is complicated for, you know, this week has been, since last week's meeting, I mean, I think a lot of people are starting to figure out what we're trying to do now and understand the difference. So. I think it's important. So go ahead. Sorry, Leslie, I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, I, I you know, it's it's difficult to try to condense all of the thoughts into a comment because yep. I could probably write two pages about this. And, you know, some of it maybe we should take out of the comment and carry into your report. Um, but just generally, I'd like to know if, if everyone's okay with this, um, with maybe some tweaks. 
I think I it's am a, Mr. Chair. Yes, sir. Oh, you're back. I am. Okay. I was just going to quickly say, I think it's succinct. I think it covers, it covers the um, framework, provides some detail that's relevant and important for people to get in the first little bite of information. And um, I would go with it if I were voting. Yeah. Um, Me too. Well, I just I wanted to can I just, um, you know, there's been a lot, I've, I've gotten a lot of emails, I've heard from a lot of people that, um, and maybe Leslie can can help kind of think this through, is that that a lot of people are, are looking to adopt 39 and leave and, and not adopt 42. And, and I think that people need to understand the consequences of that and how that applies to 42. Um, and, and I think that it may be important to put a note in, in our recommendations as to how that, that would work out. Does that make sense, Leslie? Yes. And I thought that was addressed in here, but I will work on making that more clear to the uh, average reader. How about that? Yeah, I mean, I just think it, it's confusing. It's a lot of information, and you know, and and it's funny how a lot of people who um, think STR should not be touched and aren't in favor of any restrictions see the two different articles almost mirror image of what they should be seeing. So I, that that's just my concern is that somehow we have a part in making is helping people understand this a little better, if that makes sense. Okay. All right, so let's go on to 43. So it sounds like everyone, for the most part, is okay with that with a little yeah. more work. Yeah. Okay. All right. Almost everybody. <laughs> yeah. You heard my comment. <laughs> I, well, I don't want to stick to it other than I, I just don't, I'd, I'd rather have that phrase taken out, uh, you know, that's just my comment. I think as a lawyer, the way I read and understand the situation, I, I, I have a different view of, not generally about it, but I have a different view about what passing the article means in terms of being able to go backwards. I don't think we'll ever go backwards. So that's why I'm concerned. Uh, I think that's fair. Yeah. Um, okay, so... Um, Noted, Fritz, and fair, and on to 43. Yep. Uh, would like, someone like to, to take this one on? Questions, comments? Can everyone see the screen all right? Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir, Barry. Thank you, I appreciate it. Leslie, just give, as you're doing that review again, just give a little bit of thought to, in Article 42, maybe the better thing to do is review Article 43 first and the comments that are here, and then let's go back. I know it sounds a little warped, and it's just a matter of, of, of how things are playing itself out. But sometimes the last thought you have gets wiped out by the new information that comes in. Mm -hmm. And so I don't know. I don't know if there's a, I'm, again, this is, I'm just coming up with this right off the top of my head. But it might be worthy of just thinking about let's get this one squared away and now tell people to refocus back on, on where we're going with 42. Okay. Just food for thought. Okay. But does anyone have any concerns with the general content? No. Good. Okay. No. No, I do. <laughs> no. I, I think it's, I think it reads argumentative. To, to start out has numerous flaws, ambiguous interpretation. I, I think it has a 
uh, well, anyway, um, I think we should be try to be, uh, how to say it? Most change flaws to concerns. Yeah, I mean, yeah, exactly. I, I think concerns, yeah, exactly. Something um, a little softer, but. Yeah, I think. I would, I would disagree. I, I think concerns is a different term. Sorry, Nat, but. And so I'm me, just trying to be, you know. I mean, it's a, the, the, we're talking about a legal text yes. in a sense, and it's either um, it's flawed or it's not. I mean, that's, those, these are language that town council uses. That's why, I, yeah. and nothing again, I didn't speak on the, the quad, the, my perspective on the quality of the article, but just with respect to conveying something, I think if tone is a concern, there might be other ways to word it, but I wouldn't use, I wouldn't replace concerns, flaws with concerns because flaws indicates that there's a, um, a legal shortcoming. It may be a tr legal shortcomings, I don't really know, but those are, um, or implementation and legal shortcomings or something, but flaws seems to me to cover it. Well, I mean, let me pick another one. Proposed bylaw requires a submission of federal tax filings. What federal tax filings? No, I, I don't understand. I, I just, I, and I, I get it, uh, you know, I, I think that, that that it is it is flawed. We can't deny it in yeah. in many respects, and, and maybe we just need to to. And I'm not sure that being soft with it is the right way because you know, listen, it is flawed. I mean, and and to lead anyone differently, I think would would be disingenuous. I'd be concerned about that. <laughs> His article specifically uses the term federal tax filings. So that's, you know, um, and, and I don't even think the proponent actually could explain away the flaws. I think, you know, in, in his explanation, it became more my in, in ambiguity. Yeah. Uh, I've made all of my comments. I, I, you know, the way I'll vote on the comment. So. It doesn't, I don't think it's going to do me any good to keep arguing or talking okay. about language. So that's it. I appreciate that. Uh, Campbell? Hi. Thanks. Just for a second here as I'm listening to you guys discuss this, which I know you're you know, you're within your own mindsets on this, but I think there's going to be a number of people that are going to be very supportive of article 43 for it may be purely on emotional basis, what have you. But I think uh, to Fritz's point, if you're starting out with uh, such a strong negative statement, as true as it may be, you may lose people in terms of um, garnering their understanding just based on the presentational style. So if it were more of a critique, um, you know, sort of with a format that started with, while the blah, blah, blah is, you know, trying to something positive and then start off with this. And I'm, I'm just saying that because you, you know, as you know, sometimes if you just start off with a negative, you lose people from listening to you to begin with. So that's that's my only input. Um, I'm in support of Fritz's thoughts. I mean, I don't disagree with Fritz. I just don't. I just I'm I, I just think to give people f a, a false sense is not right. Like, I, I mean, I maybe soften it, but I think we need to be truthful about it. And I'm not saying Fritz is insinuating we shouldn't be, but I just, yeah. I that makes Well, you're giving it a negative recommendation to begin with. I mean, a no action. So well, clearly the, you know- It's, soft, it's you, softer than vote yeah. not to adopt. 
Yeah. Well, yes. No, but you. I mean, I'm just saying, I, you know. Conveyed, so. the, the board has conveyed its opinion that the public should vote no. So I don't know. Uh, forget it. No, you, French, you're good. We get it. The, uh, first, Barry. the tax filing thing is in the article, by the way. Just read it. Okay. Uh, Barry? Thanks. Uh, Megan, can you just bring that up for one more second? I'm sorry. I, I'm going to endeavor to be brief here. That's a good response. <sighs> I, there's, there's some wording from town council that that may meet that objective um i'm trying to go i'm sorry i'm trying to index between multiple screens here just a second there we go proper legal it, the words keep coming out proper legal form and i don't know if there's a way to to bring that back in Maybe it's maybe it's a little softer than flaws. I'm not I'm not seeing it right at this moment, but I, I think there is something that that you know will will still hit the point home if you don't like flaws. But yeah, I don't I don't want to necessarily soften the tone of it either because there there were a number of issues associated with it. Yeah. You have to go. Well, um, Sorry, Barry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, it's okay. It just it needs a little wordsmithing, maybe, but, you know. Read, Barry. Nat, are, are you done, Barry? Yes, yes, sir, please. I'm sorry. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. That, no, that's, that's good. Nat? Yeah, Mr. Chair, just to circle back to the, to the meeting, you know, last week. I mean, that was mind-blowing, the, com the comments. Um, and it's, it just kept getting more and more sort of where, and this is the term I sort of came up with, like afterwards is people's property portfolio, not their personal portfolio, but their personal property portfolio. And that is something that it, it, there's a, there's a, there's a sort of a, a limit to how far to push. I mean, we're getting little dribs and drabs of pushback on, on 39 from super local people that are not paying attention to every little thing that's going on with the issue of STRs and the issue of some of these properties and, and, and where it could lead. And I, you know, I can't, I cannot get that guy in Sconza out of my head. I, 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 that that state the statements by that gentleman were they, they were unbelievable and it was real it was him it was his life it was his 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 specific portfolio is what is gonna is what everybody will feel when they figure this out that's involved in this it, it, not everybody's a millionaire people have all kinds of reasons they need to do these things to keep their property for whatever the reason is. So, you know, I agree with Barry and Dave. I, I don't know what the word would be to take that one word out. Inconsistencies. I don't know. I, I don't know. But anyway, a little bit of tip O'Neill in me, I think. It wants to think like that occasionally, but I'm trying. So thank you. So it sounds like I'll go back to the drawing board slightly on this one. How about that? Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Whatever you come up with, Leslie, is fine. I mean, do we need to take a vote on that? Um, I would not? like I would like for you all to take a vote on all of the comments. Okay. Um, we we have can the do rest that. Um, but we don't, you know, with, we didn't with minor have, changes as discussed or something like that. Yeah. Did we, we didn't discuss, we didn't send a, 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 a you know, a recommendation on 39. That was just a, 
inclusive with 42. We didn't actually vote on that for something for FinCom. I don't oh, believe right. you did. I, I think you only voted on, well, you did it in PNDC, but. Okay. 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 I'm getting confused of which meeting. So I know, because I know we talked about it. I just couldn't yeah. remember exactly. Okay. So we, we did talk about it at planning board as, unless I'm getting it mixed up too, but I, I believe we did because your motion was to approve 42 only if 39 was also voted by town meeting. I don't think but, we'd make a recommendation. Yeah. We wouldn't make a recommendation on 39 because it's not a zoning article. But, right, right. It was, it, okay, there you go. That's that's what I'm looking for. Thank you, got it. Okay. Mm. All right. Mr. Chairman. If I were going to make a motion, I would make a motion to hold uh, for minor revisions through staff. I, yeah, I, Mr. Chairman. Yes, Barry. I, I, Leslie, I don't, I don't think you want this coming back to us because time is short. Correct. That's what I thought. Yeah. Okay, so I, I wow. hear you, Steve. Um, I, I think the, I'm going to make a motion at this point to accept the commentaries that are provided by staff for the articles that came before the planning board. Let's see what that takes us out to with minor revisions as, as, as yeah. necessary through. through yeah. staff. And I yes. know they'll keep I'd us say. appraised. I know they'll keep us appraised of the situation. I'll so, second it. The okay. revisions. Barry moved, Nat seconded. Uh, Barry. Aye. Nat. Aye. Fritz. Let me just say if we're voting, on mass, on all of them, one vote on all of them, my vote has to be no. Okay. And who am I missing here? If you're voting individually, it would be different. I'd probably vote yes on most of them. But if, you, if you're asking for one vote on all of them, it has to be no. Just two, just two, correct? 42 and 43. Four of us. Um, okay. there, there are other articles with comments that right. you all have. Oh, so are we, vote, we voting on those comments too? Or yeah, on we... all of them. Combined. Ah, all righty. Well, I vote aye. Yeah. So that's three to one. Is that correct? Right. Yes. All right. Yes. I hear you. I'm sorry, someone have a question? No. No. No, I thought you addressed a question to me, but maybe I, maybe I didn't hear right. No, I, I, I didn't. Um, so we're done with that. Yeah, we are. Okay. Good night, everyone. Motion to adjourn the meeting. <laughs> Good night, Seven. everyone. Thank Good you so night. much. Good night, time. Campbell. Good night, everybody. Campbell, we agreed, Campbell, we agreed twice tonight. That's right. Thanks to everyone you for did. their hard work. Thank you, it's everyone. It's really been quite a presentation. Thanks, everyone. Thank I don't think you all actually voted on the adjournment, but oh, no, we we did. But you've got three members still. Okay, so uh, do I, do I get a motion? You've got it, sir. Yeah, I seconded. All righty, uh, Barry, motion that seconded. Barry, aye. Nat, aye. And Chair, aye. I'd Thanks, like to withdraw guys. my vote, Mr. Chairman, and, and continue the <laughs> conversation for another. <laughs> yeah, let's see. Let's go. Marathon style. There you go. All right. Thank you. Okay, guys. See you later. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you all for everything. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.